What is the biggest adult temper tantrum that you've ever witnessed? One time I was in Target trying to return something, so I was in the customer service line. There was a lady a couple of people in front of me at the counter arguing with an employee about some coupon she was trying to use. Evidently this had been going on for a while before I arrived, as I could see the people in front of me were visibly irritated and antsy point the whole time this was going on, the woman's husband had their two kids standing right next to the main door of the store waiting. Mind you this was about 9pm at night, and both kids were in their pajamas, so were both adults, for that matter. One of the kids was literally screaming bloody murder the entire time. Periodically the woman would turn aside from her conversation with the employee and outright yell at the kid to shut up point this lady was not backing down about the coupon business, and neither was the employee. It got to the point where both of the people in front of me gave up and just left. I wanted to do the same, but I really needed to return this item, and didn't want to have to come back another time. So I'm now next in line, and can hear a lot better what's going on. This lady is freaking out now. Telling the employee how she'll get her fired, getting inches from her face and yelling, all kinds of insane sheet for an adult to do. The employee, god bless her, remained cool and calmly told her the coupon could not be honored. This whole time I just assumed this coupon was for some significant savings, but what I heard next, I'll never forget. The customer screams, I'm not paying 24 cents extra, 24 cents. That was what the coupon was for. This lady had been standing here for literally 45 minutes willingly embarrassing herself and keeping her exhausted kids from sleeping over 24 cents. I seriously don't understand some people. Shout out to that employee though. I would need a long shower and a few drinks after that interaction. Flying out of JFK with my boss and team analyst point we have about 1.15 before our flight leaves. So we decide to sit down and eat at one of those restaurants where you order via a tablet point we all order 10 minutes later our food comes out point my boss and I get burger, he gets his with a side salad. Teams and a list gets a chicken sandwich point guard table next to us looks at my boss's plate, very condescendingly states, you're eating my turkey burger, boss. Lifts his bun, confirms burger is beef and answers, no, I'm eating my hamburger, not your turkey burger, guy. At table next to us now stands up, looks like a German villain from a bad 80s movie. Guy makes a beeline to the waiter, that served us and starts screaming, where is my turkey burger? I was here for minutes before the three of them, and still don't have my turkey burger, waiter. Who is an older Indian man is visibly nervous guy keeps screaming, I ordered a turkey burger, it hasn't came. I want my turkey burger, I demand satisfaction, waiter. Says he'll check, and rushes back into kitchen, slinks back out about 2 minutes later. Noticeable knows he has to confront this guy again, and doesn't want to, sir. Says the waiter, no order has been placed at any of the tablets on your table guy starts screaming, this is bullshit, you think I don't know how to use a tablet? I want my turkey burger, I demand satisfaction, 5. More minutes ensue of him screaming about demanding satisfaction point waiter finally grabs a tablet at his table, order for turkey burger was keyed in. Submit order button was never hit, guy is now angry and embarrassed, has a look on his face, like he's going to go home and beat his wife point waiter looks smug, he's the one who actually got satisfaction out of all of this. I was at the pharmacy around 8pm, waiting in line behind an older lady. The pharmacist tells her she'll have to pick up her prescription tomorrow at 10am, because this location doesn't carry this particular medication. The following ensues, lady, I'll wait pharmacist, no ma'am, we physically don't have it in this store. You have to come back tomorrow at 10 am point lady, let me speak to the manager pharmacist, I'm the manager, I'm the pharmacist and this is my store. I'm telling you, we do not have this medication right now point lady, can you just give me one pill and I'll get the rest tomorrow, pharmacist, ma'am, we don't have any of the pills here point lady, what if I pay you for the cost of that one pill right now, and I get the rest tomorrow, pharmacist, ma'am, I can't give you one pill, because we have zero pills in this store. You'll be fine until tomorrow at 10am, I promise point the woman proceeds to go apesheet. 
she begins throwing stuff on the shelves onto the floor, stamping on them, screaming about how she will sue this pharmacy and how she's never seen such terrible customer service in her life. She even started kicking the partition between her and the pharmacist, threatening to go back there and fill it herself. It didn't even seem like she was upset about the medication itself. It was more that she didn't get her way and didn't want to come back. He asked a clerk to come help, and the whole time, she's grabbing for things and throwing them onto the floor in fury. She gets escorted out, and we could still hear her yelling outside. Edit 1. The medication wasn't for any kind of mental disorder or anger problem. Point edit 2. I'm not disagreeing that it's incredibly frustrating when you need a medication and it isn't available. I'm simply reporting the outrageous behavior that I witnessed. Point edit 3. Pharmacists farm techs, you guys are saints. Thank you for what you do and for what you have to deal with on a daily basis. When I worked in the bakery at Whole Foods, we had a customer who kept asking us to make banana muffins with a lot of pecans on top for her, but only a few at a time, like two or three. In general it was a request we could accommodate, but we had a few considerations we had to account for, like the fact that if we made them and she didn't pick them up we couldn't sell them to anyone else because pecans weren't on the ingredient list. The problem started arising when she would call us while she was on the way to the store, expecting to pick them up when she arrived. She was about 20 minutes away, and they took 45 minutes to bake. Even if she had called us while she was an hour away, we were on a pretty tight production schedule and someone would have to interrupt the work they had to get done that day for an unexpected special order for this one customer. First she got mad that we couldn't magically make them in 20 minutes because chemistry. I was unfortunately the supervisor on shift when she called most of the time, so she'd keep me on the phone for 15 minutes raging about how the customer is always right, even though she was factually incorrect in this circumstance. She started saying we should just make them her way all the time, so that we always had them on hand for her. I explained to her that, that we could get heavily fined by food inspectors if we did that, but that only made her angrier, because fuck the man, I guess. Eventually my team leader said that we had to put our foot down with her and tell her that she had to put in special orders two days in advance just like everyone else. When we told her this, she of course got like sputtering infuriated along the lines of how am I supposed to know when I'm going to want them. We were able to just say well management says so, sorry, and we thought that was that. She went along with it for a couple days, sending her poor mother to pick them up for her because she was too angry to step foot in the store. Her mom always looked so apologetic point finally, though, she came in personally to berate my team about how rude and inconsiderate and generally shitty we had been to her. Then she asked to speak to our store manager, who had been made aware of the whole banana nut saga. He escorted her outside and told her she was banned from the store. We found out later that she had also been banned from the three nearest Whole Foods locations over this exact same set of circumstances. Not the biggest, but one that comes to mind was a job I had years ago where all but one of us had to do this really annoying group task involving lots of back and forth trips to a laundromat on the hottest day of that year. We were academic counselors for a summer program, and we had to walk groups of 30 students about a mile away to do laundry cause the college's machines broke, and these kids were getting stinky point the only one exempt from this task was the one suckup who always kissed the ass of the main top supervisor. We all assumed she was exempt because she kissed so much ass, but I think the supervisor just forgot to assign a task to her because she was so useless on our third trip back she's literally lounging in the lobby with her feet up on a chair doing nothing. The supervisor walks by, notices her, has what seems to have been a moment of realization, and then tells her to get a group and start doing the same laundry trips the rest of us are doing point she went nuts fucking bonkers. She's not screaming, but she's whining really loudly and quickly, and repeating that's not fair, this isn't fair, over and over and over again. The fact that she felt it wasn't fair is what infuriated me most. She then punched a hole in the lobby wall in frustration over having to do the same job everyone else had to do. Point two days later the main supervisor got fired, and the assistant supervisor who this lazy worker was badmouthing in an attempt to get into upper management's good graces was then made the top supervisor. 
This did not end well for the lazy one, Lmao. Four years ago, I worked at Target. Any retail job will show you infinite adult temper tantrums. One day, a man in his mid-forties, well-dressed, was buying lighters, and his two young sons were with him, maybe 8 and 11. As my current customer finished, I informed the man that I would need his ID in order to sell him the lighters. He started frustrated laughing and said do I look like I'm under 18 faking years. I said I believe you're over 18, sir, but when I scan the lighters, it will ask for your ID. If you don't have it, I have to call my manager to put a code in. Just trying to make things as easy as possible for you. He said you're a faking idiot and threw the lighters at me and went to leave. The current customer, as the dude stormed by, said stop being such an asshole and the man turned around and got in his face. The started arguing, but my current customer kept his cool while the asshole shouted at him. I'm pretty sure the dad does this frequently because the kids were tugging on his clothes, asking him to stop point another time, a lady had two carts full stuff. She was an extreme couponer and would resell these products in Facebook. She had calculated it and after everything was done, she was to get $280 in products and we would owe her $0.50. The issue is, it is not possible to pay someone out of the register. The system won't allow it. I offered to $0 out her balance, but insisted I couldn't give her money. She requested to speak to my manager. As my manager came over, the woman starts accusing me of stealing from her. Then she explains to my boss the situation and my boss corroborates my story. The woman says then you can go fuck yourself, tipped her cart over and left. Haha <laughs> that sounds completely accurate for classical musicians. Though I have to admit, I had to go back and reread it when I realized it was the violist freaking out, not the violinist, because that's some super stereotypical violinist behavior right there point source. 25 years of violin playing and accustomed to lots of annoying violinist tantrums though, that reminds me of my favorite classical music related tantrum, I was playing in a summer orchestra just after college, which had some college aged musicians in it. Our principal clarinet was quite good, but fresh out of high school, this was probably her first gig playing in a big kids orchestra, and was clearly used to most of her orchestra music being easy. I don't remember which symphony we were playing, but it had a very exposed clarinet solo that required her to come in after the rest of the wind stopped playing, on a weird off beat. It was admittedly a pretty difficult entrance, and she botches it a couple times, so we go back to fix it. She continues botching it and coming in late despite our conductor now counting 1, 2, 3, for which is how you know you're faking up, with very clear cues, so he has everyone else stop playing, so he can just work with her one on one. By the end of this, really, she should have been able to play it right, he sang it to her, he's counted, he's demoed it on the concert master's violin. He's had her sing her entrance without her instrument, accurately, but she just cannot get it together, and is starting to get an attitude with our conductor, as if she's annoyed at him for trying to make her play it correctly, and it's his fault she can't play it. You can see eyebrows raising around the orchestra as she starts, being snappy with him, because he doesn't suffer attitude point finally, he goes to make her do it one more time, which he tells her is the last time, she bursts into tears, shouts, no. I'm not playing it again, and storms out of the room, knocking her stand over in the process. The rest of us just are just silent, because oh no she did not, he just stares after her for a second, and continues on to the next section, as if we couldn't hear our principal clarinet having an audible temper tantrum in the hall outside point I'd love to have been a fly on the wall for the conversation that happened after rehearsal. I'm in retail, so I witness my fair share of adult temper tantrums, but ever since I became a manager it's 10x worse, because now I'm the one that gets called up to deal with the tantrums. A few weeks ago a woman wanted to return a curling iron that had clearly been being used for years and wasn't even a brand that my store sold, so she obviously had no receipt and no original packaging, meaning it wasn't eligible for return anyway, whether or not it's something she had bought at our store. When I told her this, politely of course, she puffed up and asked to speak to the manager. 
Okay, I'm a manager, but the store's general manager will be here tomorrow. If you want to leave your number and I can have her give you a call. Nope, not acceptable. She wants cash for it today. Even if I somehow was able to accept the return, my system literally won't let me. It would be store credit only, never cash. I tell her this, and she flips the fuck out. Screams at me, literally, not figuratively. Tells me she's calling the cops and corporate and the Better Business Bureau and the Attorney General. What the fuck are they going to do about it? Calls me a cunt and a hoe. And then she tells me karma is going to bite me in the ass. And I'm going to have a stillborn baby. Which was really fun to hear considering I'm currently 9 months pregnant. All because she couldn't return her used curling iron for meth money. I had no doubt in my mind she was on some sort of substance, but the significant amount of teeth missing from her mouth tipped me off that it was meth she was after, and you obviously can't pay your dealer in store credit point edited to at, another customer in line piped up and said hey lady, my husband is a cop and he's waiting for me in the car, want me to go get him, and that convinced meth lady to leave. I then went to the back and cried, and went home early. Also thank you for the well wishes. Baby and I are doing great. When I was working at Petco, I used to see all kinds of adult temper tantrums. People needed to take care of their animals, but hated how much that costs. Of course they would take it out on the store employees. People that wanted fish were the worst. They would try to get away with spending so little on fish and never wanted to clean their tanks or buy the stuff to do that. Then they wouldn't properly introduce new fish to their tanks and would bring in samples of their water that was just terrible and be pissed when they couldn't get another fish for free to replace the one they killed. However, the biggest adult temper tantrum was from a guy that bought flies off really cheap in an attempt to get rid of fleas, relatively expensive. He used the whole bottle and came back expecting a refund because his dog still had fleas. He was told no and things went south quick. He was yelling by the check lanes about how he deserved a refund. Screaming at the manager in front of everyone making a huge scene. He then kicked over the spinning rack holding dog collars and yelled that he was going to come back and shoot up the windows. We called the police. He never actually came back, but what a total piece of garbage over like 5 to 10 bucks edit. I think a lot of people are thinking this guy bought a cheap flea remedy. He bought flies off which was cheap repellent for flies. There was much more expensive flea collars and stuff that people didn't want to buy. Now that I think about it, it's entirely possible some of these people were somewhat illiterate and read flies as literate people would read fleas. Maybe this guy was one of those people and thought he bought fleas off. Back when I worked at a popular auto parts store point couple pulled up in a beat up old Lincoln that was pulling an old box trailer that was absolutely covered in Christian bumper stickers and Bible verses. That was my first warning that something was going to go wrong. Lady and her husband come in looking for a window motor for the driver's side door for their Lincoln. Now this store chain has most parts for a good number of vehicles. Very rarely can we flat out not get a part for you. But if we have it at another store, we can get it shipped to our store within a day or overnight depending on what time the part is ordered point but this beach asks for the motor and when we tell her that we could not get it for her this very second for her fuck in 1980 something pose Lincoln has a meltdown calling us idiots and as holes. Now at this point our commercial manager walks out from behind the back counter and politely informs this woman that she, in fact, will not speak to us that way. He had a habit of bobbing his head when he was talking to someone and angry. So this lady replies back that he must bob his head like that on his boyfriend's dick at night. Customers are staring and laughing at her. Manager goes into the back to figure something out. She asks if we have anything to sit on, but AutoZone doesn't have any chairs for employees to sit on, let alone customers. So this woman flips over a stack of those personal plastic carts you can get at any grocery store and sits on those. Meanwhile she's barking orders at her husband to get her stuff. The husband is acting like a dog that's been hit too many times and just looks glad that she's not telling it him. Finally manager comes out and tells her that one of the other stores in town has the sort in stock of she wants to drive there and get it. She finally agrees after a few minutes so they depart point but our commercial manager wasn't done yet. He had been working at this store chain for about 15 years at that point, so he was familiar with every other store and commercial manager in town. 
he put out calls to every store telling them, if this woman comes in looking for that part, you don't have it. I had a complaint filed against me at work that was dropped. TLDR ahead. A couple brought their cat in who had been declining at home with something really severe. While they were deciding what to do I flagged the cat as about to check out of reality. We started CPR shortly after and got him back. The woman, who was the owner, decided to euthanize and we made sure that everyone was comfortable and that she could properly say goodbye. When they went back to the exam room I followed to help her fill out the aftercare paperwork. She had some questions about the pet cemetery we use, and while I was trying to answer them her friend kept interrupting to ask unrelated or stupid questions. My last straw was, can we donate Fluffy for organ transplants to other animals, do they do that how does that work? At which point I looked up and said excuse me sir, but I can only speak with one person at a time and would like to focus on aftercare for Fluffy. The guy threw an epic tantrum complete with calling me an asshole to my face, slamming the door, and according to a cowalker proceeding to tell anyone in the lobby who would listen that I had killed Fluffy. He then asked my cowalker to file a complaint against me for being rude. She gave him our's number, but when he continued to scream she told him to either leave or she would call the police. Point the poor woman was mortified by his behavior. I managed to calm her down and help her choose what was best for Fluffy. She revealed to me that she had owned Fluffy for 15 plus years and that she and her husband, who had recently passed away, got him as a kitten the first year they were married. I really hope that she stopped hanging out with that garbage. I used to work for Goodyear Tire Auto Stores about 10 years ago. Point a man, 40s, well dressed, came in wanting an alignment done on his truck. When they told him a price, he got upset and said that he had purchased a lifetime alignment from us and would not be paying. Our sales guy explained calmly that Goodyear does not and has never sold lifetime alignments, but Firestone does, and perhaps he is mistaken. The man became furious, insisting that we perform his alignment because he paid for a lifetime alignment and that if we don't be, we'll sue for breach of contract. Manager gets involved, there's no calming this guy down. He has us check our system and he's never even been to a Jai store before at all. That just made it worse, etc. The next few minutes was him yelling incomprehensibly at our manager, other customers in the lounge, demanding action be taken on his vehicle. Finally the manager says he's calling the cops and the guy goes on a full-blown profanity-induced rampage through our store on the way to the door, knocking over coffee dispensers and cups, a magazine rack, and ends it by kicking open our door. The kick ripped the hydraulic door closer off the wall above the door, and he left point our manager ran into him a week later at a car dealership, turns out he was a sales manager there. Our manager walked out and cited that guy's behavior as the reason they just lost a sale, then he forwarded the security cam video of his rampage to the GM of the dealership. Still not sure what happened on that part. I work at a grocery store, and the other day I was working the register next to my buddy Carl. Point this frail old woman with two items and her own brought in bag came through his line. All was well the whole order, and the woman grabbed her bag and walked to the side point she started examining her receipt. At this point, Cole was already halfway through the next order. The woman then pulled out a calculator, mumbling to herself, looking distraught. Swiftly, she turned around, shoved the calculator into Carl's face, and demanded that he didn't give her a 3 cent discount for her reusable bag point that was our policy, and I was sure Carl didn't forget to ring that up. In fact, he didn't forget, and the woman was delirious. She insisted the price on her calculator was correct, and that Cole was wrong. Carl, sticking his ground, said he did give her the discount which only made her angrier at this point the whole line was annoyed, and the lady behind was in the middle of paying for her order, but she would not stop. She demanded 3 cents. She told Cal to open the drawer, which he said he couldn't. She reached for the donation jar, and demanded he take 3 cents out of that. That one got to me. I opened my register, ready to just throw her the 3 cents, when the woman behind frantically searches her purse for pennies. After 15 awkward yet notorious seconds for the old woman, the lady finally fished out 3 pennies. She grabbed them, and left without a word point funny thing was she also left her calculator, which Carl deliberately did not move. 
Half an hour later the lady was back, grabbed her calculator, and yelled, I am never coming to this stupid store again. Carl, I hope you don't. I love Carl. A few that I witnessed, my cow walker, who's quite a bit senior in the company, got moved to my team. He was sort of independent until then, and the move was mostly for administrative purposes. So my boss, who is a bit younger than my cow walker, comes in to announce this change in my cow walker has the most passive aggressive hissy fit I've ever witnessed from a grown person. He first tries to ignore my boss, then sort of tells him to leave and shut up, half under his breath. So my boss asks him what he said, and my cowalker just waves lamely for him to continue this happened twice more until my boss just flat out ignored him for the rest of his speech. Boss confronted this guy after the weekend about the whole incident, and I don't know what came from that as it's none of my business Switzerland had decided to join the UN when I was like 13 or something. I was sitting in the train going home when this old guy just up and starts shouting about foreigners and so on most people ignored him like good Swiss people and eventually left for other parts of the train or got over the next stop except for me and one other kid this kid catches the old guy's attention and gets a full on lecture about why we made a huge mistake. I don't remember what set this guy off and no idea what was going on as I wasn't paying attention was at an arcade with my dad and my brother and I think we wanted to play a game that this guy was playing with his son. I think they were gonna play another round when my dad asks him if we could get a turn. Next thing I know is this guy is just full on raging at my dad about something and throwing insults we left after that as it was gonna be our last game anyway. Last weekend I'd popped into a liquor shop with a mate of mine. As we walked in and went to browse, this lady was bringing her stuff to the counter. So we are looking at drinks and quietly talking about what to get, and we hear her faking start up on these two Indian dudes running the place. What? Do you mean the card was declined? Show me the receipt. If it was declined, there'd be a receipt. Show me the receipt. Well, apparently, there isn't. I have no idea how EFTPOS works in this place, and they are trying to calmly explain to her, but she goes from that to you fucking Punjab cunts, you're trying to fucking rip me off, don't fucking tell me I got no fucking money, I've just been to the fucking ATM. Show me the fucking receipt at this point her friend comes in from the car outside who seems like a lovely person, and has this look on her face like every day I have to deal with this sheet what's the problem? What's going on? Alleged problem is explained. How much is it? Alright, take this, we'll come back tomorrow, I'll come back tomorrow. I want to see the receipt and everything. And she starts trying to push some cash onto these guys. Don't. Fackin' take my friend's fackin' money. Fackin' bullshit yada fackin' yada she won't shut up. Then she notices me and my mate. We are not Indians. So obviously we are one of us in her mind. You boys better be fucking careful these Punjab cunts don't try to fucking rob you. Finally they walked out and I got to buy my vodka. The dudes running the place said sorry about that to me. Like, no dude I'm sorry. I was about to say something to the guys and they came back into the shop and kept yelling about the same bullshit. This mental chick demanding to see the receipts. So the guys start loading stuff on their computer trying to show her stuff. It'll take a minute to load. Just wait I've done enough waiting for you fackin Punjab cunts on and faking on. We just left. I wanted to tell her to fack off but I didn't want to get my faking face clawed off either. A former 35 year old cowalker began to cry, shout and bang his fists on my supervisor's desk no one is going to die or get hurt because of your mistake. A look of calm came across his face and because a small $10,000 marketing campaign was not successful point seeing that my colleague was emotionally and physically distraught over a small failure. Our supervisor tried to comfort him by saying this is a small failure and we have learned from it. Remember that this is just marketing and he replied, not yet, point I. Asked him what he meant by this, I. Said, not yet. Someone is going to get hurt, eventually, he replied back to me point this guy had an empty, thousand yard stare, when he said those words to me. I also knew, that he hated my supervisor and all of the women on our team. My boss and I remained outwardly calm, but I could tell the situation wasn't going to improve on its own. So I recommended that he take the rest of the day off 
to decompress without saying anything he stormed out of her office, walked over to his desk, and grabbed his car keys. He slammed his drawers, ran out to the parking lot, entered his car and peeled out, leaving his computer and all of the personal belongings behind, including his wallet and cell phone. He was crying and sniveling the entire the time point we agreed to call the police and notified them that a disgruntled employee made a clear implication that he was going to hurt someone at our office. The police stationed one cruiser in our parking lot almost immediately point we later got word that our colleague had a warrant out for his arrest for beating his girlfriend with a knife block, which is why the police response time was unusually fast. They waited for him at his home and arrested him on the spot. He had a loaded handgun in his vehicle, thus, it was plausible to assume he intended to use it at our office. Point our entire marketing budget for the fiscal year was $25 million. Essentially, he was willing to kill people over a $10,000 mistake. I'd say that's the worst adult temper tantrum I have ever seen. When I was in my late teens early 20s, I worked at Walmart. Aside from being the worst company I've ever worked for, the middle-aged stay-at-home mom types were the worst people I have encountered in my life. I generally ran the customer service desk, taking exchanges and returns, and answering phones at our particular store. Not all have it, but we had a fish department, where you could buy live basic fish. Goldfish, guppies, beaters, stuff like that. One of these horrible women bought about 5 little goldfish. You know the kind, they're like 30 cent a piece, they all look exactly the same so, if one dies you can replace it, and your kid won't know point our return policy on fish was, if they died within a certain time frame, you could return them, receipt required, for an exchange or refund. This lady came in with a little ziplock baggie of dead goldfish. I asked for her receipt, and she said she didn't have it. I kindly informed her that as per our policy, I wouldn't be able to process a refund or exchange point this woman flipped. I mean like, over the top, seemed like she was on meth, freaked out at me. I, at the time, was just barely an adult with horrible anxiety, basically panicked, saying things like I'm so sorry, there isn't anything I can do, let me get my customer service manager. Of course, she was having none of it. She just kept yelling at me, I don't want a manager, I want a refund on these defective fish and stuff like that point eventually, after like 10 minutes of her yelling at me, and a line forming, my CSM noticed and came over. I wasn't allowed to step away from the desk, and the CSM wasn't answering pages for whatever reason. The CSM told the woman the same thing, that a receipt would be required for the return. The lady still wasn't happy, so the store manager, this horrible man named Dem who everyone hated, came to the front point I and the CSM explained what was going on, and Dem actually apologized to this horrible woman for the inconvenience, and immediately told me off in front of her, and the CSM for not doing the refund. That he told us we were not allowed to do. His rule. So here I am, having been screamed at for 10 minutes, then made to look like an incompetent idiot, and this faking lady just gives me the self-satisfied look. She got her like $3 back, and I thought that would be the end of it point but oh no, she just had to make a bigger scene. She picked up the bag of dead goldfish, which you could smell through the plastic. She unzipped it, and flung it at me. Yep. 40 something year old woman threw stinking, dead goldfish at basically a kid just doing her job. I turned all kinds of red, because I had finally had it, and got so pissed off. My CSM dragged me away, and put another cashier at the front desk, and sent me home for the day, because I was so upset point next day I went in, super manager M wrote me up for being rude to a customer fac warm at point bonus unrelated story about how horrible it is to work for Walmart, I was 21, and planning to get married, I would be getting married on the 4th of July. I gave notice, in February, when we got engaged, that I would need that full week off. The week before comes, and I'm on the schedule. I notify M that I wouldn't be able to come in, and showed him my approved time off form, signed by who else, but himself. He said if I didn't show up, I would be disciplined up to and including termination. I didn't cancel my wedding, and when I returned to work, I was given what was called a D-Day. 
they send you home for the day and make you write a letter of a certain length stating why you enjoyed working at Walmart and why you wanted to keep your job as well as what you would do in the future to be a better employee. Point The D-Day was the day before my normally scheduled two days off of the week. I went and applied at Target down the street, was called back and hired the next day. My letter that was supposed to be like two pages long was only a few sentences, saying how I quit, and that I hoped he was happy losing one of the only employees who never called out or was late. I had a nice two week break, before I started at Target, which was at least a little better to work at. Last I heard he was fired for sexual harassment a few years, after I quit point edit, someone I know recognized this story, so I edited out the name of my scummy manager. I managed a salon supply store. We sold things like hair color and shampoos and stuff salons retail. One must be a licensed cosmetologist in order to shop in the store. One evening a woman came in and began looking at color. I asked if she needed any assistance. It took about 2 seconds to realize she didn't know what she was talking about. So I asked to see her license. She pulled out her driver's license. I said I needed to see her cosy license, and that only licensed professionals were allowed to shop in my store. She lost it. She started hollering at me, and said that she was a licensed practical nurse, and how dare I say she wasn't professional. Then she sat on the floor screaming that she wasn't leaving, until I picked her color out, and let her buy it. Then she stuck her fingers in her ear, and started with the la 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 I can't hear you. Just then she got a phone call. It was her mom. She started arguing with her and hung up after yelling these beaches won't let me buy what I need. I'm not coming out until they do, so you can just wait in the car. I walked to the door and sure enough there was an older woman in the passenger seat of the car in front of the store. I waved her in to come get her daughter. She came to the door and yelled get your ass in the car, you're embarrassing yourself. They left, but the daughter spit on the window before she walked away kind of relevant, I went bowling with a friend and my mother for my birthday. I was turning 10 over 11. There's a supermarket right next to the bowling alley so afterwards my mother went in to get stuff for my actual party with all my friends etc. For whatever reason my friend and I were following her there about 30 minutes later. We were probably playing in the casino and the bowling place while she shopped point. So we walk into the shop and I see my mother in one of the aisles and go to walk over to her. When a security guard comes up a small bit aggressively says something like get out of here. You're not allowed in here on your own. I pointed to my mother and said my mam is right there he said that doesn't matter, we are not allowed, walk in on our own, and tells us to stand outside, so we do. My mam obviously didn't see this happening and I didn't think to just call her. So we are standing outside, and about 5 tenths minutes later he comes out, and tells us to leave. I point at my mother again who is now queuing, and tell him she's just there. He walks back inside 5 minutes later I see him in the window pointing at us and gesturing us to leave while walking out to us. He walks out the door and says and starts aggressively, I mean really angrily shouting at us telling us to get out of here and all that. My mother saw him walking out to us, I think she actually knew we were outside at this point and just assumed we were waiting. She comes out and tells him not to talk to us like that, we are with her yada yada yada. We go back in, and the security guard is just trailing right behind us telling my mother how he was right and all this. So my mother just leaves all the stuff on the conveyor belt and we leave. Keep in mind she was doing the shopping for a kid's birthday. There was a lot of stuff, the entire belt was full and some stuff had already been scanned. She was actually really disappointed, because she was now gonna have to do all that again. This is gonna be a long one, and it's one I made in the past in a different reply. But I'm gonna clean it up for the most part. Thing to know, is that I'm hearing impaired with severe to profound hearing loss. I wear nadus to be able to hear it was in 2015, or early 2016. I was meeting a client at Starbucks to discuss a contract renewal. I was sitting and reading the contract a bit more, so I'd know their situation a bit better. Out of nowhere, this hipster girl came up to me and said I couldn't wear my hearing aids because she thought that they were a Bluetooth headset and not actual hearing aids. Her words were you can't be wearing those, they insult people who are disabled. 
I looked at her dumbfounded, and she began to screech her broken line of thought. When she realized I wasn't going to take them out after her little speech, she proceeded to try and yank them from my ears. This didn't sit well with me, so I recoiled and tried not to hit her. She then began to scream and shout that I was being oppressive and ignorant. The manager had to come over and ask what was wrong. I wasn't able to get my mouth open because she kept screeching. When the manager asked her to leave she began to scream how she was going to call the police and have everyone there arrested for extreme oppression of her rights and for me pretending to be disabled. This is when her friends ran interference for her as she called the town police. She then began to keep squeaking until the police came. The only officer who came in was my dad point it was the most euphoric moment of my life. By the way we haven't gotten to her temper tantrum yet, she ran up to my father and began to spew these completely bullshit statements on how the manager struck her several times and how I was faking being disabled to illegally panhandle money in the shop. The manager and my father exchanged looks, the manager came out and said that the cameras in the shop have been recording all morning and are within legal compliance with the town, so there's no tampering, they are dual fed to a town rep, she began to realize the manager bit was a lost cause, and focused on me, the looks my father and I exchanged, with those of this idiot doesn't know, this is gonna be fun, I never learned much sign language in my life, but my father did his best to help me, so right in front of this woman we began to sign hello, and how are you as well as several nonsensical signs. This is where she began her temper tantrum, she began to rave and rant on how the whole police were misogynistic oppressive Nazis, and how my dad, the officer to her, and I were working together on corrupt money making schemes, and screeched constantly the entire time, her friends came to try and calm her down, when they realized how bad she was going off, and how far south their move was going, as they were pulling her away. She claimed that she was going to sue everyone involved point to this day I don't know how she did it, but she found my information and sent legal documents from lawyers trying to get me to confess to her growing list of crimes that I committed this went on for a few months until her lawyer stated they could no longer work with her and sent me a letter saying they've dropped all inquiry point this was the biggest tantrum to me. And the most hilarious, also you'll note I never said anything to her or the manager the entire time. I work for Walgreens, and most of you might know the clientele, and for you all that don't, it sold people for the most part. I have tons of stories, but the most recent thing that comes to my mind is the day we had to evacuate our store. A maintenance guy was in our store working on getting us hot water again. He comes out a little later with all his things in hand, finds a manager, and informs her dispatch just called, and said they needed to evacuate the building, because the pressure was too high from the valves, or whatever. It's midday, relatively slow, and as I'm making my way around informing customers they have to leave, because the building might explode I come across an older couple, probably late 60s early 70s. The husband throws a huge fit, and is refusing to leave. At this point all the other customers are outside, as well as my fellow coworkers. I explain to him, and his wife calmly, that we have been ordered to evacuate. He still continues to argue, says he needs these things he has in his hand basket, and then stands at the door, and argues with me about when we're going to reopen. I tell him maybe never, because we might explode. That pissed him off more. Finally, he left and the building did not explode. The gas people came out shortly after and gave us the okay, but can you imagine, if we had been in serious danger, me and Pepperwold died over some preparation H and body lotion. I had a lady walk up to me in Home Depot when I worked in outside garden. She wanted to return some dead plants and we have a year guarantee on all our plants, no matter the cause of their death. Aside from annuals naturally. Now this winner come to me and confirms that we have a year guarantee from me and then says, I want to return these plants. I look at the plants and tell her that she can't return those dead plants. She immediately started getting huffy and arguing with me about our year guarantee on the plants. I tell her again she can't return the plants. She breaks and goes off on a tirade about always getting shitty service and how much money she spends at Home Depot. At this point there are now people watching her berate me, and I just stand there taking the abuse. After about 3 minutes of yelling at me, she finally asks the right question and says, why can't I return these plants, 
I pick the tag off the plant, give it to her, and say, because it's from Walmart. I have never seen someone so embarrassed in my life as she lowered her head and slunk away. If she hadn't interrupted me when I originally told her she couldn't return it, she wouldn't have looked like such an idiot. I could have told her initially, but when I saw her get pussy, I said this gonna be good point I had a pep in my step the rest of the day. I work at the Costco food court and there are a plethora of stories I could tell, but one sticks out in particular. We usually have the option of chocolate or vanilla ice cream, however, a shipment of chocolate ice cream didn't come in, so we were left with only vanilla all day. Most people wanting chocolate were slightly upset, but went on their way. But here comes in a mother in her 30s with her son, who's maybe 5 years old who were more adamant than the usual customer. Mother, I'd like two chocolate ice cream cones please point me, I'm very sorry ma'am, but we only have vanilla at the moment mother, oh, then I'll have the twist, mixture of chocolate and vanilla, me, I'm sorry, but we just don't have any chocolate ice cream right now mother in shock mother, so how am I supposed to get chocolate ice cream? Today is the day we get chocolate ice cream point me, I'm not sure what to tell you, a shipment might come in for tomorrow or there are other stores that could sell you ice cream mother, that is unacceptable, where is your manager call manager and she comes mother, your worker here told me, that I can't have chocolate ice cream and I should go away, me stares at manager, like she's a psycho manager. Ma'am, a shipment for the ice cream never came in. We can't serve you any for today the mother's kid, I'm okay with just vanilla ice cream mother yelling at kid, are you kidding me, this is chocolate day, we always get the chocolate ice cream, we are leaving right now, this place is awful and what happens next is something I'll never forget. The mom drags on the kid's arm pulling him towards the exit. The kid turns to us with a saddened look, and mouths I'm sorry point sometimes, a 5 year old can be more adult than some adults. Guy sits down at my bar at 10.30 a.m. Morning sir, here's a menu just wanted to let you know we open at 11, but you're more than welcome to sit here until we open guy. Fine can I have a corona? Me, no sir we open at 11. Guy, scowling whatever I served him a glass of water and continued opening my bar. At a few minutes to 11 I grabbed him the corona. He proceeds to get on his phone ranting to someone pacing all around the restaurant in circles, just as he's about to exit out the side door, which leads straight to a parking lot I get his attention and ask for a credit card if he's going to leave the restaurant. He protests, yelling and cursing. I reply politely that it's policy. He proceeds to lunge at me and from across the restaurant throws a gold American Express card at me like he was a fucking knife throwing circus performer yelling fine here. Point of course I immediately close his tab and run his card because he is a very picture of belligerence we are warned about in responsible vendors classes. He comes over and begins to flip out at the notion of being kicked out of a restaurant at 11.15 in the morning. As he's yelling I keep repeating, have a nice day sir, have a nice day sir, have a nice day sir until he finally retorts, oh I I I I I I I I will because I don't work in a bar mathurfica. So I quietly, so there's no witnesses, reply oh I know you just wait outside of one shaking at 10.30 in the morning. He lost point his point mind lol signs his credit card receipt so violently he tears it a bit and leaves the restaurant shrieking about how rich he is. I look down at the receipt trying hard not to think about my life choices and it's signed. Fuck yautlda. Guy with the DTs doesn't know how to act in a bar. Gets kicked out all before 11.30. My then future stepmom had a temper tantrum when her dog bit a chunk out of my face when I was little and animal control had to pick up the dog for testing. She raged that the dog didn't do anything, that he fell or played with some farm equipment or something, yelled that they were trespassing and all but assaulted one of the guys. My dad basically had to restrain her to allow the guys to do their job. I was obviously at the hospital. So I learned this second hand from my brother and sister who watched the whole thing, but this tantrum was apparently epic, and they really thought she should be the one tested for rabies, not the dog point the dog ended up being fine anyway. In California in the early 90s, apparently an animal got one free pass to do anything up to killing a human being, and they wouldn't put it down. I believe when I told this story before, 
someone said that's changed, and a severe enough attack, if proven unprovoked like mine was, will lead to the animal being put to sleep point so yeah. Dog rips out chunk of my face, nearly killing me, and she attacks the animal control guy just taking the dog to get tested, because even though my dad and brother saw what happened, she kept insisting it was my fault point oh yeah, it wasn't so relevant to the temper tantrum part, but saint stepmom didn't even want to take me to the hospital. She didn't want any risk that her dog would be put down. She's saying all this while my dad's trying to keep me awake as my blood is pouring down his abdomen while he holds me and tries to find the car keys. My dad apparently developed bad taste in women a few years after divorcing my mom, but he still loves me, and the way my brother and sister tell it he didn't even stop for a moment to listen to her, and they got in the car to drive me straight to the air without her. I was passing in and out of consciousness at the time, and I was like 5, so I only remember the door where I came in to get help, my dad covered from chin to pants in my blood, the threshold where they carried me out, and my sister holding me in her lap, and chanting it's going to be okay over and over while on the way to the hospital point like I said, most anything here is second hand from my siblings, but if it was even remotely like. They said, her temper tantrum, especially given the context of it being, yeah no, my life on the line, definitely fits here edit, thought I'd answer some common questions. Yes, after some amount of time I can't recall, my dad still married her, hence future stepmom. And they are still married like 25 years later, by far my dad's longest marriage. Speaking of, some people asked if I was ever abused slash in that situation again, no. Me, my brother, and my sister are from my dad's three previous marriages. When we weren't visiting dad's side of the family, we all lived with our respective biological moms last but not least. Thanks very much for all the kind words. It was decades ago at this point, and after two reconstructive surgeries, you have to look real close to even see the scar. My relationship with my dad is distant but amiable, and my relationship with my stepmom is non-existent, which is fine by me. I honestly don't even remember what she looks like. Worked at Blockbuster once. Have a few stories there was a movie gallery right across the street, and it was a shockingly common occurrence for people to drop their movies in our return box, and vice versa. So, every night before we closed, we would meet outside one of our shops and exchange with one another. It was also fairly well known that some employees at each place would rifle through them, and if they wanted a movie from that stack, they'd keep it. I mean, I don't agree with it, it's stealing, but also movie gallery isn't responsible for blockbuster's inventory, and blockbuster isn't responsible for this. So, I get it point anyway, this one woman came into my store one day and said I dropped my movie gallery movie off here a few weeks ago, and they said they never got it, and now I'm getting charged for it. So, I said okay, well, let me check and see if we still have it by chance, and walked her over to the stacks. Of course, not there. She flipped her sheet at me, and accused me personally of stealing it. Made a big giant scene in the store pointed her finger in my face, and started calling me a movie thief. She stopped for a second, I'm assuming she could tell I wanted to say something, and I just said ma'am, I work at a blockbuster. Why on earth would I need to steal a movie? She just stormed out too, the second one, I didn't actually witness the temper tantrum, but I did find the collateral damage from it. This idiot came in on a Sunday, clearly right after church, and wanted to rent the last temptation of Christ. She brought it up to the counter with her little church friend, and was going on and on about how great it is to see a movie made about Jesus, and all this. I took it upon myself to interject, and said ma'am, this isn't really what you think it is. And I wanted to go on, and explain the movie a little more, but of course, fat me I'm just the blockbuster guy. So, I just sighed and said okay, I'll ring you up point next morning, I come in to open the store, right underneath the night drop box is a smashed to sheet blockbuster case and pieces of DVD scattered around. I pick it up, and find a little, not underneath that says something like I'm Christian filth or something to that end. So, I gave it to my store manager, and told her I remember this person, and how she'd rented it against my advice. So, in cases like that, where the DVD was blatantly broken on purpose, you automatically get charged full retail price to replace it. 
and since it was a special edition slash director's cut slash collector's edition slash whatever, we had to replace it with another special edition, which ran something ridiculous at the time, like $60 or something. She was not happy to get that bill the next time she came in, which brings me to my third case. The next time I saw Church Lady, obviously the Jesus DVD had been taken care of because she didn't bring it up to me and she didn't owe us any money. So, I'm glad I didn't have to deal with that. But, this time she came in with her grandkids. Apparently, they were having some type of get together at their house and the adults would be chatting, of course, and they wanted the kids to have movie slash some movies to keep them busy. The kids run off and get Shrek, or whatever, and church lady comes up with pirates. For those of you not in the know, pirates was a pirate themed soft core born movie. I was actually shocked that blockbuster had it, but I suppose it had enough of a plot to not just be about TNA point church lady was telling me how great these pirates of the Caribbean movies are, and how her grandkids hadn't seen it yet. She asked why we didn't have more copies of such a big film. So, I started to explain to her that what she had was simply pirates, and not pirates of the Caribbean, and how the movie she had, had more of an adult theme than the Disney movie. She started ranting about how every time she comes in there, I try to talk her out of getting something. She then accused me of being condescending blah blah blah. I was like ma'am, I make $10 hour, and my job is to know about these movies. Based on our last experience with each other, when you also didn't listen to my advice, it cost you $60. I'm just trying to do my job, but if you want that movie for your kids, I guess I really can't stop you. So, she rented it, and left point my shift ended not long after, and I'm at home finishing up some stupid biology homework, when I get a call from my store manager. She's like hey, did you rent pirates to someone today, and I just started laughing. She's like I'll take that as yes. Did you try to explain to her what she was getting? And I just said yep, and just like last time she wasn't having it. Apparently, she got home, their little party started, and she threw the DVD in, and left the room. Group of about 8 kids ranging in ages from about 6 to 10 saw about 20 minutes of it, before anyone realized what was going on. From what I was told, they almost had to call the police on that lady when she came back to the store point I had been to war by this point in my life. I got out of the marines and went back to school and this was my first job as a civilian since. Think I'd been home from Iraq about 4 months before I started working here. This job was way more stressful than deploying. I used to work for a private jet company. Outrage was the norm for us Aquifina was on the plane instead of Fuji. That's a complaint you were asked to show your ID before getting on the plane. We should have known who you were and how important you are we won't go to Home Depot to get a small square of sod for your dog to sit on during the flight. Worst flight ever. Seriously, someone asked for that and we actually did it. My favorite, though, is this one. A customer was outraged that we would not fly them to Aspen during a major snowstorm. We explained to him that it was too dangerous and if we had lost an engine, we wouldn't be able to land the plane. He refused to accept that answer and called multiple times over several days yelling about how other planes were flying in and there's no reason why we couldn't either. This eventually escalated all the way up to the CEO. Keep in mind, we get minor complaints about very petty things regularly, it's the nature of catering to the ultra pampered. If the CEO is getting involved, one of two things happened, we either messed up really bad, or the customer is throwing a huge tantrum and is verbally abusing our customer service representatives over the phone. He was doing the latter the CEO called him and offered to fly him down to headquarters on the company's dime. When he arrived, the CEO took him to sit in the training simulator of the plane he would have flown on. The sim was set up for a final approach with the exact weather conditions of that day in Aspen. During the landing, the plane had an unexpected engine failure. The pilot couldn't land it, and the customer watched the pilot struggle to maintain control as his plane crashed into the ground. Point the customer stopped complaining after that point TLDR. Customer is furious we won't fly him in a private jet to Aspen during a blinding snowstorm. CEO flies him to HQ on the company's dime, makes him watch his own death in a simulated landing catastrophe at Aspen. Oh, definitely my own. 
I was using my brand new piece of sheet weed whacker slash edging tool on the sidewalk in front of my house. It's basically just thick fishing line on a spool with a motor that whips it around. You get the line fed out to just the right weed whacking length, then it spins around super fast to whack the weeds and edge the grass. When the fishing line breaks, you feed out more by turning it upside down and gently tapping the till on the ground. But here's the thing, it's a complete and utter piece of sheet. The line breaks almost immediately, and the spool always tangles, so I'd have to stop and detangle it so it would feed out more point I'd been out there almost 30 minutes and had edged a grand total of 12 inches of grass with maybe 10 stops to detangle. I could have edged the grass with scissors faster inevitably, each gentle tap to feed out more line was getting gradually less and less gentle. After the last tangle, I finally reached my breaking point and just started bashing the thing on the sidewalk, in big arc swings from over my head, lumberjack style, and I'm swearing the entire time at the top of my lungs, in time with each swing. In the front yard of my house point after more swings than I expected can take, the tool finally comes apart. But I'm just getting warmed up. I marched it out back to the garbage cans in the alley and beat the sheet out of it some more against the can. Because the motor casing isn't enough, I need to break the long handle in half too. I scrape the sheet out of my hand in my frenzy, but I eventually get that tool into about 4 jagged pieces I'm not proud. But god damn it, I still get mad thinking about that crappy piece of sheet weed whacker. Fuck you, weed whacker. Die. Die. Used to work at a deli part time while at university. There was a manager who was appointed to the position solely through nepotism, as her mum owned the store. She took command of everything, and insisted on professionalism, wanted dress shoes us to wear. Even when the staff told her they weren't the non-slip kind she became enraged, and told us just be more careful where you walk however she was the least bit professional in any sense. Constant smoke breaks, like one every 20 minutes to our phone calls to friends on the business phone calling her kids to see if they were indeed in school, and if they weren't, which was often, she would call the school and tell them to go pick up her kids for her, and constant innuendos with any customer she deemed attractive point one day she came back from a break in haste, not because it was the day before Thanksgiving, and we had 200 turkeys to sell, but she couldn't find her phone. She comes back to a very busy store and proceeds to tell customers to move while frantically searching countertops, walk-in fridges, break room etc. point for the phone. She comes back to the front screaming at us alright you where the fuck is my phone and crying. She begins to snap at customers and screams find my phone till her mum comes in the store to see this mess and goes over to comfort her shook daughter. Someone pips up and asks her maybe she left it on the counter when she went to buy cigarettes. She looks him dead in the eye and says him not stupid then proceeds to leave and go back to the corner store. She came back with the phone with a sense of calm over her and never acknowledged her behavior prior. I work at a Dairy Queen. A woman probably in her 40s was a total soccer mom came through drive through and ordered like 6 things, which sucks cause we're a smaller Dairy Queen, and it takes us longer. I made her a ketchup hot dog instead of mustard by accident, that's totally my fault, I accept blame. Instead of driving to the front window, or driving around again, she proceeds to back her car up, there's a car behind her at the drive through she came so close to hitting it, and weaved around it, so she got back through in line. My coworker who was ringing her up said she complained that whoever else was working drive through was doing a horrible job today. Acca me. I've been there 5 years, I just made an honest mistake. So I make her a mustard dog, and she drives away. Less than 2 minutes later she parks her minivan in the front lot, comes up to our front window, throws a hot dog at us, and begins screaming at me. She claims I sabotaged her and put too much mustard on her hot dog out of revenge her words, not mine. She screams and screams and screams, asking for a manager. When my manager went over and apologized, she wouldn't have it. I stayed calm, didn't raise my voice, and apologized repeatedly. She would not have it. She just screamed. My kid in the car has to go to the bathroom. I can't believe this. Then why are you prioritizing your hot dog over your child's needs? She kept screaming and wouldn't listen to my apology. I asked her to stop yelling, but she wouldn't listen to that either. 
Eventually I said yelling won't solve anything, and went to the back. I have pretty bad anxiety, so I had a panic attack. I could hear her demanding I be fired. This happened like 2 weeks ago, but I'm honestly still scared of her. Who the fuck screams at a 19 year old girl over too much mustard? I used to work at McD's, McDonald's, as a fry cook or assembly line personal. I assembled the burgers. It was summer of 2015, and it was my first month working for McD's, so I was still technically under training. Anyways one day a lady came in and ordered a regular cheeseburger with extra pickles. Let's call her Bubble Base. Now McD's trains us with instructional videos and they have pictures up on the walls showing us how to assemble the food items. The classic cheeseburger for those who do not know, is a basic bun with one squirt of ketchup, two squirts of mustard, a pinch of chopped onion, one pickle slice, one slice of cheese, and one beef patty. When a customer orders a burger with something extra on it, we oblige with one or two extra toppings in this particular instance Bubble Base wanted extra pickles which to my knowledge at the time, meant we gave her two extra pickles, making it a total of three pickles on the burger. I made it then I sent it out, Bubble Base comes up to the cashier and tells my manager she wanted extra pickles on her cheeseburger the manager comes to the assembly and says guys please make another burger and extra pickles, my managers bless their tiny hearts were really patient with Bubble Base, anyways I remake the burger and before I put on the pickles I ask my cow walker, how many should I add, he said, I dunno, 5? So 5 it was, and I sent the burger out, within a minute bubble base is back at the register this time all angry, she told the cashier get me your manager, the manager comes up, and I overhear her saying, are you guys dumb, I said, I want extra pickles, she opens up her burger does this look like extra pickles, now at this point my manager asks her, ma'am, how many pickles do you want, the lady says I don't know a fistful. Now here's where it gets good, my manager says okay, comes to the back, and says stand aside boys, I'll make it this time. He makes the burger normally, then he gets to the pickles, gets a fistful of pickles, puts it on the burger and takes it to the lady. Now when I say a fistful I mean he literally, made a small little mountain of pickles on this lady's burger. The lady comes back to the cash register and demands we give her her money back. At this point another manager has clocked in and is giving her a refund and he asks her why. Bubble Bass flipped him off and stormed out of the McDee's. The new manager looks at the other manager and says what the hell was that about. Check the burger, says the other manager. This manager has no idea what just happened and he looks at the other guy with the face of confusion and he says, who the fact made this? Everyone one on shift, pointed at the other manager, and he says, she wanted extra pickles. Later we got a phone call from the owner of the building, saying she got a complaint from the McDonald's corporation about an issue with a customer not getting extra pickles, and then getting too many pickles tldr. Lady wanted extra pickles on burger, she got a fistful of pickles. Okay everyone, take a bathroom break now, and grab a snack, ready, here we go, I once worked in a call center, now, call centers suck, but this one, at a bare minimum, paid well, we did financial advising for people who invested in our company's investment plans, it was absolutely a call center, but you needed a college degree and a stack of securities licenses to work there. Money was on the low end for financial services, but on the extreme high end for call centers. Still, you got pissy people, and it was call after call. All, except for pay, of the bad things going on at call centers still applied. Cubicles were reasonably spacious, and they gave us quite a bit of leeway for how we decorated them. The only rule was that they had to look professional. So, most people had very little. We were paperless. So, maybe throw a family photo or two up in the cube and call it good. But then there was this one guy, the guy cluttered his entire cube. He built a little altar to the Virgin Mary on the shelf above his monitors. Surrounding Mary were fake flowers, battery operated votives etc. On virtually every speck of that fabric lining on the cubicle walls he had something pinned up. He had prayers, scripture verses, articles about the three days of darkness, etc. Me, I had a framed photo and this little 4 inch statue of Athena. That was it. Athena didn't do much. 
She just sat on my desk and I leaned a small stack of business cards, which we never used because call center, in front of her. These were the only two items in my work area that weren't issued by the company. Point I come out one day and this fat greasy waist is standing next to my desk screaming at a woman from ours. Now, had it been anyone else they likely would have just shut his fat ass down. But she was one of those mousy types who tried to just give people whatever they wanted if they were screaming to make them go away and stop point he is in a full blown rant, faces turning beet red. Why? Because I have idols on my desk and I'm violating his constitutionally protected right to practice his religion by having idols, so. The hour woman is looking flustered and she looks at me and says umm, you slash thefire underscore eagle, Ray is uncomfortable with the statue on your desk. Would you consider removing it? Now, had Ray come and ask me nicely then maybe I would have considered this. But he didn't. He was being in his hole. So I said no, I won't be removing it. The corporate policy clearly states that I can keep religious artifacts on my desk unless they are perfumed or are of some nature that they could cause an issue of safety or public hygiene. Athena is quite clean, so. Now Fatus is really raging because my Athena isn't religious. See, his Mary statues, those are religious, so he can put them up no matter whom they might offend. But mine is an idol, and therefore it must be removed if it offends him. Makes sense, right? Our woman looks like she just realized that she's standing in the middle of a minefield. She says is, the statue religious in nature, I shrug and say sure, I'm a pagan. Now, if you want to change the policy to not allow religious statues at all then I'll remove it, but that means that Ray will have to take down his shrine. At this point the guy walks into my cube, grabs the statue and flings it. Full faking force just throws a little statue at the nearest wall. It breaks, the pieces land on a printer, and Ray has this look on his face like he just realizes he took things too far the day ended with Ray and his mini major gorge, being escorted out of the building to pursue new opportunities. Late to the party hope this gets seen point in high school I worked at Nordstrom, it was my first job, and at the time of this story I had been working there a grand total of one month on and off, so I was still pretty new. To anyone who doesn't shop there, Nordstrom has no official return policy, seriously, I did some returns and nothing came by that tested this policy until one day, a lady comes in, to return a pair of Stuart Wheatsman dress shoes. I worked in the expensive women's shoe department, and southwestern shoes typically start at $200, and go up from their point she walks up her, I'd like to return these shoes me, I'm happy to help you with that, do you have a receipt? Huh, with attitude, no, there's the label on the front just use that me, okay I open the box to inspect the shoes, they are destroyed. They were dress shoes, and both heels had been snapped off, the leather was ripped all over, and these shoes looked like she had run 20 marathons in them. I had never seen a more destroyed pair of dress shoes in my entire life. I was blown away by this the label on the box she mentioned was called a shank, and it told who the salesperson was who sold it, how much it was sold for, the UPC and the date of the sale. These damn shoes were bought the week our store opened up 10 years prior. 10 years. Once I realized how old they were, and how destroyed they were I said, me, ma'am, these shoes are 10 years old, and they are destroyed, I cannot return these I've never seen someone go from somewhat calm to face red angry screaming in my entire life, she flipped out, after I said that pointer, yelling as loud as she can, what do you mean you can't return them, I've been shopping here. Since before you were born you have no right to tell me you can't return these, you have to take them back. Get me your manager right now. By this time my managers have noticed the commotion and come to my aid. Thank god, I had never been yelled at by anyone but my parents to that point in my life. It really shocked me. My manager comes by and I brief her on what the situation is and my manager takes over talking to this whack job for me so I can help the other customers in line who were quite embarrassed for this crazy lady point manager, ma'am, these shoes are ruined, both heels are snapped off, and they are just destroyed, plus they are 10 years old. The best we can do is give you half the price back as a refund half wasn't enough for this horrible person apparently her, somehow even angrier than before, half. What do you mean half? 
Don't you dare pull this SHHET on me. I want to see your manager. Get me your goddamn manager right now you piece of shit. And continue shouting obscenities in front of children at my manager. Manager. I'm the manager of this department. The only person above me is a store manager. Huh. Get me the fiend store manager you fiend piece of shit by sheer coincidence. Our store manager was a floor above giving a tour to some regional managers. All people very high up in the company, and not people who should be seeing a scene like this. This lady was so loud and obscene the store manager could hear from a floor above, and rushed downstairs as fast as she could once she heard what was going on point the store manager introduced herself, and immediately this lady goes from eyes bulging out red faced angry to calm as a button. Store manager decides to give her the full refund, just to get her out of the store, and that was the end of that point to this day. I've never seen someone throw a bigger temper tantrum inside of a busy department store in my life and it's been 13 years since this happened. Everyone should work a retail job at one point, just so they know how to treat a fellow human being. My first Mother's Day this year, my parents made reservations at a nice Italian restaurant for 6pm. This was late for us as we have a baby who usually goes to bed around 7.20, but special occasion and whatnot. Keep in mind, Mother's Day is a Sunday which is usually the busiest restaurant day anyways. We get in on time, and it takes about 15 minutes to get our drinks, but my mum's coffee was forgotten. This led to my sister, mother, and father loudly passive-aggressively complaining about bad service. My husband and I quietly talked and decided that we would ask for our food to go, since we were a, getting embarrassed by my family's behavior and b, the baby was getting fussy because it was close to bedtime. Around an hour later our food isn't there and baby is having a full on meltdown, so I take him to the entrance to try to calm him down and about 5 minutes into calming him down my husband rushes at us with the diaper bag and car keys and says we need to go now, your dad is losing his sheet. I notice that the husband forgot baby's bottle, so I go back to get it, and my dad is screaming at the manager about the slow service, how they've ruined his night out, and ruined my first mother's day, and that I was leaving, yada, yada. I basically hid my face, grabbed the bottle, mouthed I'm so sorry to the waitress and manager and bolted. As we were getting in the car I could see my parents and sister, with her two kids, being escorted out by the manager and a chef. They yelled across the parking lot to get my attention about going somewhere else, but I ignored them. Literally the most embarrassed I have ever been in my entire life, and my husband and I have an agreement to never go out to a restaurant with my family again. I mean, at the point where my dad was losing his sheet, I don't think we would have wanted our food because I wouldn't blame them for spitting in it, or worse. Work or worked at Mod Pizza up until two weeks ago in a fancy area of Northern Vap. Had an older, 6270, gentleman come in, and I greeted him at point, and started to make his pizza. He asked for extra cheese and I informed him, not a problem. But if you want, we have different types of cheese at the end. And he got absolutely downright nasty with me. I thought the customer gets to make their pizza however they want here. I want this cheese from right here. You should do your job. Like why the fuck are you so mean? I wasn't rude to you. I wasn't denying you anything point he came back a week later, and I whispered to the girl beside me, who would greet him, and interact with him first, that he was going to be nasty to us. And sure enough he was. He wanted so much sauce that there was no crust, which is hard for us to do, because it'll just use off, and stick to the oven and result in a remake. Again I'm cheering his pizza, and he looks to the manager on duty, and asks what our cook is doing. We are both confused, because our cook is doing exactly what he should be doing, making pizzas. Why is he on there? He's burning the pizzas. He should be fired. I stopped what I was doing, degloved, and pulled our cook to the back real quick to explain what was going on. The entire time the gentleman just stands over our expo area glaring at all of us scrutinizing every single move point. When I was deciding whether or not to quit, I had a lady come in one slow afternoon. Again with the cheese. We use one ladle. If you want more, no problem. I had just enough cheese in the pan to get a full ladle and put on her pizza. She didn't say anything, so we moved on to the next toppings. Uh, wow. Okay. Is there a problem? Yeah I just feel like you gypped me out of cheese. I want more cheese. 
she just got huffy and dismissive. Kawaka brings up a new pan of cheese and I just start grabbing fistfuls and dumping it on her pizza. Oh no I didn't mean that much. No, no, ma'am. I just want to make sure there's enough cheese for you point people get cheaty over cheese. The customers were starting to get so rude because they were aware they could get their meal can't without much of an argument. My manager was the type of person who went with the customer is always right mentality. I left when I got written up for my manager on duty giving customers a bad experience and left a crappy Yelp review. Mine has to be my story I posted on r slash talus from retail. Sadly in retail you see a lot of grown adults act worse than toddlers pretty often point this is from a few years ago when I was a sales associate at a clothing store. I loved this story but I can't remember all the details so it's back to school season where it's very busy and there's plenty of parents complaining about lines not having items your kids go back in two days shouldn't have waited and whatever else they can think of. Since I'd been there for a few years, it wasn't uncommon for myself to help out with a register problem if the newer cashiers had an issue. I hear faintly across the store that a lady is absolutely giving one of the cashiers hell over something, so I go over to check it out. Point M. Myself C. Cashier L. Lady M. Hey, what's up? C. She's saying it should be lower, but I think I marked it correctly. Point M. Okay, cool. Let me check it out. Yep, you did it right point L. Uh, excuse me? Are you the manager? She's not doing it correctly. She cannot be ringing people up like this at this point. I'm not sure how long she's been going off on the cashier, who's a very shy high school girl, but now she says she's going to the back room, and was obviously very upset point M. She did it right, actually. Let me grab L. You don't know that. You're not the manager. Go get them point M. Boss. B is boss who's very kind, and knows when a customer is right and when we are right, B, what's the issue, L, both of these employees are trying to rip me off, charge more than the deals, you have to fix it, point B, let me see, point mind you, at this point it's been maybe 5 minutes, which seemed like an hour, there's customers in line rolling their eyes and obviously see, that this customer will not let up, we open another register to ease the lines. Meanwhile the boss checks everything out, and it was correctly. At this point, he turns to me, and away from the lady point B. Actually, Rad Pulpity, you did your job correctly, as did cashier. Thank you for handling this situation correctly. And for you, ma'am, your total is dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign point M. Great. Thank you point L. This is ridiculous. Boss immediately walks around the registers and up next to the lady and signals her to step away from the line and register B. Ma'am, I don't know who you think you are, but you're not. You made a tantrum in the middle of a store that even my two-year-old son would not do. You made a 16-year-old cry. Is that what you're here for? To make people cry over your mistakes and impatience, L, I, I just thought it, I'm sorry point B, no, do not tell me. Tell the cashier that you're sorry, leave my store, and have a better day point she then walks over to the cashier who just came out of the back room, who'd been red in the face from crying, and tries to apologize. The cashier avoids her at all costs and just says go. I felt bad for the poor girl, the customer then leaves, and we get on with our day. I used to work in financial aid in a college in the Midwest. We only have so many dollars to go around and not everybody is going to get money or as much as they feel they deserve. We often dealt with angry parents because their child was a blessing upon this earth who could do no wrong. Point one mom took it to the next level. She kept leaving messages during a long weekend so obviously nobody was getting back to her. She then takes a 4 hour flight from Florida, just so she could show up, and scream at us in person. And I mean scream, and insult people personally with very rough words. The director of the department met with her, and even from a couple of doors down I could hear her muffled screaming. She wouldn't calm down so eventually security was called in, and she was removed from the premises, and told to come back, when she was more calm point her issue. Her son got about 85% of his cost covered with scholarships and grants, and another 10% through an outside scholarship. She was literally losing her sheet, because she would have to pay the other 5% out of pocket, which was like $3,000 a year. 
I understand money is a touchy subject, but she wouldn't accept that she was fortunate to be essentially paying nothing for her son's degree at a top 200 university nationwide point she could afford a round trip flight to beach us out, but she couldn't afford $250 a month for her son's education. TLDR sent a customer to time out I worked as a manager for Best Buy for a few years. I've seen more than I care to admit. After leaving the company I made a vow to myself. If I ever saw another customer acting like a child I would be the voice of the employees in a monologue. The last opportunity I had to do this was a Lowe's. I was returning an item when a woman, well dressed, in her late 40s, wheeled in her rented carpet cleaner. She was instantly infuriated that there was two customers in line and not two associates working the desk. She comes up right beside me and starts screaming at the customer service rep to call another associate to process her transaction. With poise the associated insisted that she would be right with her. This didn't ease her frustrations. It only infuriated her more that she was acknowledged then asked to wait. I was returning an unopened item with my receipt in hand that was purchased on a credit card which cost under $30. For those familiar with the retail world you know this is the most basic, bread and butter, return transaction. It couldn't have been more than 50 seconds she was waiting. Instantly I turned her direction and sent her to time out and pointed at a bench behind her. I have a 3.5 year old son, so my mannerisms were on point. She was shocked that I was talking to her the way I was. As her face turned pale I explained in an assertive yet polite tone that she was not the more important person in the world and she needs to wait her turn like a big girl and if she can't relax it may not take me 15 whole minutes to find my ID needed to complete this transaction. Although she instantly settled back off I made he sit down and cool off before I reached for my wallet. It took a few moments of eye contact before she realized I wasn't kidding. I received the most genuine thank you sir, have a great day from the cashier. If you don't know this already, customer service reps have one of the most emotionally exhausting jobs out there. Please be kind. We're all humans. I worked at a computer company whose logo is a well-known fruit. Not sure if I should have named them outright. It was in one of the stores in the Bay Area point anyway, so our stores were always busy, and we help customers with tech support in the store. It was about a week before Christmas and this family comes in. Grandma, a woman, and two teenagers. I'd been working all day and the store was a sheet show point the oldest teenager broke her phone. Accidentally got it wet. No worries we normally have replacements, but I don't have her model to do the swap. Then the mom went faking crazy point lady read me the riot act about how terrible the company was and how her kids shouldn't be punished, called me incompetent, blah blah blah. Her kids and her mother looked mortified. People around us stepped away point okay, let me call neighboring stores and find one. But no, they don't live here they live 3 hours away and can't be bothered. Okay I said, I can ask if the store in that town has one. They do and they can hold it for you. The only downside is your kid won't have a phone for like a day, maybe point nope, goes right back into the faking riot act. Her daughter can't be without a phone. Her family shouldn't have to put up with this terrible treatment. On and on point then, this faking woman looked at me and told me I ruined Christmas okay we'll now fuck you. I didn't even get to spend Christmas with my family that year and your faking life is so amazing that just one kid without a cell phone ruins it? Jesus Christ, sign me up for your life point the kid saved me. She told her mom she didn't need the phone she had the iPad and it was okay to wait. It takes 5 minutes of this to get mom to agree point as they left the grandmother stayed behind and apologized to me and thanked me point I have way more and way worse stories. I just remember that one because she told me I ruined Christmas and how absolutely childish she was. So I'm closing my till down, I've relieved my queue, and I'm not hired as a cashier so being sat at an empty till isn't very productive point you'll blatantly realize my till is closed for 3 reasons a disembodied voice announces till number 10 is closing, we are happy to serve you at another till point a large sign above my head switches from a green illumination to a red illumination point I'll generally, presuming some sheet hasn't taken it. For their till. Place a sign on my till belt after the last person I'm serving which says closed. So this couple, mid-fifties I'd say, starts unpacking their trolley at my closed till. 
if you have a couple items I'll put you through, no point making you wait, and it'll only take me a minute. But with a trolley it's going to take me too long, and in no time at all I'll have a queue again point so the wife, I presume, picks the sign off my till, and stuffs it into the confectionery lining my till belt. The husband had gone off, I politely tell her that I've closed my till, and that the sign needs to stay on the belt, so people don't queue at an empty till. She gets indignant, repeats what I've said word for word in a silly little voice, and then says she's already started unpacking, so I'm going to serve her. I tell her that I've closed my till down, and that till 1 7th are completely empty, these two tills are constantly man 2 to 6 or not, and that they will serve her. I'm already faking fuming, I have thick skin but this really got to me point she then starts packing her trolley up, making little under her breath remarks about me. Her husband turns up with his sheety little kit cat, and asks her what's happening, I'm still at the till, tipping money bags into it, they then both proceed, to mock me in strange voices, repeating I've closed my till, I've closed my till a few times. Then, under his breath as they're leaving, he calls me a faking loser point I was so blown away. Like I said this usually doesn't get to me, but I think that the fact that they are supposedly mature adults and that I can't retort in any form filled me with unbridled anger. So not a public meltdown, but how can you faking act like this at that stage in life? An increase in age obviously doesn't equal an increase in maturity point quick edit. The only solace I got from the situation is that till 7 refused to serve them as she, the person working that till, needed to be cashed up to go home. And when I came back literally a few minutes later, to relieve Q stress again the lady glowered at me for the 5 or so minutes her husband was packing and paying point I'm pretty. Sure I've affected her life far more than she's affected mine. She's become a funny story I tell mates. When I was 18 worked at Burger King. It was a madhouse of course. Best story, once in a while a deaf family would come in and get lunch. They would normally stand back from the counter, discuss their order then bring it up written on a card. Pay, get their food, and do their thing. No big deal point they come in one day, while I'm working the cash, I wave hello, and they discuss lunch among themselves. A man, professionally dressed maybe mid 40s comes up behind them. They are in the way, but not blocking the counter. Many many people stop there, and discuss what they want point he stands. He huffs, he says excuse me, he says please move, then flails him as him about, and begins to rant and rave at them at the top of his lungs. They ignore him, since they can't hear him, and are looking up at the board. This is all of 10 seconds and I can't catch his attention, to get him to go around point he then pushes through them, they looked as surprised as sheet, since from their perspective they are basically being attacked out of the blue. Then he says the capping comment, what the fuck, are you deaf? He gets to the counter, I say yeah, they are a deaf family, he just looks at me, as if I'm nothing, and gives me his order. I look back at him, and say I'm on break, also I'm the only cash register open. So he just stares at me, then leaves I serve the deaf family, and write an apology to them point I suppose he could have gone to the manager, but fuck it. I was only a summer employee, and on the way to college. It would have been almost nice to have quit for a sheet like that, but he didn't even give me the opportunity. Yesterday, I was at Six Flags, and to clarify, I'm a 27 year old adult who wanted to go on the swings. As I stood in line, there were a couple little kids that walked up through the line saying, excuse me. Now, I didn't know this at the time, but their brother didn't want to go on the ride alone, and had been waiting in line. Anyways, a full grown man yelled at them for cutting in line. Legitimately yelled at them, and they had to turn around, to go to the back of the line point as many of us know. Kids are crafty, and it's not that hard to jump the line on a kiddie ride. So these kids made it onto the ride the next round, my friend and I were among the first couple people that would be on the following swings ride. Well I guess the guy that previously yelled at the kid for cutting couldn't find a swing to get on, so he had to get back in line and wait for the next one. However, Dan the man, his shirt labeled him as such, noticed that the kids he denied to skip the line were on the ride he couldn't get on with his son. Cue one of the biggest fits I have ever seen. The guy yelled at the employee running the ride, who was just some young probably 18 something year old. 
the guy threw a fit for about 15 minutes, yelling, involving the manager at one point, and eventually had the kids kicked off the ride. This stalled the ride for a good 20 minutes. Had the dude just not said anything, he would have been on that ride in a matter of 3 to 5 minutes. Then, after having two kids kicked off a kiddie ride, the employee offered them out to empty seats for Dan the man and Dan the man junior. He at first refused and said, now nah, I don't want to go on it. After about 10 seconds of coaxing, he changed his mind and sat next to the two kids who got kicked off's brother Dan the man rode the ride with his arms. Crossed the whole damn time point I get that kids shouldn't cut in line, but maybe their brother was scared or really nervous sheet, they were just kids. Let them have their fun. Eesh. TLDR guy blows up on his wife in a busy cell phone store because she wanted a color that was out of stock point I used to work for a cell phone company. A couple and their kids walk in. They had just moved from Vegas. Their old provider had such bad service at their new home that it was negatively affecting the husband's work, so they needed to switch. I worked out a good deal for them where their phone bill would have effectively stayed the same after the first month's normal fees, and somehow convinced a rep at the old provider actually let them out of their two-year contract with no penalties. Now they are going to trade in their old phones to us to cover a large percentage of the cost of their new phones. So I've actually saved them a sheet load of money at this point. Probably close to $900, and they wouldn't have to pay a dollar out of pocket. The husband is happy, the wife is happy, I'm happy. As I'm activating the new phones the wife changes her mind on the color, but we don't have the specific color that the wife wants. She says it's no big deal she will wait a day until we get the correct color. This is when the husband loses his faking mind and explodes on her in front of their kids and a very busy store. What? You're going to make US wait because you have to get a silver phone instead of a gold one. You dumb faking cunt what the fuck is wrong with you. You're going to put it in the faking case anyway and your case is faking gold. So it's not like you can faking tell. Jesus fuck you goddamn selfish cunt. Fuck you. Needless to say the store got dead quiet. I didn't know what to do. The wife is tearing up but is still relatively composed. The children are completely neutral and all of my colleagues are looking at me like this is my fault. Then he looks me in the eye and says, with the calmness and serenity of a Buddhist monk, we'll take the silver one, please excuse my wife for wanting to wait. Don't worry, I work in tech, so we can take care of all of the backups at home. Thank you so much for your help today I start hastily finishing the activation process and paperwork. Once I'm done, he then hands me his two phones as trade payment for his costs, $400 cash, as a tip since he didn't owe anything else, and shakes my hand. He then grabs the two phones, an invoice, and my business card point as he opens the front door of the store for his family. Less than 10 minutes after he just berated his wife in front of probably 30 strangers and their two children, he turns to me and asks if I want to come over to their house after I get off work. Obviously, I declined. He said he'd keep in touch, then told me to have a blessed day. I stood in total shock for the rest of my shift. I almost lost my job because of this. My husband and I are professional Magic the Gathering and Pokemon judges respectively. We worked at a game store for about 5 years, him even longer. The adults can be fantastic or awful. We have seen tears, fights break out, players yelling at judges, parents freaking out that their child didn't do as well in a tournament or get the best cards in a sealed tournament point one story a dad with split custody with his son was moving away he liked taking his child to pokemon leagues he spoiled his son rotten i've heard what did your mom buy you this week 10 packs oh i'll get you more than that conversation too many times well the last weekend before the guy's moving he brings in his 10 year old to the tournament Apparently he had the idea his kid's gonna win this thing, so he has something really special to remember. I give the kid his six packs to build a deck with and the dad is badgering him about his deck point this dad did not know much about Pokemon, and honestly half the fun is letting the kids try to build some crap show of a deck because they can, and no little kid is a great deck builder. About one sixth kids get a really great card, so they play that and win, but most kids are just gonna have some fun. This dad was really ruining the experience point, so I ask him to take a few steps back and let his son build his deck. Bad call on my part. 
Dad freaked the fuck out. Got a hold of my boss and tried to get me fired. Point we do usually let parents help. Like, the parent will remind their kid to use energy, read the trainers to their kids, answer any questions if I'm running around like crazy. But this was different. The parent was yelling at his son because he didn't get the cards to win. My boss didn't understand the problem with that and said I should have let the scene play out. He wasn't there. Maybe asking them both to leave would have had a better outcome point well. In the long run it didn't matter because the dad moved three hours away and we never saw that family again. And the boy went from every other weekend with dad to summers only. So I wonder if he's alright. I was at McDonald's about two weeks before they brought in the all day breakfast menu. I just ordered and was waiting when an older male, 55 plus, came in and demanded an egg McMuffin point the poor 16 year old behind the counter calmly explained in the most perfect customer service tone, I'm sorry sir, all day breakfast doesn't start until the beginning of next month, older, male proceeds to go beat red and start shouting, why are you advertising it then, how faking hard is it to make a goddamn McMuffin, where's your manager, the customer is always right, etc, etc. I swear he was about 2 seconds away from going on a rant about millennials and how they are going to ruin the world point the manager came over and tried his best to explain he had to wait 2 weeks for all day breakfast or come in before 11 during breakfast serving hours. Older male takes a deep breath and is about to launch into another hiss of it when I had enough point me, 29 years old, 6 feet 8 inches in my construction work gear, hey bud, can I ask you a question? Old male, the fact do you want? As he turns around and looks up, way up, what? Went wrong in your life that you have to bully minimum wage workers because the greatest atrocity that has ever befallen you is that you can't get an egg McMuffin at 3 p.m. My wife is a preschool teacher and the three and four year old she teaches have better manners. So if you're not going to get anything, please leave. You're embarrassing yourself. Older male's jaw moved up and down a couple times, but no sound came out. He stood there stunned for about 10 seconds, and then put his head down, and walked out the door my food was ready, so I walked over, and picked up the bag, gave the till worker and employee a smile and a nod, said thanks, and sorry for the older male, and went along my way. Point TLDR old male freaks out over egg McMuffin, berates staff, runs away with tail between legs when confronted. I worked for a small health food store chain in our area in my early 30s. One day a regular of about 75 years of age, and generally not the friendliest customer, came in and wanted a refund for a bottle of homeopathic pills that was three quarters empty, and he didn't have a receipt for, because they didn't work. Our corporate policy at the time was no receipt no refund. I did tell him he could make an exchange, but he wasn't having it. He was the only one in line at the time. What? My wife bought these here. We shop here all the time. Where is your manager? I'm the manager sir. You're faking me right now. Sir, I can do an exchange for something else, but I can't give you a refund on a bottle of pills that is almost empty with no receipt. You are really faking me right now. Hold on. Let me get my wife on the phone and tell her how you're faking her. Sir, if you could please not use that language, there are children in the store. He proceeds to dial his wife on speakerphone mumbling about how I'm faking him some more. Dear? They're faking ya. Silence on her end. Are you there? Yes. They're faking you here. They won't return this sheet. Meanwhile a child pops out from behind the candy rack looking frightened as could be. His mother grabs him by the arm and shuffles him off. Guy is still on speakerphone cursing. And I say sir, if you are going to use that type of language I'm going to have to ask you to step outside to finish the call. He hangs up the phone and says I'd love to take you outside right now buddy, because you're faking me and my wife. I said sir, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. He kept cursing at me, so I did what I always did with those types of customer, just walk toward the door while they are still running their mouth because they always follow you, step outside, and once they are outside too yelling at you just turn around and walk back inside not saying a word to them point there are some wonderful stories from that place. Lots that involve lasers giving cancer and things Dr. Roz said that, if I don't do I'll die. One day we were having a meeting at work, 
to discuss a big multi-million dollar, weeks-long project point well before the meeting the owner of our business was coming into the shop with some clients. My lead asked someone to lower the music because it was way too loud and the guy whose music was playing ignored it. So my lead lowered it himself. The dude cranked it up point our manager came in and shut it down point so during our meeting he brings it up and the guy who raised the volume again was saying about how he was disrespected and undermined because he was targeted and singled out. My lead tried to explain the situation and this dude blows up. He says no one has the right to touch his stuff. He says that people who touch his sheet are going to make sure they get the best out of their health insurance. Then he tries to square up on my lead, who is a 6 feet 5 inches Eastern European, while this guy is 5 feet 5 inches. Then someone else steps in to help him scream and cry and saying about how my lead undermined them too. Then my lead loses his cool and tells them to get out of his face and tells them how no one likes them and how they have zero skill and someone else gets in on the action point this goes on for about 10 minutes mind you, I'm the youngest person in our shop. I was 22 at the time. The next youngest guy was 38. It was literally a squabble of 40 year old men who beached and almost fought because of the faking radio. I used to work in a pet store and there was a policy in place where we could refuse a sale if the customer was refusing to buy necessary things for the animal. Well a lady comes in, probably in her 50s with her daughter who's around the same age as me, early 20s. By our looking at red-eared slider turtles. Keep in mind the turtles were about 4 to 5 inches across their shell and these things get the size of dinner plates. So bare minimum tank size we would sell them was for a 20 gallon. Anything less they wouldn't have any room to turn to around, and the habitat would require daily cleaning in order for the turtle to remain in good health. I walk up and ask if they need help, they inform they want a turtle. Okay. I tell them I would walk through all the necessary products and requirements, and then we would get the turtle. At this moment I knew it was going to get sour, because the woman told me that she didn't need any help, because she already knew everything. In my experience the only people who say this are the ones who know jack sheet. So I start telling her right there. She scoffs when I bring up a 20 gallon tank and informs me that they will be keeping it in a 10 gallon tank because they don't have room for the larger size. I tell her sorry I can't sell you the turtle because it is just not healthy. This woman loses her sheet. Starts screaming inches from my face about how I'm a beach and cunt and how her daughter just lost her father and they loved turtles and blah blah. Again I'm just apologizing and I tell her I'm sorry about her loss but my main concern is the health of the animal and if they don't have room for a 20 gallon what are they going to do when he's full grown. Then she goes on about how I'm not sorry and I'm a piece of shit and blah blah. So I tell her I'm going to go to my office and get her customer service number. She proceeds to follow me to there still screaming and cursing at me by the door. My associate witnesses the whole thing because once she started screaming I went by him because I thought she was going to hit me. Anyway they finally left yelling. It triggered an anxiety attack so I ended up going home. There was a nice long corporate complaint the next day about how I was so rude and she had never been disrespected like that in her life. I didn't get in any trouble though as there was a witness and I was following policy. So this is a military story point back on my first deployment ever to sunny Afghanistan. I was confined to Camp Leatherneck as I was a radio tech and not some cool body dropping occupation. Being one of the junior guys of that deployment I got voluntold to report to base security and work for them. I got stuck on a post for the last 4 months and answered to this new unit when I showed up for my shift and if I needed anything. Now to explain my post, I managed by myself one of the two side gates to the base. Very rarely did people come through with the exception of the Himmers unit behind my post. These guys were rocket artillery and we had an agreement to open the gate for them when they went hot because the time it took to get clearance could cost lives. So they rush out set up and whoosh rockets out from a couple hundred meters outside the walls of the base point fast forward to closer to the end of the deployment. I'm on the radio answering radio checks and reporting fuel levels for the heater and whatnot when I hear a call from behind for the gate. I motion to my Bahraini counterpart on post to go open while I answer the radio. He runs down like a goofy uncoordinated child and after a long delay gets the gate open and the trucks rush out set up and do some damage. 
as they come back and I wave the lead guy down and apologize for the delay. The sergeant who knew me from nights prior waved it off and said wasn't a big deal. He figured I was busy. An hour later I hear someone yelling from behind my post at the stairs like so. Hey. Sheethead marine. Get the fuck out here I opened the door and looked down. And to my surprise there's some marine with no top. So I have no name or rank to, to address him. Yes. I say. Knowing well I'm not allowed to be conversing while on duty. And am supposed to be especially watchful at night. And during the time for challenging. To challenge all persons on or near my post, and to allow no one to pass without proper authority so this might get weird, or I may just get my ass chewed and that's it. It's, well sir, you sense facko facken officer. My apologies, can I help you sir? Can you explain to me sheethead why my trucks were delayed getting out? Well, I had to answer priority call, and we had some possible movement outside the wire. D proceeds to raise his voice and start approaching the bottom of the stairs. What? Has more faking priority than saving your brother's lives? His foot steps up the bottom step. Sir, please do not attempt to approach the tower you disrespectful sheet. I'm a goddamn officer and I'll do what I need to do and I'm gonna use your radio. I'll have your rank as he continues to climb about three more steps. Still about ten between us. At this point my companion comes out and is watching and understanding this is not normal and sheet may go sideways. He raises his rifle to the alert and yells at him to stop as best as he can shut the fuck up hadji fuck. More steps about 5 between us and about 6 feet from the bottom. So I raise my rifle calmly and start laying down the law. Sir if you don't get the fuck off my post I will make sure you're removed on one manner or another. My chain of command is Staff Sergeant B and First Lieutenant Z with BDOC, Base Defense Operation Command. He continues screaming sheet at me which I blank out come down about 3 steps from where I was, and Spartan kick a second lieutenant from about 6 feet off a stairwell. After he lands furious and red face he throws his beanie at me, and yells some sheet about seeing me at my NJP, non-judicial punishment, next time. Immediately I call BDOC and ask for the watch officer to come. They show up get the story from me and my companion. When second LT Sheethead comes storming back over for his beanie and to yell at my watch officer, who outranked him. Mid yelling and point at me, my watch officer puts his hand up and tells him shut the fuck up Brian. We'll let you guys out without having to get clearance anyway so shut it. Guy looks like he's about to lose it when the watcho turns to me. And says don't let these guys out without clearing them until they can learn to be good boys. Also try not to kick so hard next time. And he promptly gets back into the car with staff sergeant and drives off leaving a bewildered 2LT point LDR. RLT thought he could do what he wanted on my post because I didn't attend to his unit's needs perfectly one time. So I Spartan kicked him and he got nothing. Probably too late for this, but it reminded me of the weirdest tantrum I've ever seen point so back in high school 100 years ago, after varsity basketball practice one night. Uneventful day, uneventful practice, everything appeared to be normal. Assistant coach walks into the locker room. Probably half of us have showered at this point, other half just sitting around talking. He picks out this one kid on our team. He was a senior. I was a sophomore at the time. He wasn't very good. Not too athletic. He never got to play. He just liked being on the team. Very nice kid. Class clown type. But not in a mean way. Just a fun person. To be around point anyway. Assistant coach says hey Joe. Aren't you gonna take a shower? Now mind you this is odd. Because at least half of us hadn't made it to the showers at this point. Joe says nah, your G slash F likes me stinking. Standard high school rebuttal, or so we thought. Coach crazy grabs him by the shirt, slams him into a locker, then slams him onto the floor, and goes on an expletive lace tirade, while the rest of us are so stunned we can't even move to help him. Up to that point in my life I had never been at such a loss for words or actions. I think my brain was incapable of processing that I was witnessing an assault because of the people involved point unfortunately. I cannot adequately describe how insane of a situation this was. Our team was very close. Our coaches had been involved in our lives since we were in grade school. This man that we all trusted is beating the sheet out of a kid half his size and a third of his age. It's still one of the most unexpected moments of my entire life. I will never forget it. 
I was in Philly International waiting for a flight. My flight failed an FAA weight limit inspection or something, so they stopped letting passengers on despite there being about 10 of us still waiting to board. The airline got us all scheduled for a later flight, at least, those willing to work with the airline customer service. It was mid-July and the ac must have been broken in the terminal, because it was hot as hell, must have been 85 degrees inside. You'd think this is where the tantrum comes in, but no point, so I wait in the lounge for my flight, have a few drinks, watch some baseball I think, while I wait 4 hours for the next flight. Finally the flight comes in, ready to board. Now the flight boards by zones. First premium customers, elderly, sick and families with small children. Then gold zone, then zone 1 then zone 2. I have a boarding pass for zone 2. When zone 2 is called they also call all remaining zone 1 passengers. This lady with a heavy, oversized roller carry-on bag runs to the front to try to cut in front of a bunch of people, running over my foot in the process. I pay no mind, and somehow she ends up behind me again point then I hear a guy behind me asking me if he can get in front of me. I turn to look, and it's the husband of the woman who ran over my foot. He says he's in zone 1, so he needs to get on the plane before me. I tell him that they are now boarding zones 1 and 2, and that I'm not going to just let him get in front of me. He starts to get angry. He tells me that zone 1 boards before zone 2, and that he should be in front of me. I tell him they already called zone 1, now they're boarding zone 2, sorry, you'll have to wait in line like everyone else. He is turning red now. He tells me that he paid for zone 1, so he should get to go before me. I tell him that he should have been paying attention when they called zone 1, and now he needs to wait in line. I also tell him we are all going to the same place, and the seats are assigned. Seriously, has this guy ever flown before? So it's not like he's going to lose his seat. He shouts at me, what the fuck, asshole. I'm in zone 1, I get on the plane before you. Get out of my way, at this point I'm getting nervous, because I'm pretty sure he's going to hit me, but we are pretty close to the gate now, so I just kinda shrug. I know the gate attendant can see and hear what's going on. He's still cursing at me, making a scene. I smile politely and shrug. I hand my boarding pass to the attendant and give the guy a peace sign as I walk down the jetway. I hear the attendant ask the man to wait while they try to figure out what he's so mad about. After everyone else gets on the plane, finally he comes walking down the aisle and sits two rows ahead of me. When I was 10 or 11 years old, my father was having a difficult time replacing the old wooden windows in the front upstairs bedroom. Normally he could just remove the old windows and frames, put the new ones in, seal everything up, and be done, but these were giving him a hard time, and, I learned after the fact, he was getting progressively angrier. My mom was helping him, or trying to, and I was in my bedroom adjacent to that one, just minding my own business, and not really aware how pissed he was getting. I was trying to get something down from the higher shelf in my closet, when everything fell on me, pinning me in the closet. I yelled for help, and my mother did her best at if bunker, and remained oblivious, and didn't take the few seconds to come in, help me out, and then go back to the other room point evidently my cries for help sent him over the edge, and he came into my room, yanked me out by my arm, and proceeded to literally tear my room apart. He took all my toys, legus, games, etc, and threw everything all over the room until the floor was covered, then stomped out. I was blamed for making him angry and spent the rest of the day cleaning it up. This was not the first time when we first moved into the house. When I was 5, my belongings were stored in a downstairs closet while my bedroom was being painted and he once went over to the closet, opened it and processed to rip everything off the shelves and stomp all over it. He tended to see my possessions as junk and crap and felt free to destroy anything I owned at his discretion. Alright, I finally made an account, just because I have a little story to share, so buckle up kids I work at a lovely little custard shop, that I like to call the icebox, and I commonly have to work the window, either for walk up, or for drive through, our place doesn't have any inside seating, and most of the time our customers are happy, because they are getting their treat, and who doesn't like some cold custard on a 100 degree day, well at drive through some customers can take longer than others, and I had a lovely little elderly couple come rolling up. 
it was their first time there, so they were asking me questions the usual what's the difference between ice cream and custard? At that point they had taken around 3 minutes, and the guy who was behind them, we had already taken his order, and were making his treat, who was waiting absolutely laid on his horn point the couple I was with kind of giggled and joked that I should spit in his treat, and I laughed with them. Suddenly I hear the guy behind them yell what the fuck is taking you so long, the wife opens her window and yells what is your problem? The guy responds by putting his car in reverse and starts backing out of our very long drive through At that moment, a poor family pulls in behind him, blocking his way to freedom. He blasted his horn again and sped up forward super fast and almost hit the elderly couple. At this point, it has been 6 minutes and I have a crowd of my employees coming around my window as the show continues impatient as Hole then gets out of his car and walks up to the couple and starts going off on them. Are you all too dumb to order? What's taking you so long? Could you not read the faking menu? Are you stupid? Homeboy is showing no chance of stopping his tirade, and I'm now getting a line behind him point the nice couple then turned vicious extremely fast, calling him and his whole and a bastard, and they are just yelling away at each other. The father in the car behind the as whole then comes to join the fun. They finally all shut up when he walks up and tells them to shut up and his faking kids are in the car point the man skulked back to his car and the elderly couple finally ordered to specialty pints. I ended up giving them their order for free and gave them a few coupons and told them I hope they had a better day and they skedaddled point now I have to come face to face with impatient as whole himself. He pulls up and had ordered a medium vanilla cone but by the time the whole scene had ended. His cone was pretty much a perfectly ugly and suppy representation of his personality. And after he finished sheet talking the couple, he took his half melted cone and attempted to eat it without spilling in his nice new Toyota Tundra point after he left. I apologized to all of the cars in the line after him and gave them all free treat coupons. I really hope his cone got custard all over his car TLDR impatient as whole. Creates the biggest scene I've ever seen in a custard shop drive through I have so many, but I always use this in interviews. I was 16 at DQ, late at night drive through I was closing up when this truck came by with some people, maybe 20, 30 s. Yes. They wanted one thing point I greeted them, and they started analyzing the menu like a cryptographic message. What's in the Sunday? What's all the flavors? What is blueberry sauce like? This went on for 10 minutes before deciding to get a banana split. I seriously would have given it to them for free. They overanalyze every topping they could have. 3 with 4 stars of whip topping. Do. I have to pay for peanut butter? Can I get pineapple on bottom, layered with cotton candy, topped with hot fudge? Can I get the sides with marshmallow? Do I have to? Finally, I just agreed to get them out, because it's been 20 minutes at our drive through I ring him up, and I make it exactly point I bring it to them with a the lid, and he stares at it, as if it was a leper. He inspects it like a faking car. The girl is staring at him, and two people in the back seat are yelling at him to move because they're hungry. Again, no idea what the fuck is going on point out of nowhere, this guy explodes. I mean, explodes, you. Never said it had real banana in it. I don't want real banana, the fuck. You ordered a banana split, you. Ordered a banana split, in the picture, you. Can faking have it back, he. Literally football chucks it through my window. I scream and duck, and it goes everywhere. I mean, all over the wall it hit and floor. It was like a bad ice cream robbery gone wrong. He peels off, nearly takes out the dumpster, and drives off. He doesn't even ask for his money back point I stare at it, hopeless, and my manager comes up asking what happened. I had to clean it up myself point TLDR. Dude orders banana split, gets mad it has real bananas, and throws it at me. Probably a bit late to the party at this point, but I've got a story point so one day I'm riding public transit and we stop next to an intersection to pick some people up. Well this guy gets on the bus. 40 something, unshaven and notably overweight, and immediately starts complaining to the driver how he was late, he wasn't, now, this guy had a very noticeable speech problem, he basically talked, as though he were 5 years old, slurring words like crazy, and pronouncing everything, as if he were an adult talking to their small kid, if that makes sense, 
This wasn't just because he was so mad about the bus being late either. This is just the way he talked point so in the middle of this guy's tirade. All the meanwhile the driver's only words have been I'm sorry, sir. He suddenly shoots off with are you making fun of me? At this point like all four people riding, myself included, turned to look at the guy point before the driver could get out a no, sir. The guy flipped the fuck out with these words exactly. Do you know what I'm going to do, jackass? I'm going to call the dispatch center and I'm going to have them file a report on you for being a jackass. So then finally the man child sits down in a seat after 5 minutes of yelling, and the driver goes on his merry way. Then, man child pulls out his cell phone, seemingly hits speed dial, because I didn't see him type more than a number or two, and begins talking to someone on the other end after a few seconds the whole time he's talking. He's talking as loudly as he possibly can saying things, like I expect you to do something about this stupid dumb driver, pronounced Weaver who was late to pick me up at the bus stop, and he was making fun of me. All the while I'm trying to hold back not only my laughter, but my urge to tell the guy to just shut up, because he was noticeably annoying the other riders, after what feels like eons, I finally arrive at my destination, and as I'm walking off the bus the guy is still yelling at the transit's dispatcher about the driver. As I'm getting off the bus I look over to the driver and say dude, I'm so faking sorry, and he replies with it's alright, we are used to it. What a faking champion, I tell you guys. I play beer league ice hockey. Like any organized sport there are different skill levels depending on your play, a being some of the best guys, there's B, C, and where this story takes place, D, which is typically reserved for noobers or people just getting back into the game. We all have day jobs so, while contact is okay, no checking is allowed point this guy on one of the opposing teams, I'll call Maximum, had built up a reputation for being too good for our D league. He'd skate the puck through and around people that were lucky we even skated indoors because a good gust of wind would knock him right over, didn't pass ever, had a sour attitude and just all around didn't belong there. Point well one night Maximum got a little physical with two of my guys and the ref stepped in and warned him that he needs to tone it down, reminded him that the league isn't supposed to be that rough. Etc. Maximum argued, but accepted it, the game went on, until the next whistle. We're all get in position for puck drop, and Maximum starts yelling at the ref point Maximum, hey ref, am I allowed to stand here, ref? What, Maximum? Is it against the rules for me to be standing here, ref? Man, shut up, Maximum. Fuck you, ref. Seriously, Maximum. Fuck you, ref. Tired of your sheet man. Get in the penalty box, maximum, F. U C K Y O U, ref. That's it, get off the ice you're done, maximum. Literally stomps off the ice, continuing his verbal tirade, and starts ripping his gear off on the way to the locker room. We have a solid what the fuck moment on the ice and the game continues. Maximum showed back up continued his shouting sheet fit back onto his team's bench, where he'd apparently forgotten something, then back to the locker room stopping to pick up each piece of gear he'd trailed to the locker room, and disappears by the time the game was over Maximum was thankfully gone, but we'd learned that on his way out, he'd confronted the guy that collects our league fee payments, and demanded a refund. Only to be asked to are you which set him off again but apparently not as much as being reminded that he hadn't even paid yet, thus there was nothing to refund. That somehow made him hit nuclear status, to the point that cops were called, but he left. Before they got their point I also learned that Maximum is an English professor, and that makes all this even funnier to me imagining him going home to throw on a tweed coat with patched elbows and smoke a pipe all while cursing his inability to be refunded money he never paid. I used to work the tech bench at Best Buy back in their glory days, pre-Geek Squad, which in our store was situation right at the front next to customer service point in the late 90s, computers were the hottest commodity around. Every Sunday, when the new sales ad released, we'd have a line of people, sometimes hundreds of them, waiting for the doors to open. The store always tried to have an adequate supply of stock, but there's no way to properly prepare for hundreds of people lining up for a shot at the new Pentium second 400 point doors open at 11 a.m. People flood into the store and make a mad dash to whatever item they were hoping to get in today's ad. 
we would pre-prep the customer stuff, put them all in shopping carts and line them up, with some upscale items of course, this is a business and people really need a Belkin IEE 1394 gold plated printer cable because reasons, but that's a different post, to make them easy to get to, and so the sales guys didn't have to be climbing ladders with an angry mob below them point needless to say, the stock on the hotted items would sell out almost instantly. If you weren't at the front of that line on Sunday morning, when the doors opened, your chances of getting an ad item were practically zero. So Sundays typically had a frantic two hour busy period right after opening, then calmed down and was pretty chill for the rest of the shift. We had a guy casually stroll into the store around 3pm one Sunday. He walks up to the tech counter, shows me the weekly ad, and says he wants this week's new computer deal. Yay, dude you're too late those all sold out hours ago. But I direct him to the computer sales guys, to offer him a rain check for the sales price once we get more stock, which was pointless, because next week's ad would either have a better deal or a new faster computer, the MHZ wars were just starting around this time. Dude walks off. About 15 minutes later dude comes back to the customer service area, rain check in hand, and starts a conversation with one of the cashiers. He's clearly flustered at this point, but I couldn't actually hear what was being said. After about 10 minutes of this, our store manager comes over. He must have been summoned. Also can't hear their conversation, but the dude is turning red and looks so obviously agitated. Manager starts losing his cool with this guy and begins to raise his voice. Can hear him now, sir. You have to understand, at 11am this morning we had a line of people waiting for the doors to open to buy this computer. I'm sorry that we are out of stock of them already, but I see you have a rain check already which will guarantee the sales price once we receive more in stock, or I'd be happy to have one of our sales reps help you pick out a comparable computer that I. Dude had a mental breakdown at this point. He turns around and starts yelling into the general direction of the store, bait and switch, bait and switch, bait and switch, like full on screaming at the top of his lungs. This guy would not listen to the manager and was not interested in any solution at this point. He just kept screaming, bait and switch, bait and switch, bait and switch. This went on for about 10 whole minutes. I watched the manager go from trying to reason with him to getting annoyed and just letting himself scream it out thinking he'd get tired and quit, but he kept at it screaming at the top of his lungs, bait and switch, bait and switch, bait and switch, we have a small audience of customers at this point, the ones inside the store were drawn by the sounds of the yelling, and the new ones that came in were instantly bombarded by the sound of a dude screaming. The manager I guess at this point snaps as well, and also starts yelling at the dude as loud as he can to get the fuck out of his store, that adults don't behave this way and he's an embarrassment, but the guy just keeps screaming the whole time. I'm paraphrasing what the manager said, because it was a giant screaming mess finally the manager says, if the dude doesn't leave this second he's calling the police. He's walking to the phone right now, and if he's not out of the store by the time he gets there, he's calling the cops walks over to the phone and starts dialing. The dude finally gets the hint and starts walking towards the door. But he's still screaming the whole time, bait and switch, bait and switch, bait and switch. The guy did this all the way to his car, got in, left, and I've never seen him since. Some say he's still yelling to this very day point, but please do not let this story distract you from the fact that later on that night, the undertaker threw mankind off hell in a cell and plummeted 16 feet through an announcer's table. So I worked at a MCDS. I would regularly be in the first window taking care and telling people not to hit one another. This lady's car was hit, just a little bumper to bumper kiss. No damage, not even a scratch. She flings open her door, slamming it into my building, and starts yelling while getting out of the car. This is a bigger, pretty large, black woman that hauls herself out of her sub and starts to yell at a little 60 or 70 something plus frail white lady. The frail little lady says I'm sorry let me pay for your food and then we can assess the damage. The other woman is not having it. She launches the driver side window where the little lady is. It shatters, old 90's car, and she proceeds to grab the women's hair and drag her out of the car. The old lady is slapped for being silly, slapped for being dumb, and pushed down for hitting her car. 
The cops were called right as the black woman was getting out of her car. The cops arrive, just as the physical altercation. The old woman is on the ground and the black woman starts yelling about them coppers always be chasing her and sheet. She's then tackled and starts to fight the cop that tackled her. After about a 10 minutes, hold up from the start to the finish of this ordeal. The old women I brought to the hospital for evaluation. The black woman is escorted off by police. As she was arrested she was beaching again about the cops being on her ass and how they're always white. Four out of five officers there were black and the one white guy. It was his first day. I have more stories from where that and from. I doubt you will want to hear more, but if you do message me and I'll send you some funny ones. Back in my management days of McDonald's I saw some real as holes. But there was one night where I saw a man and woman take the cake point basically we were busy as hell due to school sports in town. It's just the volume of food that slows stuff down. So you make a ton of fries, nuggets, and dollar sandwiches. Our drive through orders were being made on our second line, but some food wasn't getting out instantly due to large batch cooking for a lobby full of teens it's here where the as whole couple shows up. Full lobby, two buses parked outside, full line and drive through As whole couple pulls up, and the husband barks his order into the speaker. The wife is also barking her order in between his breaths and pauses. I wasn't at the pay window, but I hear him saying some snide sheet about waiting really loudly from down there. I count this, and the barking a strike one point they pull up to the second window and our presenter hands them their beverages. Presenter, we'll call him Paul, turns around and I ask him to park the order. It's only going to be like a minute, but I have the next two orders already, since they are the same cheap food all the school kids are getting. Paul is a good kid, and amazing at window too. Not a brain dead more and like a lot of MCD talent point Paul opens the window and asks them to pull forward. It's literally 15 feet. They don't need to park off to the side. I then hear the man say fuck you. Clearly. Strike two point at this point I have two orders sitting and I'm bagging a third. I ask Paul hey could you just ask again quick. I need to make sure that I hear them do it again. I step off to the side out of sight but I'm closer in earshot now. Paul opens the window and starts to ask them again, then comes strike 3. This 55 plus year old man just starts yelling no, 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 not a faking chance, and he reaches out and slams the window on Paul's face. The wife is laughing her as off. Paul walks away pretty sad, not pissed. Our lobby full of teenagers goes dead silent. It was that faking loud point I take the refund, took me 30 seconds to the window and the man holds his hands out thinking I'm handing him his food. What's this sheet? I explain that I don't serve belligerent customers who verbally abuse my staff. He and his wife go into full victim mode. I stop them and point to my lobby and explain I have a full lobby of witnesses and tell them to enjoy their free beverages he and his wife spend the next 10 minutes driving laps around the building honking and telling drive through customers that we are pieces of sheet. They throw their drinks at the building and cuss at us every time we open a window. After our drive through is cleared he just sits in the lot outside the second window and stares down Paul. I go up to the window and tell it him hope you're cooled off. Now get the hell out of here before I call the cops. We already have your plate numbers you idiots. They state me down for probably a minute and then drive off. Tire shrieking point the worst part was trying to get Paul to cheer up. Dude had just lost his dad in a car accident weeks earlier, and he was already a mess at times. He didn't need this kind of faking stress. An older couple came into my restaurant and wanted to do the prefix menu, discounted menu, but they came on the wrong night. First their server told them it was the wrong night, then the manager told them it was the wrong night. So they tried blaming us and our website, it wasn't wrong, that they were misled point they threatened to leave, standing up and dramatically and slowly putting on their coats, until my manger begged them to stay and allowed it. So they saved about 30 to 40 dollars. Jesus, I could go on and on. I feel like the new con is fine dining restaurants, because these con artists, not really artists, understand if they complain to corporate they'll be rewarded with a big gift card. The company is desperate for the bees, and they'll do anything to avoid a negative review, so they just give dinners away. Anyone can really do it, you just have to have no soul. Point one woman wrote a letter saying it'll be a cold day in hell, 
before I come back there, because we didn't have bread that night. On Mother's Day we experienced a woman come in with her son. She wanted the regular menu, but we were only offering a special menu which everyone was notified of when they originally made the reservation. She threw the menu at me, and without looking at me snapped, get me the menu I want. She complained about her entree. She said it was the wrong dish. Literally the wrong dish. She said it was supposed to come in a bowl. I replied it has always been served on a flat dish. The sauce is wrong too. I asked her what sauce was she expecting. She mentioned something we didn't offer. I calmly replied the entree has always been served on the same dish with that sauce. Her reply was a beachy well I guess you don't know your menu. I again calmly replied I'd been working there 4 years and the dish wasn't changed at all. I offered to get my manager, let them deal with it, and my manager hit a wall too. He tried offering her another dish, she wouldn't take it. An hour later she called from her home and told us she was making herself her own meal because she was starving. My manager replied ma'am we offered you an alternative, I'm sorry it didn't work out. She contacted corporate, she got a free meal, and we got a bratty message from corporate saying we handled it wrong. Just incredible point I think, if some people were shown how they behave in restaurants they'd change the way they did things. For my 18th birthday, my friends and I decided to drive 2 hours into the big city, the nearest place with a casino, and enter a Texas Hold'em poker tournament. We had all played in home games for a few years but this was the first time any of us had been to a real, live poker tournament. We were all super excited point a few hours in, the 200 entrants were down to about 40, and I was one of them. In this fateful hand, everyone folded other than one guy, so he and I were playing heads up. I played the hand terribly, but I ended up getting very lucky and having the best possible hand. This guy was being a douche for the entire hand, making me about 99% sure he had pocket aces, since he had a terrible poker face and would act invincible if he thought he had the best hand. Well, he didn't this time point I went all in, and he immediately called me, and we were almost exactly even in chips. Pocket aces, sorry little boy, better luck next tournament ha <laughs> he said as he flipped his cards over and started reaching for the chips. While I may have been 18, and in my first tournament, I was outspoken and confrontational, so I wasn't having any of that. UHH, don't touch my chips dude, I have a full house. Sorry old man, and confidently flipped my cards over. I slowly stood up, holding eye contact with him, and started pulling the chips towards me point he stared at me for about 5 seconds. Then he went faking nuts. He picked up all the chips that were in front of him and threw them across the table at me, hitting other players slash the dealer slash the pit boss slash people at other tables. Then he started yelling and screaming everything he could think of. Then he started throwing chairs around while telling me that he was going to kill me and that I should be disgusted with myself for playing a hand that way. When I asked, playing in what way? In a way that wins, you mean, that sent him over the edge. He tried lifting and flipping the table over, which he couldn't do, since it's like 1000 pounds, and probably bolted down, before he charged at me, and had to be held back by multiple security guards he was screaming at the top of his lungs, while he was being hauled out about how he owns the city, and how he's going to have people kill me. It was at that point in time, that a different guy at my table, let me know, that the guy was actually a retired professional football player, the kicker, by the way from the city we were in, and that it wasn't the first time he'd reacted that way to losing in poker. I asked why he's even allowed to play in the tournaments and the guy said it's because he'd usually spend $5 to $10 k slash night on blackjack slash roulette after he busted out of poker, so he was basically allowed to do whatever he wanted point he didn't have anyone kill me, by the way, I'm alive. Back in my late teens I used to work the overpass shift at a Max Milk in Atola. Max Milk is like Canadian CVS. This wide super stretch limo pulls into a gas bar at about 2am and misjudges a clearance on one of our metal stationary signs and rips this horrible, grinding, 4 foot gash down the side of the car before he realized. Fuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuuu
like guys obviously fired, probably going to have to pay for the damage he just caused to the limo, and is on the verge of tears. He just started, like pacing around in front of the cash quietly freaking out, and trying to keep his sheet together. Felt horrible for the guy point in comes his passenger. She's about 40, decked out to the nines, guaranteed her earrings were worth more than what that driver and me made in 6 months combined. She gets up about 2 inches from the driver's face and proceeds to just rip him apart at volume 11 in the most vicious insane tirade that I've even heard. That he's faking garbage that doesn't deserve to be alive and he can't even drive a faking car, right and he's useless and she's going to make sure he's never going to work again. And he's going to be out on the street starving point this was more than 17 years ago now. And I still remember almost everything she said. It was some of the most heartless shit I've ever heard. The guy was already so low. He knew he faked up. He knew he was fired. And she just piled on him so hard it was crazy. This poor dude just stood there like a stone and took it. Just waited for that evil cunt to finish spewing her hate waterfall all over him. Until she got tired of it. And stalked out of the store to go sit in the car. Then he just asked if he could use my phone point I'll let him use the one in the back office for some privacy and a while later another limo showed up and picked up the passenger. The driver got in a cab about 10 minutes after that. I wanted to try to talk to him but he was so bummed just sitting in a chair with his head in his hands. I just let him be. Felt faking bad for the dude man sheet stuck with me all these years. Preface this by saying I'm a bit of an asshole. Read my post history for confirmation point I saw a woman screaming at a target checkout person about a sale that she couldn't get. I'm not sure if she had the wrong item or the sale expired or what. I was trying not to pay attention but it was hard no to. During a lull in the screaming I say loud enough that I know she'll hear me not one of these cunts again. I really hate people who pick on people when they are at their place of employment. I see the checkout person smirk and hold back laughter. She turns to me and screams excuse me. Mind your own faking business followed by some more cursing at both the target employee and back at me. I like to push the envelope so I make a comment about spousal abuse. Something to the effect of I never understood why guys beat their wives until no. I'm not condoning it at all but I said it to piss her off. Anything to needle her further. At this point she calls her husband over who was waiting near the front of the store with their kid. In my head I'm like oh fuck I came in for chapstick and gum and now I'm going to get arrested for a fist fight in Target. I catch a glimpse of the husband walking over sheepishly and my concerns fade as I see that he just looks like a beaten man. He looked like he got back from three tours of numb. Nope. It was just his cunt wife. She relays what I said to her and basically challenges the dude to do something to me about it. He looks at me, looks at her, and says maybe you were acting like a cunt. I can't hold it together and start bawling. The cashier starts bawling. The front end manager, who at this point was walking over because of the commotion looked mortified and does a complete about face. The husband is now smiling. The woman's face is red like a cooked lobster. She storms out, grabbing the kid's hand and drags him out. I smile and shrug at the husband. I hope he divorced her. Cashier thank me. I felt like Batman. Being the hero they deserve and all. Finally a topic to contribute. Work in retail at a phone shop. This happened about a couple of years ago after the launch of the newly Galaxy S6 S6 Edge. The customer, in his early 30s, upgraded his phone plan with S6 Edge over the phone with a sales rep because of better deals over the phone than in store. This happens for loyalty customers, so I had seen the guy before, and he comes in a couple of weeks later with his new phone and slams the phone down on the counter and goes, I didn't ask for this sorry. What's going on? What didn't you ask for? This faking phone mate. They sent me a 32 GB. We talked about a 64 GB or 128 GB, I can't remember clearly, but it was a bigger storage he wanted, right? Did you say that over the phone when you upgraded? Now, nah. why the fact should I have to? Because you wanted a bigger storage, right? I don't care mate. Swap me to the bigger size well yeah, and I'll be on my way. It doesn't work that way unfortunately. To TLDR this story, he broke the back of his phone when he smashed it on the desk, had no insurance, 
threatened me and my manager with physical violence after work, had his account barred for threatening staff members, and was reported to the cops for the simple matter of not properly discussing the phone he was getting. And he was stuck with it for two years adults, in first world countries, in the 21st century. Syed it, a word. Back in 2000 I worked in the only Sprint cell phone store in town. It was a Sunday, and we had minimal staff. Guy comes in with a young kid, probably 4 or 5 years old following behind him, and was in a total rage. Something, no clue what, was wrong with his Palm Pilot, or Tria, I can't remember. Back in the day Palm was freaking expensive, and you had to pay for the phone up front, not like the plans now, and the data plan started around $150. He was full of himself, I'm an important doctor, my phone is my life, fix this one, or get me a new one right now, kind of situation. My manager and I tell him that it's Sunday, there are no technicians in, to look at his phone, but if it's a warranty issue we'd replace it but it usually takes 3 to 5 business days. He says that he can't wait that long, so he'll just buy a new one, but we don't have one in inventory, because they are just not popular enough for our store to keep in inventory. He throws a fit, trying to grab bar display phones telling us to give him the floor model, that he's too important to have anything, except a palm or blackberry point my manager is trying to get him to leave the store, he won't, and then I try the good cop route, and try to get his phone number, so I can see, if he has insurance on his phone, but he won't give me his number. My manager finally decides to call the cops on my desk speaker phone and the guy spits in his face. Manager laughs and points to the camera in the ceiling, and told him he's going to file assault charges. Guy looks up, slams his phone on my counter and storms out of the store. 911. What is your emergency comes over the speaker phone. UMM. Yeah, I'm calling from the Sprint store. A customer just spit in my manga's face, and left his child in our store. Left his child? I'm not sure if it's his kid, but he came in with him and just stormed out of the store. Manager walked up front to confirm the guy left. Yep he just drove off. 911 dispatches a nearby unit, but before anyone shows up we see the guy's car pull up in front of the store. A woman hops out, runs in and grabs the kid, and then drives off without putting him in a car seat. Unfortunately Arizona doesn't have front plates so all we got was the make and model of the car for the police. My manager and I never heard anything of it until a few years later, when the guy murdered his partner. My manager calls me, hey remember that guy who had a temper tantrum and left the kid in our store? He's on the news right now. HTTPS. Slash slash endpoint m wikipedia point org slash. My ex-husband's new girlfriend, everybody, now, because my ex and I have kids together, I tried doing the mature thing and making friends with the girlfriend. I even added her on kick. It backfired and now she complains about him to me all the time. My story begins a few days ago point she and my ex were hanging out at her house. They apparently had been having a passive aggressive fight about several topics. I started getting texts from her, saying she was angry and about to send him back home to me point I was shocked. So angry, she was about to make him leave her house. He had been staying there about a month, so this concerning. I sent a text back, asking if she was okay point she said she was, and that she was going to bring him back to my house, and make him explain. Now I was really curious. What could he have done? They came to my house, and she begins going on about how he accidentally set his laptop case on her foot, while they were sitting at her kitchen table point that was it. I sighed, and asked him, if he apologized point yes. She looked down at her lap point I told them, that they needed to solve their own problems, by communicating and learning how to deal with one another. I also made mention, that just that morning he and I had to go visit our child in the hospital in the next town, and he was probably already tired, and just a little clumsy as a result point she got up, started crying, and ran out of my house. Both my ex, and I were startled. He went outside to find out what was wrong, and they both soon left. Turns out, she thought I called her a bad girlfriend, because she brought a disagreement to me about a laptop case being set on her foot. 
This was on top of my ex and myself making a 120 mile round trip to visit our daughter in the hospital point she apologized the next morning, only to complain that my ex wasn't satisfying her in bed. By that night point TLDR, my ex's new girlfriend made my ex drive the two of them to my house over a laptop bag being set on her foot. When I remind her we just got back from an out of town hospital visit with our child, she cried and stomped out of my house, then apologized and said he was bad in bed the next day. The saga continues. Be I'm late to the party, but my ex's mother when my ex and I were still together, we were planning her 60th birthday party. NBD, right? I knew she wanted to go to the melting pot, but we wanted to surprise her with something she always said she wanted, a shopping spree. Cool. So the big day comes around, and we tell her to get in the car, because we were going to go to the mall then to dinner she complained. The whole trip. It was a 90 minute drive to the mall, and she beached about how long it was taking, that we didn't stop at a specific Starbucks, that they didn't have her favorite pastry, she was literally screaming at the girl, it's my birthday, you have to have scones in the back, I want my scones, the barista went well above and beyond by calling another store along the route, asking if they had scones, and then asked them to hold a dozen, so the crazy beach could have her fakin vanilla bean scones. Then she was mad that her coffee was cold by the time we got to that store, but she didn't want to order another one, so she sulked in the back of the car like a 5 year old and threw the scones out the window while we were driving because she didn't want them without warm coffee. She upped the ante by taking all of her prescriptions, which caused her to get low blood sugar. This was her go-to when she realized people were getting fed up with her BS. Kumi having to force feed her glucose gel and stab her in the arm with glucagon, the same stuff I had saved for her faking diabetic son. Once at the mall she couldn't find anything she wanted to buy, then when she found a bracelet slash earring slash ring set, she threw a temper tantrum in the store because they didn't have a ring in her size and would have to order it for her. She shoved the set off the counter and stormed off point at dinner. She chewed the server a new asshole to the point where we tipped him an extra $100 for putting up with her sheet. The table was too big, so she couldn't reach across. They didn't have her favorite wine. They didn't make her favorite cocktail exactly the way she wanted it. Literally nothing was good enough for her point fuck her. When I was a kid, I think this was when I was 10, there was a guy. Tom maybe mid 60s, in our neighborhood who was just genuinely a nice guy. My parents weren't super protective, but they didn't let me play with strangers, but they knew the guy. We ate dinner with him and his wife, at our house. My parents actually tried to get to know our neighbors, weird right, and he was just nice to everyone around him. My friends and I used to go around squirting each other with water guns, when it got hot out. Kid still does this, right? And whenever Tom was out taking care of his flowers he might just take a quick shot at us with his hose, and we would shoot back, and it was fun. Sometimes he would shoot first, sometimes us, but it was always just a light spray and as hot as it was outside it was just nice, and never any hard feelings. One day he was out, waved at us, and I squirted his bare leg. He flipped his sheet. He threw his hose as hard as he could at his house, the metal sprayer broke the window it hit. Then he literally flipped his grill over, then picked it up, and tossed it a few yards. Then he tore the roof down spout off of his house and repeatedly hit his car with it. At this point my friends and I had ran back to my house, told my dad, and he went out with a rhyme about to destroy this man look on his face. We watched from a distance, they talked. Tom went inside, and my dad told me never go in his yard again. Eventually it kind of blew over and we, the kids, didn't live in fear, but I never interacted with Tom again, and people rarely did more than just wave as they passed instead of stopping to talk to him. I kind of felt bad for Tom as he really did seem like a nice guy, ultimate rage out notwithstanding. I recently asked my dad about it, and from what my dad could recall Tom's wife was really sick and her prognosis wasn't good, though she did recover eventually, it was bad for some time point I'm not sure how I would have handled it if I were in my dad's situation. Going to talk to a neighbor I know seems reasonable, but seeing what I do in the news about people getting into fights and possibly getting shot, I might just call the police to report a disturbance. 
So it was 8.55 on a Friday night, a guy and his daughter come into my store. He tells her she can have whatever she wants and sets her loose on my freshly cleaned floor. My manager and I are balls deep in closing paperwork, praying we can get out of the mall before security locks us in again 15 minutes and 20 unheeded warnings about the store being closed later. This kid is finally satisfied. I solemnly begin ringing them up. This guy passes me a credit card. Said card isn't signed and has a woman's first name and different last name from his ID. He starts desperately pleading with me to take it. It's my mother's. I'm also on the account. Call the bank. I just got out of jail. Why would I steal a credit card? At some point during this incredibly unassuring ramble he let slip that his mother is downstairs in the parking lot. I told him the only way I'm taking the card is if he gets her. He sends the kid. As I'm waiting for this woman that may or may not exist, he begins to look even more nervous and clammy. It's a half hour after close now. My manager is giving me death glares. This guy looks like he's gonna throw up. I just want to get absorbed into the floor. And then we heard it. The most booming, echoing, and vile string of vocabulary I have ever had the displeasure of experiencing coming from the bottom of the escalator. Then she appeared at the gates 300 pounds poured into a makeshift sausage casing of cheap walnut cotton, a mullet with spikes to rival the iron throne losing her sheet. I wish I could tell you what she was saying, but all I could hear is a high-pitched ringing as her face turned an unholy shade of red somehow my voice echoed clear over this one woman volcano, I point D please. Her face turned 8 shades darker, she threw it at me, turned on her heel while tainting the air with more unstoppable complaints, insults, threats, and profanity. I put the card through. Both her son and granddaughter hung their heads in shame and followed her out, leaving all employees left in the mall stunned point TLDR woman has to walk three yards to confirm her credit card isn't stolen. Nuclear catastrophe ensues. I had just become the manager of a subway. Customer drives up. Gets out of his car. Slams the door. Kicks his tire. I can tell this is going to be a fun one point he throws the door open, almost shattering the glass on the door and breaking the hydraulic door thingy. He marches straight up to the counter and demands a goddamn sandwich point I decide I could get through this and ask what type of bread he wants. He says I just want a faking sandwich, so I get out the regular white loaf and start cutting it. Halfway through he says I want it gluten free. Well, that requires me to throw out the bread I was using, wash my hands, sterilize the surface, put on new gloves, because we actually took a potential celiac's customer seriously back then. I'm getting called every name under the sun, and I get the pre-packaged gluten-free bread, open it in front of him to show that it's sterile, and throw away the packaging. Still getting told to hurry up that I'm a faking waste of time, and my favorite bit to this day, I know the manager of this store personally, and I'll have you fired after I talk to him. This is when I calmly put down the sandwich, looked him in the eye, and in a totally deadpan voice say sir, I'm sorry, but I've never met you in my life and I wouldn't ever go through the misfortune of dealing with your horrible temper tantrum dealing self on a regular basis. I'm the manager, and I'm telling you to get out of my store before I call the police. He still kept going. I'm going to call your real manager. I have his number right here on this business card one of those beaches gave me last week. He calls it, and my cell phone goes off in my pocket. I pick it up, answer it with a hello. I believe I asked you to get out of my store, and this is whole. Turns sheet fac in white point he scurries out and calls our corporate office. Since we are franchised, our corporate office is in town and the owner comes down to talk to him. The owner tears into him because there were three different cameras with audio recording this exchange and the guy had nothing to back himself up. He did go to jail that afternoon for trying to punch the owner in the lot, but that was just icing point don't work in food service anymore, and it's because of customers like this that I don't miss it. Guy walks into the bottle store and starts muttering at the fridges. Still no castle? Where are the sad products? Now the place is empty, I'm being helped by one teller. Another teller is standing behind her till. He could very easily have turned around and asked if they had the brand he was looking for. Instead, he gets louder and louder until eventually he's screaming at the fridges where is the goddamn castle. 
the poor lady teller was stealing herself to go deal with him, but I told her he was behaving like an ass, and if he wanted castle, he could come and ask for it like a human being. If he complained to management, I'd have her back. Next thing, he turns around and starts snapping his fingers at the security guard and yelling about getting some goddamn service, which is when I got involved. I was pretty sure there was a racial element, he was old and white, I'm less old and white, this is South Africa, and some people still long for the good old days of apartheid. I told him, if he wanted some help, he could stop behaving like an ass and ask politely. He lost his sheet. A full on foot stomping tantrum. By the time backup security arrived, I was legitimately scared for my safety, I'm female, smaller than him, and he was raging. The whole debacle could have been avoided if he'd just turned around and politely asked if the shop had stock. He didn't even have to queue. I worked at a small mechanic shop. We'd always get the random person who thinks it's appropriate to start screaming because they think I'm upselling them break work that they desperately need. Usually they huff and puff and drive off, only to be back a week later with their tail between their legs ready to get that break work done because their car no longer stops well. One such customer threw such a fit that I actually had to call police. A younger guy brought in an early 90s Fox body Mustang that needed an oil change. This was obviously his first car. He was extremely protective of it and wanted to watch the entire time to make sure I didn't get grease on it. Whatever. The first bit of trouble was when he wanted to put it on the lift himself because he didn't want me in his car. I tell him that's not faking happening and my overalls are actually a lot cleaner than they look. I go wash my hands and finally he decides to let me in the car. As I'm pulling it forward on the lift, He's literally screaming that his dad will sue us into the ground if I burn up his clutch. I roll my eyes and continue on point once I get it in the air I see some of the worst trust I have ever seen. This was an Albuquerque. Cars in New Mexico don't trust. I ask him where he bought it. He informs me that it was a gift from his parents. They wanted to buy him a Civic, but he refused, so they basically just gave him a couple grand to get whatever B wanted. So he bought this rusty piece of sheet sight unseen from an ebay seller I inform him that his car is pretty much toast and I was not going to work on it simply because of the liability. You could see daylight through the floor. The entire trunk was rotted out as was just about everything else. As I'm showing him the places where there used to be solid metal, he's getting madder and madder. Eventually he explodes and literally just starts screaming fuck you in quick bursts. He then grabs some tools that were sitting on a nearby cart and flings them across the shop. A cowalker immediately calls the police, who happened to be eating right across the street at a Chinese place. They show up and find out he has a bunch of warrants. He gets thrown in the back of a cop car, never to be seen again. Point meanwhile, his faded yellow piece of sheet car is still on the lift. We put it in the back lot where it stayed for at least a year. It was still there when I quit. I used to deliver pizza and usually we would quote 45 one hour for delivery on busy nights. Most people had no idea what time they ordered and went based on hunger double time. So if I got their pizza to them in 50 minutes, it was apparently half an hour late. I have the time written on their receipt from when they put their order in and delivered their orders based on who ordered first point one guy I got to him in 55 minutes knocked on his door and he was already cursing behind the door about how I was late. When he opened the door, he was clearly drunk and yelling in my face. You're an hour late. I responded no you didn't even order your pizza an hour ago he ignored me this better faking not be cold. And I just said that'll be $17.55 guy hands me $25 and says keep the change. But like, angrily. Then follows up with this better not be cold or I'm throwing it out the faking window. I responded trust me it's hot and you already paid me so if you do throw it out the window it won't mean anything to me. He then shut up and closed the door while saying bring it to me faster next time. I'm the most important. I went back to my car and got in and saw his head poke out a small window and he screams it's still hot and gave me a thumbs up and a smile. I drove away and all I could think for some reason was that dude was awesome. I don't think he was having a tantrum. I think he was just hangry. 
I was in line at a Bojangles for breakfast. This particular drive through used cones to prevent people from cutting in line in the drive through because there wasn't a median blocking that sort of idiot activity point sure enough, as usual, a BBW showed up and decided to jump the line of cars by nosing her car into the line between the cones. I was a bit fed up with this kind of blatant cheaty behavior, so I told my girlfriend to take the wheel, got out and moved one of the cones in front of the woman's car. I wasn't saying anything, I just wanted to make it perfectly clear she was being a cunt and needed to stop point this insane woman then gunned her engine and ran forward like she was going to run me over. I was of the opinion that was rude, so I pulled a Randy Savage style elbow drop on the hood of her car, leaving a nasty dent. I'm not known for being a guy with a temper, and to be perfectly honest I wasn't even mad I just wanted revenge for being threatened with a car by someone who was already being a complete sheet point of course her reaction was relatively predictable. She got out of her car jumping up and down and screaming at me point now I'm sure I'll get called racist for this, but at the time the honest truth is that she looked exactly like a pissed off chimp in a nature documentary. This wasn't because she was black, it was because of how she was hunched over and hopping and clapping her hands while screaming at me. For a few seconds I just stood there. I couldn't understand a damn thing she was screaming, but the overall scene was just so hilariously caricature like I was a bit stunned point then, I did it. I'm probably going to hell for it, but I couldn't resist. I knuckled down to the ground and did it right back at her. Full screeching pissed off chimp impression including banging my head with my forearms. Of course I was grinning the whole time point don't anyone tell me a black woman's face can't get red because it definitely can. Bug eyed popping mad red face oh no you don't fury ensued. I still couldn't understand a thing she was saying but by this time my girlfriend who was having trouble driving because she was laughing so hard tears were coming out of her eyes had pulled up right beside me. So I got back in the car and we placed our order. Before we got out of the drive through a sheriff's deputy arrived and was trying to calm down the irate woman, who was still screaming and running around the parking lot. Her car still at the edge of the drive through He came up and asked us what happened, and I told him. He asked us to wait, so we did, while eating our breakfast. About 5 minutes later the deputy comes out of the bojangles with the most screwed up face I've ever seen. It was hilarious watching him trying to keep a straight face as he told us he'd seen the drive through video and we were free to leave. <laughs> Saw an accountant lose his job over a chocolate chip cookie point our finance team was workshopping and working longer hours. So the company ordered in panel of bread and other things for lunches. One day this employee was missing his cookie. He grumbled slash griped. No big deal. I'd have done the same. The next day his box was again missing his cookie. Not sure how they mixed up the order. This grown man, probably late 30s early 40s loses his ever loving mind and starts screaming point former employee who stole my cookie. This is the second day in a row this has happened. Did you take it? Did you? Pointing accusingly at various cowalkers. I will not stand for this theft. This is outrageous. You have singled me out and I want my damn cookie, senior. Accountant, okay everyone calm down here, it's just a cookie, I'm sure they mixed up the orders at the store, former, employee, no, I ordered a cookie, I should have a cookie, whoever stole it from me should give it back right now, foot stomp, this rant went on and on for a solid 5 minutes, it has been about 6 or 7 years ago, and I don't remember all the specifics, but much colorful language was spiced in, and some shade cast upon our mothers. He finally was escorted out by security. The next day he was met at the door by his supervisor and security with his things over a cookie. I work at a store that sells glasses, but retail is retail is retail. In 5 years I have seen some sheet, but this was probably the worst with the most satisfying ending point I had been there for about a year and a half at this point. Long enough to know my sheet, but apparently not long enough to be considered an optical expert. This 50 something man comes in with his wife, and he has grump face on from the get go. He is there to pick up a new purchase. We sat down at my desk, and he tries them on they touch his nose for about half a second, before he takes them right back off, drops them on the desk, and says they are not right. Now, I understand that explaining optical issues isn't always the most straightforward thing. Trying to tell somebody what you're seeing, when you don't really know the words, 
To describe it is hard. But this guy won't give me anything I ask if it's fit related or vision related, and he just keeps saying the same thing, that they aren't right. I go through typical troubleshooting for about 5 minutes, just trying to figure out what's wrong, and after trying them on for the nth time, and they are still not right, he whips the glasses off, and across the desk at me, hitting me in the face so hard with them, that he knocked my own glasses out of alignment point I was in shock, and, I'm ashamed to admit, I actually started to tear up, because it was just such an unexpected as whole move. At this point, his wife, who had been more or less quiet the whole time, and growing more embarrassed by her husband behavior as this professed, stood up, yanked his chair back, and screamed at him to get up, and leave the store. I packed his glasses up and just left them at the front desk, praying I wouldn't be the one to deal with him, if slash when he came back. They both left, the wife scolding him as they went, like he was a little kid. A few minutes later I was readjusting my own glasses, when he came back in. My heart sunk, but he stared at the floor, and gave me a one word apology, asked for his glasses, and left, his wife behind him with her arms, cross just waiting for him to try some sheet. Thank fuck for that woman, he needed someone like that in his life, to call him on his bullshit. I hope I'm not too late to the party, this amazing temper tantrum happened at the Republican National Convention in Cleveland last year. On mobile sorry for formatting, it really ended up being a week long temper tantrum, but I'll tell you the highlight story. A few friends of mine were working for a congressman at the time, and were up there for the whole week staffing him at all the different events he was going to be attending. As you can imagine, it was a very busy week for a Republican congressman, and they ended up walking to many events every day around downtown Cleveland in the summer heat. From what I can gather, everything about the week was going great, except for one small factor. The congressman in question decided to bring his wife along, and she had a very different idea in mind for the week. While the staff had planned the whole week to be packed with events for the congressman to speak at and attend, his wife was just expecting to party it up, and this miscommunication lead to an amazing meltdown by day 3. By then it become clear that the wife was not happy with how the week was shaping up point after at least 10 events a day and miles of walking around the city. She also failed to bring anything other than high heels. She had had enough. After one event, as the staff is getting everyone ready to head to the next event that is expecting their boss, the wife decides she is tired of all the work and wants to go to one of the parties going on. The congressman tries to talk to her and explain that this will be the last event expecting him for the day and after that they can go to one of the parties. The wife doesn't like this idea, she is tired of all the events and doesn't want anything to do with it. Keep in mind, the staff had spent weeks leading up to this getting everything together and both the congressman and his wife were filled in on all the plans beforehand. Not one complaint came up in the weeks before. So instead of talking it through with her husband she just stops talking to any of them point now the real fun begins. The staff offer up a few suggestions, just trying to fix the problem, and the congressman is trying to get his wife to answer him on which she like. She won't respond. She just stands there. They are now outside of a restaurant, on a very busy sidewalk, during the middle of the RNC, trying to get a 50 year old to talk to them. But it doesn't stop there. The congressman finally decides that they need to make a decision and head somewhere to at least get off the sidewalk and lets his wife know that they have to move. She doesn't take this well because she hasn't gotten her way and just wants to drink. So what does she do? Does she talk about it like normal grown adults do? No, that would be too easy. She sits down on the curb, crosses her arms and pouts. A 50 year old woman is now sitting on the ground and refusing to move on one of the busiest streets in the city during the RNC because she is going to have to wait an hour to party. Sadly it works, the congressman gives in and they cancel the last event of the day. The rest of the week goes just as badly and it drives the staff crazy. Last I heard they all refer to the wife as CL now when they talk about her. CL standing for curb lady point TLDR congressman's wife wants to drink, gets a new nickname. I was standing in the security line at an airport and woman in front of me lost her mind because she had multiple full size, way more than 2 ounces, containers of lotions, 
hand cream, eye cream, whatever, in her carry-on bag, and she was told she was going to have to throw them out, or figure out a way, to ship them to her house point unacceptable. They were very very expensive, you see, and the security officers just needed to understand that she refused to be parted from her very very expensive cosmetics, and they were just going to have to make an exception and violate SAR regulations because her items were very very expensive and therefore too special to be tossed away or shipped point they even asked confirmed with her, ma'am, you are aware that you're only allowed to bring liquid slash cream slash gel of less than 2 ounces and they have to be packed in a plastic sealed bag, right? And she said, of course, but this is different. These are very very expensive. Finally, they told her she would have to dump the items and move through or get out of line and find an alternative. She pitched a huge tantrum, screaming nonsense mostly punctuated by not fair. And I will have your job. And you don't know who I am. That did not sway the officers. So she just stood there with her head thrown back, howling until more security personnel came to politely invite her to a windowless room. I worked at a big name retailer a few years back. One afternoon, a customer's kid dropped a gallon of milk on the floor and it burst. Not a huge deal. I send one cow walker to get a spill kit, while I stay toward people away from the sizable puddle of milk point than this middle aged lady comes along. I say I'm sorry, ma'am, but someone spilled some milk. Could you go around? I don't want you to slip, she. Looks down her nose at me and says, who do you think you are? A minimum wage high school dropout isn't going to tell me what to do. She then proceeds to stomp through the milk like a toddler playing in the rain. It's splashing everywhere. It's now down the side aisle as well as all over my pants as she reaches the other side of the puddle. She apparently came to the realization that milk is not good for suede pumps. She starts to shriek that I've ruined her shoes. Do I know how expensive they were? These are name brand. She's going to sue the pants off of me point all I can think to say is, I told you to go around. She demands a manager. I call a manager. Same exchange happens with the manager, I should be fired, because I ruined her shoes. The manager turns to me, did you tell her to go around? Yes, of course. She tells the woman, that she ought to have listened, when I warned her about the milk, and that I'm doing my job, and won't be losing it point the woman starts to shriek incoherently, throws herself on the floor, and starts rolling in dirty floor milk. I look at the manager, hoping for some cue about how to handle this. She sighs, rolls her eyes, and says walkie security, it took both big burly security guards to manhandle Queen Lactose out of the store, all three of them covered in milk and her screaming about a lawsuit the whole time. This will probably be buried, but I'll write it anyways. A little while ago I was a server in a decent steam house, and this lady came in to place a to-go order. I noticed a little distress on both the lady and the togo host that was taking the order, and on a slow weekday night, that qualified for entertainment, so I made my way closer to the action point, although in a few minutes it didn't matter how close you were to the lady placing the order, because she started screaming last time I came here or I'll have Thousand Island dressing here's the thing. We've never had Thousand Island. I worked there for over a year, and one of the trick questions we ask new trainees before their first night on the floor is to get a side of Thousand Island dressing to see if they remember the training. Anyways this lady was dead faking set on the fact that we had Thousand Island and was not going to take no for an answer. She was convinced we were either lying to her or covering up something. It was almost surreal how this lady couldn't handle the truth. She refused to accept she was wrong or even consider the possibility that she mistook a location for another restaurant point after a solid 5 to 6 minutes squabbling, our manager just said fuck it and gave her a free salad with our kitchen's best attempt to recreate Thousand Island dressing point. That was the day I realized I wasn't cut out for pandering to idiots and I quit not too long after. I'm at my local Publix grocery store. I'm waiting in line to purchase one of their legendary subs. It's the middle of the afternoon, so it's busy. I'm sitting at about 4th or 5th in line. At the moment, there were only two people working the entire deli. These two poor souls had to run around, cut meat, get orders, etc. Point as I'm patiently waiting in line, an older gentleman walks straight up to the counter. 
He then proceeds to just stand there, expecting one of the two slammed workers to give him some attention and take his order, despite the fact there was already a huge line. When they didn't acknowledge him, after about 30 seconds, he started leaning over the counter and waving at the two employees. When they still ignored him, he snapped, hey, I've been standing here for over a minute and neither of you has paid any attention. What kind of bullshit is this? One of the store employees, very politely, responds to him, sir, we are very busy at the moment and there's only two of us here. If you'd move into the line next to you, we'll be happy to assist you, unimpressed. With being asked to wait in line with the rest of the plebs, he barks back. If I wanted to wait in line, I would have done that. I have things to do. Now, I'm normally pretty docile and carefree. However, there is a demon inside me that surfaces every now and then when the moment calls for it. This was one of those moments. So, I call him out. I have things to do too, as I'm sure everyone in this line does, yet we are still waiting in line patiently. Either get in the line and wait your turn, or do everyone a favor and take your miserable bones back home, everyone. In line is stunned. The employees are stunned. I hear a few laughs too. He snaps back at me, shut up and mind your own business. I have a go right back. This is my business. I'm patiently waiting in line for a sandwich and you're making my experience here unpleasant. If you're so miserable that you can't wait 10 minutes to get a panini, then you have much bigger problems and you should probably reevaluate your life. The guy mutters incoherently and stumbles off without anything to show for it. Point. When I finally got up to the counter, they gave me my sub for half off for confronting the dude. So, not only did he leave empty handed, he helped me get a 50% discount point thanks for the half off sub, you miserable old curmudgeon. Posted this before, but will probably get buried again. This story is long, but it just gets more and more ridiculous. This was in Shanghai, while I was working abroad point girlfriend was having a bad fever and I took her to the hospital in China there is no privacy in exam rooms, so everyone was standing in line, while the previous patient is being examined there were 4 to 5 groups of people ahead of use and this well dressed Shanghainese girl, 16 to 17 years old. And her mom cuts everyone in line and people started getting upset. The guy in front of me said hey there's a line here point and the girl turns around, eyes him up and down, and mutters. Why are all these countryside people here this is Shanghai fact go back to the country. The mom turns around and tells the guy my daughter is very sick, she needs to be seen right away the guy goes at least she can stand. My wife is pregnant and she's waiting outside while I wait in line she can't even walk. Your daughter should learn some manners the girl goes crazy and starts cursing at him in Shanghainese. The guy gets mad and calls her a dumb bitch the girl jumps out and slaps the guy across the face hard and everyone starts yelling her mom drags her out of the exam room but only for her to come back a few seconds later swearing at everyone. My girlfriend couldn't take it and yells back, why are you so uneducated, learn some manners and the girl starts heading towards us again. I stand between them with my back to the crazy girl and put my arm out to section off the exam room and the Shanghainese girl pegs me from behind, knocks off my glasses then reaches to slap my girlfriend point she misses and snags her glasses off too and starts another swing point unfortunately for the crazy girl, my girlfriend happened to be holding my steel water bottle that was completely full and because she couldn't see. She raised it up in self defense and ended up connecting with the crazy girl's face point the mom drags the girl out screaming. Only to come back minutes later the girl's mouth is kinda busted open, both of them screaming, and security comes point the mom yells that we hit her daughter, everyone snapped back, your daughter hit three people before that happened I guess the crazy girl couldn't wait for the explanation, and because security was holding her, she spit a massive blood and spit into the security officer's face point security threw her out. Just a bit late, but I always love this story. I was working a one month retail job at Best Buy, previously Future Shop. Over the holidays I was working with the computer teches helping out with computer setups, upgrades and repairs. It was a pretty sweet gig in a way as I didn't have to deal with customers. 
however sometimes to accommodate lunch breaks and special situations I would go to the counter and deal with customers this one guy comes in with a somewhat older laptop and tells us the keyboard no longer works. I open it up to take a look and it seems an entire glass of milk was spilled on the keyboard. It smelled sour and there was white crusty stuff all around and under the keys now, Best Buy charges flat rates for certain types of repairs. So a keyboard replacement is $150, if I'm not mistaken. So I start looking up the specs on this laptop and it's a pretty crappy laptop with absolute bottom line specs. So I inform the customer that his warranty is at least 3 to 4 years expired and there will be a $150 charge to fix it. So I try and explain it's not worth repairing and he should just pick up whatever is the current bottom end laptop as it will be $200 point he instantly loses it. Grabs his laptop and just starts bashing it on the counter. The keys are flying off the keyboard, the screen tears apart, and the hinges break. He throws it on the ground and storms out point. So I pick everything up, put all the pieces in a large ziplock and just toss the thing in our recycling bin point the guy shows up the next day. Super quiet and nice. He apologized and then explains he has important data on the laptop and he would like us to retrieve the hard drive point we actually were able to pull out the hard drive and salvage the data point it was a weird one. About 3 years back we were on vacation for Christmas along with my so's family. They were staying in a golfing resort, not that golf was really on the agenda point their balcony looked out onto the tee box for a tough looking hole that had a thick strip of trees off to the right point we were all in the room and heard the sound of someone teeing off, immediately followed by the sound of a golf ball bouncing between all the trees and someone yelling fuck. Been there. About 30 seconds later, he tees off again, and is followed by the same sound of a ball smashing around in the trees. I look out this time wanting to catch the reaction point out there, on this fairly prestigious golf course in his full, expensive looking get up, and what appeared to be a privately owned buggy, I see this 40 something guy throwing his club into the trees, while screaming get faked, amusing, but he wasn't done. On his way back to the buggy he rips his glove off, raises it over his head, and throws it to the ground as hard as he can then stomps on it, twisting his foot at the same time, to really teach that glove a lesson. He gets back to the cart and kicks the side of it. Hard. Probably time to stop now. So he reaches for an iron and starts laying into the side of the cart, screaming incomprehensibly and going to town on this thing with full on baseball swings. We can see holes forming all down the side of it, and no doubt his iron was looking. Just as healthy point he grabs the roof on one side and violently shoves it away from him then pulls it back toward him, getting it about one half to the tipping point, where it would have landed on him, then instantly calms down, gets a different driver out, and walks back over with another ball for attempt number 3. This whole time there's a guy with him who's been smart enough to keep his distance and stay completely still and silent point the third attempt is successful. He retrieves his original club from the trees and they both get in the destroyed buggy and drive off like everything was normal, see, when I play golf I do the healthy thing and internalize all that rage like a regular person. I used to be a manager at a bank. One of the most satisfying duties of my job was giving the ultimate fuck you to as whole customers people get super uptight over money, and I understand that. However, every once in a while a person would go ballistic over something like a service fee or a hold on a check. I would tolerate them until they became violent or threatening. If they damaged our property, held a fist up to a staff member, grabbed a staff member, or made verbal threats, there were no second chances I would tell them to leave, or I was calling police. Once they did, I would go into the system, pay off their debts from any funds they had in their accounts, close all the accounts, and send them the remainder via a bank draft in the mail along with a letter explaining what happened. I would also flag their profile in the system, so they could never open an account, or apply for a credit product again. If they owed more than they had, they got a form letter, that any excess debts had to be paid within 90 days or they would go to collections. The best part was that bank policy supported me 100%. I had a few complaints made about this happening go all the way up the line, all I had to do, was explain what happened, supported by the employee themselves and the higher-ups would throw the complaint in the trash. 
The power to do that was all explained clearly in the agreement the customer signed. When they opened their account said it. Over my 5 years with the bank I had a customer tell me he would wait for me in the parking lot after we closed. One tell me that he would blow this place up. One kick in her office window. And one grab one of my tellers by the collar and threatened to punch her. All got the fuck you treatment from me. Finally a rammer I can reply to point about 6 months ago I was working at a breakfast cafe in a little town in North Houston slash South Texas. My boss, let's call him Mandrew, was a nice guy, but had immense temper problems. The kind of guy that could go from 0 to 100, and back to 0 in no time. Needless to say I stayed away from him point there are days where I'd walk in 9am sharp and he'd be screaming like a faking ape over something as innocuous as a two go order so here's the big one. It was a pretty slow day, I'd say about noon, and we had a catering order due out to a local high school I like, and Andrew was there. To oversee it point about an hour after the order was delivered he gets a call from the school saying they didn't have a salad delivered. Normal reaction would be, okay, miss. Sorry to trouble you, but we will have that to you as soon as possible point but oh no, not for Andrew. After he got off the phone, this guy starts screaming in the kitchen about some of his employees and some other related sheet. Here's the kicker, he tried to break his smartphone over his knee like it was a tree branch, and, shocker, it didn't work. So in response to this, he looks at his phone, and then his wife dead in the face and she says don't do it, and this guy fastballs his phone into the kitchen floor. It shatters, he picks it up, and does it again point odd to think this guy had the temperament for customer service, but he really was a nice dude, just really immature. Once, there was a commander. This commander was a fag. Commander was the head of a division of maybe 450 people, and his division was not doing so hot, at least partially because he was a fag. He interpreted our very important procedures very differently than the rest of the leadership, and threw an absolute fit if anyone tried to correct him. Mostly he got yes, certain we did things by the book anyway, but I digress one day, Commander Fackboy gathers all of the department leadership in one room. All of the officers, all of the high ranking enlisted. I was in the room, studying in an alcove behind a sliding screen, but I was very new and scared to walk out in front of all of these important people, so I stayed quiet and didn't move. Point commander proceeds to scream at the department leadership for a full hour. Just pure threats. No one was gonna go on leave, no one was gonna even leave the ship until she changed, he would make sure none of them ever got promoted, yada yada. He didn't list anything he wanted changed, didn't make any suggestions for what needed to be done. Pure threats, at distressing volume. For an hour the next week, he was gone. The ship's captain called our entire department to a meeting up in the hangar. He told us that Commander Twa Twiffle would no longer be our department head because I will not have a tyrant working for me. Point he gave us a pretty disapproving look when we cheered. A middle-aged lady decked out in designer clothes at HM had come to return an item. The line was rather long, and she skipped it walking directly to the counter. I didn't question it at this point as some places have that separate line for customer service slash returns. She basically pushed in front of the customer who was currently purchasing, and and announced she was making a return. The cashier and customer looked up surprised, and the cashier was like hold on ma'am I'm in the middle of ringing up a customer. And I understand the wait is long, but you need to wait in the line as well we handle all transactions and returns through this line the woman just announced again that she wanted to make a return and saw no reason to wait. This went on for some time and the woman's voice kept getting louder and she was waving around the item of clothing she wanted to return. She started calling the cashier names and asked for the manager. The cashier replied saying I'm a manager and this is our policy. I apologize that it's inconvenient in the middle of her explanation the woman just raged out to her shouting how she would never shop at such a terrible store, that she was being mistreated, she purposefully swiped a whole pile of clothing off a display and tried to tip over a clothing rack causing clothes to spill everywhere point all of us normal people started helping pick the carnage up point this was literally over probably a $12 item. About 10 years ago I was in college and I worked at chain store that sold children's toys. There was a recall on specific Thomas the Tank Engine wooden trains. 
specifically, things that were released in a certain time period and were painted red. There may have been one yellow thing in there because of lead paint. The store wasn't doing so well, so I was often the only person there aside from my manager who would be off in an office or something. This particular day, I had no radio, so I literally had no way to call my manager a woman brings in a dollar sign 100 plus train set. It's not on the recall list. It's clearly been open and used. She has no receipt. It's online only, so it's not in my system at all, and I believe online only items couldn't be returned in store at the time. Anyway, I can't take it and refund her cash. I literally can't. There is no way for me to do it. I calmly explain to her that it's not been recalled, so it's safe, and apologize for the confusion about the recall. She was livid. She stalks away to find a birthday card, and I tidy up around the registers because the store is quiet. Then she walks to rows away from her cart, which is holding her toddler, who stands up in the cart and leans over. I watch two wheels come off the ground and die, like any decent human, make a dive for the cart and grab the handle. To keep it from tipping point she turns around, sees me at her cart, and tells me off for being near her child. Again, I apologize and explain it almost tipped. Of course, it looks bad, because she wasn't there, and didn't see a tip, though it made a loud thunk. Then finally, she decides to check out, and all hell breaks loose. She screamed at me, and screamed at me. Told me I would never amount to anything, I was worthless, etc etc etc. I'm like 19, working in a toy store alone, and sobbing and apologizing, while this woman tells me I'm the scum of the earth point a gentleman comes up, and cues behind her, and he's at least really kind as I'm apologizing and trying to stop crying, and find a tissue, and told me to take my time, and that she was terrible point tldr, saved woman's kid's life, got screamed at for not taking back a toy that wasn't on a recall list. Never thought I'd post about this story online, but whatever I guess in 2007 I was in KC for a convention. A group of me and my friends go to a Chinese restaurant suggested by several local friends of ours. So we give it a shot point we get guided to a table, sit down, gather more tables, because we ended up having a lot of people show up, roughly 15. So we are sitting there, get our orders in, buffet was going to shut down in an hour at the time, roughly 15 minutes later this lady who was calm for literally the entire time I was there walks up to the counter to pay. Well obviously she didn't like the bill, blew the f up at this poor Chinese lady, just laid into her about how the food was terrible, read, she finished it, and how they were overpriced, read, not really. From where I come from the prices were comparable and rather reasonable, and blah blah blah. I mean this lady was screeching at the top of her lungs at this waitress who clearly looked like she was about to cry point. As soon as the lady got done with her 15 minute tantrum she stomped out and got in this big sub the rest of her party slowly slinked into once they realized what was going on. Roughly a minute later, just before the lady took off in her oversized sub, a single man about my age from a different party shouted a word that got the entire restaurant laughing in an uproar. Beach. The entire place just lost it at that. Both waitresses who were there were doubled over. Just about the entire customer base left in the restaurant banded together, and I think collectively we gave them a $400 to $500 tip point I've worked in retail, but I wasn't when that happened. The people behind the counter do not deserve your sheet, just because you think you deserve something, or you think you can squeeze a store policy for some bullshit savings. Don't buy anything, if you're going to be a sheet. Just stay at home and rot please. It's better for the rest of us edit. This was a small restaurant. While we had a party of 15 we had to have made up roughly half of the customer base there after crazy lady left. So, I estimate there was roughly 25. 30 of us with the other small groups factored in. I had a customer order a special request item two weeks before Christmas. I explicitly told her that it would not be delivered by Christmas, marked the expected delivery date as December 29th and even made a note on the order slip she read, and signed customer understands order will not be delivered before Christmas. I made it very clear. We had issues with customers blowing up about late Christmas orders before, and didn't want a repeat point Q Christmas Eve, about 2pm she comes in asking why we haven't called her to pick up her order. 
I calmly explain that we haven't received it yet and she begins this massive tirade about how it's for her mother-in-law and how I've ruined her Christmas. I try to calmly explain the situation but it only enrages her further. She is throwing stock around the store, screaming and wailing and dozens of customers have stopped to watch her the store manager comes over and I explain the situation. He attempts to intervene and calm her down, explaining exactly what I already have, but she begins verbally abusing him. At this point he asks her to leave the store but she refuses, he asks her again, and she knocks a display of small trinkets over. He finally says ma'am, if you do not leave this store now I will have you charged with trespass. She gives up and leaves and we hurriedly clean up the mess and resume Christmas trading point at 4pm last my new delivery arrives. One of the items is her special order. I call the other customers and inform them we'll stay open a little late so they can pick up anything they had ordered for Christmas. Finally I have to ring this woman. I call and get an answering machine and leave a simple message with instructions from my manager please send somebody to collect your special order. You will not be permitted in the store 30 minutes later her husband turns up to pick up the order. He is profusely apologetic about the whole situation and stares at us knowingly when we explain what happened. That poor man has seen some sheet. I work as management in a retail drug store. Our pharmacy, like most pharmacies, closes at certain time and has held that schedule since the dawn of our business, over 120 years. I had a lady come in about 30 minutes after the pharmacy closed and when she realized she wasn't going to get her prescription until tomorrow morning, less than 9 hours from this time, she absolutely flipped out. I need this prescription now. She shouted at me and my employees. I told her that unfortunately, only the pharmacist has access to the pharmacy when it is closed, and she left 30 minutes ago. She proceeded to give everyone in the store a bad time, yelling, shouting, calling names, etc. I told her that she would need to calm down, otherwise the police would end up getting involved. She picked some choice words about me and made sure to use them all point at that point, I had enough. I usually am calm and reserved, but this lady needed to hear the truth. I stopped her mid-sentence, and with a stern yet professional tone, said these exact words, Ma'am, I'm really sorry that you can't get your pills. But let's be real here, our pharmacy is open for 13 hours every day, and you waited until the very last second to come in and get something you needed. As a young adult, I realize that the world does not cater to procrastination, and maybe it's time you realize that too. It isn't our fault that you put this off until the very very last second. She left, and all my employees loved me for it. It was a good day. I don't know if I would call it a big tantrum, but it sure was a fast one point a few years ago I was a waiter at a cheesy chain restaurant, and I was the head server for the bar area that night. So I made sure the bartenders had cups and ice and silverware and all of that jazz on top of my usual tables we were slammed hard one night in the bar. The NBA was just coming back from being on strike and it was a local team's first game since then. The bar area was the only place that had TVs in the restaurant and a lot of people were requesting tables there. I had a table of three get seated. Husband, wife and young son. I took their drink and appetizer order without a problem. They get their chips and dip by the time I'm bringing them their beers and a soda for the sun. Grand total of like 3 minutes have passed since they sat. They ask to put in their order then and I obliged point he ordered a steak well done. She a salad and the kid a hamburger. We all know steaks take a while to cook so I bring out biscuits which I didn't charge them for because I know it was gonna be a bit of a wait. I deliver the food to their table, they're all happy and I check back in 5 minutes later. He's upset because his steak is undercooked. I look at it, it's brown all the way through, but I still take it back to the kitchen manager, like I'm supposed to. I tell my GM also, this is important. The kitchen manager puts it back on the grill for a minute on each side and hands it back. I take it back to the table, and he says it's now overcooked, and burnt and he's pissed point I tell the kitchen manager, and my GM again about the table. My kitchen manager talks to the table about what he wants exactly and cooks a brand new steak for him, which is going to take a while to cook point, so I bring out a salad for him to have something to eat with his family, again I don't charge him. Eventually the steak is finally ready, 
I bring it out to him with fresh sides and everything. He cuts into the steak and I'm talking to his wife and she's saying everything has been great. She's super happy. As she's saying this, I haven't paid any attention to him. He's gotten so mad he whips the steak at me. Hits me in the face and neck point I'm not a small man. I'm 6 feet 7 inches and stood there in complete disbelief that someone actually did this in a crowded restaurant. Three of my fellow wait staff physically hauled me back into the kitchen. They told the GM and kitchen manager what happened. I don't see the table again. I find out my GM comp the entire meal point I worked the rest of the night. Cleaned the bar and quit when I was doing my turn-ins. My GM said if I had told him the table was being difficult I should have informed him. Even though I had told him about it twice point edit. TLDR a guy threw a steak at me in a busy restaurant. I'm sure this will get buried but that's alright. I used to be a door guy, girl, for several bars in a major city with an affluent university in the Midwest. Note, I'm a 5 feet 6 female, lightweight, cheerful, generally chill person doing this in my mid-twenties. I got paid good money to take fakes. Like, excellent money to know my sheet and confiscate them. At one time I knew the specifics of every single US driver's license slash id card, as well as many out of country, passports, military IDs. I got to witness tantrums from rich, spoiled college kids on a nightly basis, and it was possibly the highlight of my job, especially as I was in contact with a ton of the sellers, and knew how much money they'd wasted. My favorite interaction, though, was a kid who got his ID taken the first night he ever tried to use it, in front of all his male friends, and the girl he brought out to try to impress. He yelled, screamed, stomped his foot toddler style, then guys, he cried. He sent his friends to the other side of the entryway, and then came to me, and quietly told me he was just trying to impress that girl, and could I please give him the ID back. I pointed out the camera above my head, literally two feet away, and said I'd be fired if I gave it back, I wolf. And he screamed some more. Eventually half his group had real IDs and were let in. I sent the rest to the 18 plus UK bar next door after they still tried their cards on me, and I took them. I told them the servers there don't card, sorry for the lost property, but at least they could get a weak beer next door. They left and I thought that'd be it. It happens all the time point next day, I'm working my day job at the same bar as a receptionist, and get a call from my manager. Some guys here screaming at him saying I stole from his kid. We talk and I figure out it's the dad from the kid last night. I explain what happens. My manager, who's worked in the bar industry for decades cracks up, and I hear him tell the guy what happened over the phone. My manager doesn't hang up, so I get to hear this guy go into an absolute fit of rage totally see where the kid got it from. He screams that he paid good money for that ID, so his kid could have fun at college, and I better give it back, or he's going to call the cops for theft, um, falsifying identity anyone. He goes on and on for a few minutes and my manager picks up the phone. Hey your underscore or underscore wizard underscore baby, can you bring our IDs up here, so this guy can get his for his kid. My heart sinks that this guy's going to be rewarded for such sheet behavior. Also our massive binder of IDs is my training tool and trophy case for teaching new door guys. I'm crushed because this one was particularly sheety and I'd have loved to show it to all the new guys. I bring them up, though. Manager puts the binder, massive and bursting, in front of the guy and tells him to point out the one that's his kid. Guy finds his kid's ID, kinda baffled at how many we've got. Manager pulls it out of the binder, reads the kid's name and some of the other details. This your kid's actual name? Guy nods. Then manager drops it through the shredder next to him, pulls out the drawer, collects the shards of plastic, and dumps them onto the desk in front of the guy. There you go. Year underscore or underscore wizard underscore baby. How much was that one? I tell him. About $150. Manager laughs and says he hopes it was worth it to the guy to get his kid banned from every decent bar in the city. I work at most of them, he's worked at all of them, and all the industry people talk to each other. Guy left the shards, we taped them up, and sent photocopies to all the bars we still let the kid in. By the way, if he was acting decent, when he came to the door, just wanted to shame him a bit. He was almost always a peach after that. My sister's friend is a spoiled little rich girl. 
She's never had to raise a finger for anything in her life and mommy and daddy have always sorted out her problems for her. She's never been allowed to fail or make mistakes. In her mind, everything she does is perfect, and she's entitled to anything she wants whenever she wants. One day, a load of my sister's friends, including her, were over in our house. I once overheard her telling another friend of my sister's that she hates coming over to our house because it's too small, but that's another story. It was a horrible rainy night, about 11pm, and the other girls wanted to stay in and watch a movie, but Princess wanted to go to the news agents across the road and get some cigarettes. Nobody would go with her. Instead of just going on her own like a regular human being, she proceeds to scream, kick her laptop, throw her phone at the wall, pull out her own hair, crying consolably, hit herself in the face, and attempted to punch several of the girls who tried to calm her down. Our next door neighbors called the police because they thought someone was in the process of being murdered. I came downstairs and threw her the hell out of my house and told her she's not allowed back here ever again. The next day, her mother arrived at the house, telling my sister and I what horrible beaches we were for not going to the shop with her and how her daughter's outburst was all our fault. She married a guy 25 years older than her less than a year later and has three kids. My mom died when I was in my freshman year of high school, and, in the summer of my sophomore year, my dad married my stepmother against the wishes of me, my sister, and all the family who had met this woman. His excuse was that my sister and I were just upset that she wasn't our mother, and that it was his life, not mine, and he didn't have to consult me about his decisions. My real concerns were that he'd only been dating her for about 9 months and they'd never spent more than a few days living together before she moved in which wasn't until after the wedding. She was also rude to everyone including me and my sister and I got a real gold digger vibe from her. It turns out that she was genuinely insane and verbally and emotionally abusive. I could go on about how she would scream at my father till 4am on nights when I had to be up at 7 for school, or how she had a habit of watching loud TV with all the lights on in the bedroom while my father was trying to sleep, or how she would call my sister and hoe for wearing a skirt that went to her knees, or any other of a thousand things I'm still dealing with as an adult because my father doesn't believe in divorce point well. About 6 months into my junior year of high school, my great grandmother died, and my father was the only person who could make it out of state to go to her funeral. He was gone for about half a week and the whole time he was gone my stepmother would wander around the house randomly at all hours of the night and day sobbing as loud as she could. When my dad came home she got up and immediately ran downstairs and started screaming at him in the kitchen. How dare you abandon me like that the week before I have to give a presentation. Do you know how hard I've been working while you ran off on a family outing? How dare you. I'd had enough of her at this point, so I went down to the kitchen and confronted her. She was there in her two-piece pink pajama set, red-faced and screaming, while my dad was still wearing the suit he wore to the funeral just looking exhausted and trying his best to weather her outrage while he made himself something to eat. I laid into her then, expressing months of frustration and abuse. I told her that her behavior was unacceptable. My father had just buried his grandmother for fact's sake and she called it a family outing. I told her that we had been bending over backwards to be accommodating and welcoming to her, but that she needed to start treating us all with respect, especially my father. At some point my sister also came down and started telling her off as well. My stepmother just started screaming no, and collapsed onto the floor crying and flailing her arms and legs throwing a tantrum exactly like a two year old would. She even pissed herself and rolled around in the puddle in the middle of the kitchen floor. We all just stood around, in shocked silence watching her. Eventually she stopped screaming and climbed to her feet dripping with piss and with tears and snot running down her face she marched right up to me, stuck her finger in my face and yelled at me to clean that up before marching back upstairs to her room and slamming the door. I may or may not have worked for a coffee company whose mascot is a slutch tea mermaid point anyways backstory my hypothetical time working for the slutch tea mermaid was 8 years. I have enough experience and composure that about half of our incoming customers think that I'm the manager, I'm a lowly barista. Anyways I have a number of adult temper tantrum stories, in fact I think Slutch Tea Mermaid is the place 
to witness such aggressive aggressive events let me set the scene first. My store is a corner store on one of those parking lot outlets. So there are two entrances into the store, one facing street side, and one the parking lot. Think of the storefront as a big L, so I'm manning the floor alone doing till slash bar. It's better to stand at the bar, facing street side, because you have full peripheral view of both incoming lanes of customer traffic, full view of the store, and therefore any guests that are seated. Facing till side slash parking lot side you don't have full store view. So I see one customer, let's call him young kid enter from the street side. We make eye contact and greet each other first as he walks in. Naturally as I've established point of contact already I'll serve him first. At the same time a husband and wife who I will refer to as McBaby, MCB, and Matron Malice, Millimeters, enter. As I ring in young kid I greet MCB and Millimeters and let them know I'll be with them in a moment. At this point I can sense their seething anger and squinting eyes from the bar side. I'm a professional. I take note, engage young kid with his order, so he'll have a good experience and hand off his drink before entering this incoming boss fight. And so I step through the fog wall. Before they even come into full view matron Malice fires her first salvo why. Did you serve young kid first? She barks any lesser leveled birista would have stuttered and fallen from that strong opening attack, but I fall into the basic defensive stance, play dumb and follow up with apologetic response. Hint, I'm not apologetic. It's just a tool you pick up through experience, to make these type of encounters more efficient. I return with I'm sorry you feel upset about that, but we both saw each other first so naturally I had to serve him first with this response I take a passive aggressive stance that leaves no openings McBaby literally slivers in from MM's back and inches closer to my face unbelievable, just unbelievable. You are so rude. We clearly came in first, and you, he points at me, ignored us. McBaby hisses at me millimeters chimes in, so rude recognizing this attack sequence for what was I start to focus more on the fk no, you beaches are leaving style of engagement. As I left no opening for attack they are trying to establish their dominance at a store level volume and make me fumble in my responses through incremental waves of emotional responses. This makes it seem like to witnesses I'm at fault for being a dumb barista. Their end end goal is my demise and probably some free sheet, but... That won't go over my head. My reflexes are to fast listen. Are you going to order or not I retort. I'm steering this to a more aggressive engagement. So people can see these two fools before me point millimeters. Bring your manager. She snaps my manager is on vacation I say in a monotone voice so you ordering. Or what? Millimeters. Swoons her head from my right and MCB coils in from my left like some fugly hydra. Order. How can we order, when you've crossed us like this, there. I see it, they are overcompensating with emotion, and left an opening. I'm sorry, yes I'm Canadian, what do you mean? In a low uncaring voice point they simultaneously exclaim their imbecile story. Other customers are not buying it. However they caught themselves, and brought their tone down so only I can hear. In that building silent moment of silence they reassess their engagement. I return their gaze with obvious annoyance. In my few short uncaring responses, my unwillingness to bend to their will, they understand. No quarter will be made with him. What followed next was a brazen display of childish attitude I have never ever witnessed from an adult human male. Point McBobby flails his arms in the air and screams in a pubescent cracking voice I don't feel special anymore. His face contorted beyond recognition and McBaby storms off right out the door still yelling point now I'm thrown off. Like r slash what the fuck did I just see? Millimeters, look what you did. Look. At. What. You. Did. Are you going to give us anything for this? Me. No matron malice rolls her eyes and makes for the door. I'm going to complain to your district manager, wearing. My smile of victory I reply my name is Josh and tell them I said hi. I say in a sickenly friendly voice point I know a short phone call to them and an explanation will clear my name mm's eyes reveal that a gasket just blew in her head. She exits following McBaby's direction point victory achieved as soon as the door closes I collapse on the floor laughing remembering McBaby's embarrassing exit point it occurred to me later how does a guy like that go home and make love to his wife. This was back when I worked for a wedding catering place, 20 yo. One time and we had set everything out for serving and it all went smoothly. 
About 20 minutes after we served the food, the bride came up and asked why we didn't serve chicken, we had served turkey. I told her that we served what was ordered. She told me, while getting progressively beachier, that she ordered chicken on our order sheet. At first I thought I faked up, but I checked the sheet and she definitely only ordered turkey point full beach. Mode. Initiated. She starts flailing around and yelling at me, using every name in the book. She said it was my fault for some reason, I honestly forget exactly what she said here, but I think it was, like you must have erased it or something. Her new husband tries to calm her down, and she actually faking hits him. She's crying, he's in shock, everyone's looking at me point let me step in, to say that during this whole 5 minute beakerage, I had to act as politely as I could, since the company's name was on the line point the bride started throwing plates full of food around off of tables, most of them in my general direction but nothing hitting me. She's still screaming about how her wedding day is ruined, it's all this punk beach metherfica's fault, and so on point she finally stops, after tripping on a tablecloth, and hit her face on the table. Now she's just laying on the floor, bawling, bleeding out of a cut on her forehead, and yelling unintelligible things at the air. Her husband came up to me, and fairly calmly said I'm sorry about her dude, you should probably leave. I feel like he almost expected her to act like this. I quickly clean my sheet up and get out of their point let's just say that I didn't get a tip that night. During the 2016 election I was working at a Starbucks right in downtown Portland. I generally don't talk politics with anyone because I just don't like the tension that can rise and would rather talk about anything else, like anything. Anyways, the day after the election results were final. People had been coming, in sobbing or sniffling all morning, I actually felt bad. Then one guy came in. This guy was a regular, I talked with him many times, knew his coffee, knew how he liked it, etc. I fetch him his coffee, and he starts saying things like, we are all faked now, and we'll be lucky, if WW3 doesn't start, I'm moving to Canada. Same stuff I'd heard all morning. At the time people were protesting every night which pretty much meant people were rioting. So this guy is still somewhat ranting, since no one in line behind him. I finally say something like yeah we'll just stay positive, and be careful out there with the riots going on and people getting attacked, etc. He says, who did you vote for? Already knew where this one going so I said, oh, I voted Republican this year against my better judgment. Partially because I was tired of blatantly lying to people about my choice on the matter. Seconds later this guy just blurted fuck you and proceeded to pop his lid off and throw sweltering coffee all over me sheet sucked. He was out the door seconds later and my manager had sort of barricaded himself at the end of the counter to stop me from chasing him outside and told me take the rest of my shift off. As a 21 year old at the time, it was quite strange to see someone at least in their 40s do something like that, because I wasn't sharing his frustration and anger. The hot coffee all over my face didn't feel great either. I was a genius at an Apple store for a few years and saw a lot of crazy sheet. Adult temper tantrums were a pretty daily thing for the genius bar, but I do have a clear favorite, on a day where the place was packed to the gills, loaded with kids and families, an otherwise sane looking woman in her 40s walks in the front of the store dragging an iMac behind her by its power cord, but I literally mean dragging it point the computer is laying on its back, shattered glass facing up, covered in dents and scrapes, the power cable wrapped a couple times around her little white knuckled fist, and she's just manhandling the sheet out of this thing the whole way back to the genius bar. She gets to the back, and as if she didn't already have everyone's attention, screams who the fuck is going to help me. This was the beginning of her 4 hour visit point apparently the woman was staying at the hotel attached to the same mall, which was on the opposite end from the Apple store. She got so pissed off that she dragged this computer a quarter mile across asphalt, through several parking lots, from the hotel to the store. What if she could be so bad as to provoke this kind of behavior? Her control key got stuck down on her keyboard, so her mouse would only right click. It took 10 minutes to find the problem and get her a new keyboard point she spent the remaining 3 hours 50 minutes demanding we replace the computer because of its condition point god damn, I don't miss that sheet. 
I worked at Circuit City in high school, and Black Friday was always a sheet show. People turned into animals over some lousy deals for crappy products that were being discontinued to make room for new stuff point anyway. On my second year working Black Friday, my boss put me in charge of credit applications since Circuit City often had promotions where you could get a TV or a camera or a laptop with no interest financing if you signed up for one of our credit cards. We also had a policy that the customer service counter would not be taking any returns until after 1pm so that we would be focused solely on ringing up customers and making sure everybody got what they wanted while supplies lasted point so I had a big ass sign hanging directly over my computer that says credit applications only and there's a big line forming. My cash register wasn't even cashed in so I couldn't have done any transactions if I had wanted to. Anyway, after a few hours of doing nothing but credit applications, one guy who had been waiting in line thought that he could check out and buy his stuff at my computer, despite the giant sign that said credit applications only. He immediately took an attitude with me when I told him that my register wasn't even configured to make transactions and that there was nothing I could do point so instead of admitting defeat and going to an actual register, he climbed onto the customer service counter in front of me and then just laid down on it. He didn't say a word, just laid down on it and glared at me like he was going to stop me from doing my job until I could ring up his purchase point adjacent to me was the door to the warehouse. So I walked in and told the warehouse guys that some weirdo in a Home Depot jacket was causing problems. But right as we walk back out onto the floor, we see this guy being dragged out of the store by two other customers in line who were getting sick of his sheet. Black Friday was also so crazy before people started buying their stuff online. Point TLDR, guy laid down on a customer service desk, got dragged out by other customers. Currently working night shift in 7.11 in Tokyo and there was this white guy who is from Europe, I don't know from where in Europe. Anyway this guy comes every night drunk and buy some wine and go to his hotel. One day he was kinda drunk and calling me from register and I thought maybe he wants some translation regarding the product. It turns out he's short for money and asked me to lend him like 1000 yen, about $10, and I had like only 800 yen in my pocket, and he said it's fine he will pay me the next day saying he comes to the store every day, I thought yeah, why not. It's not that much, and after he shook my hand he said that I have to tell him that I'll lend him some money because he might forget about it point fast forward to the next day. The guy walks into the store right came to the register and greeted me in Japanese konnichiwa you know. And I jokingly said hey you're the guy who borrowed money from me, not in a demanding manner, and sheet broke down. He stared at me like for 5 second and started yelling who the fuck do you think you are? I'm not some bum like you who borrows money from stranger and won't remember it. First of all I never heard someone yell in public place in Japan. Second of all the store was full of customer, pretty busy store near the station, and all of them are Japanese. I didn't hear a single person talking after the yelling of this bum and everyone just stood there like mannequin maybe like 10 seconds just staring at me and the guy. I didn't care, even if the guy said he didn't remember or anything but he just went nuts. Kinda makes me laugh to this day. I worked at a Barnes Noble cafe where we sell Starbuck drinks. I was at the bar making drinks, my co-worker was at the register taking a lady's order. She wanted a certain kind of topping on her drink, I don't remember what it was, but it was one of the seasonal ones from the past season that we were out of for the year until the next season came around. She got all red faced she started stomping her feet and shaking her fist like a two year old shouting that she wanted her topping and that her day would be ruined without it. We didn't really have a choice but to tell her that we were out because we can't magically summon more toppings and I believe she left and went to the real Starbucks down the street because she figured they would have it and it was not likely since it was spring and this topping was for seasonal drink from the holidays same job different person. I was opening with my manager and I was getting a new pot of coffee ready. A man came up with a stroller with a baby in it obviously and he asked for an egg sandwich. Well, as I said before, we are a Barnes Noble cafe who sell Starbucks drinks, but we do not carry the same food as Starbucks. 
this is what my manager told the man and he started questioning us with things like what do you mean? There's a Starbucks logo right there what do you mean you're not Starbucks? Where is all your food I don't see it here. To which my manager replied the food case is just to your right. We have our Starbucks logo to advertise our coffee, but we do not offer their food. We do have bagels with cream cheese butter or jelly, and we also have an egg sandwich burrito if you'd like. But unfortunately we do not carry the same products as Starbucks in our big case. This dude glared at her like she just reached over and strangled his kid in the stroller and started shouting at her for a demeaning him and making him look stupid and not being more straightforward about the food we have to offer and for misleading him by having the Starbucks logo everywhere. During his rant, he also asked multiple times where's the egg sandwich with the bacon and where's the egg sandwich with the arugula. After every time he asked my manager had to say those are Starbucks sandwiches, we don't have those here. Luckily I wasn't the one dealing with the guy head on, but from my perspective it looked like he thought our big case was the same as Starbucks, granted it does look very similar, but you think after the first time he would understand it's not the same. But I guess not. He settled for the egg breakfast burrito that we had, and then also wanted a decaf coffee. We didn't even bother to tell him the coffee would be a few minutes, because I hadn't started to make decaf yet, I just stopped the regular brew in the middle of its cycle. Throughout the old grounds put in some decaf and started to decaf as soon as as I heard it come out of his mouth. At this point in time my manager and I weren't even upset, we were just focused on getting this guy out of here as soon as possible. I couldn't believe the way this guy acted in front of his own kid. At the time I concluded that he must have been having an extremely terrible day. Nothing can make a man act like this in front of his child unless he has lost someone dear to him, lost his job or some other horrible thing that happened in his life. So I really hope that guy's life got better. Worst experience for me wrong really a temper tantrum, but an argument that got way out to control point happened many years ago when I was 8 to 7, around Christmas time. I was at a bakery, waiting to buy some loaves for my grandmother. Problem was that things were kinda busy, so the wait was quite long point anyway. After 10 to 15 minutes of waiting, this guy walked up and started talking to one of the workers. She was an elderly woman, guessing in her 50s this guy said that he had been waiting for like half an hour and said that he was being ignored on purpose. The worker there, obviously annoyed, told one of her colleagues to get this guy's order somehow. This pisses off the guy even more. He starts laying into the elderly worker, ranting about customer service and crap like that. He wasn't yelling, just talking in a real nasty way point and then the elderly worker started firing back, calling the guy a pig and, and other names. The guy is beyond piss now, asking if the woman has a husband. He then says, and I quote, you work here all day because you're a sheet lay. The elderly worker starts yelling now, calling this guy an awful human being, and even accusing him of beating his wife. At this point, security appeared. The guy took one look at the guards, offered the elderly worker a final insult I won't repeat for how awful it was, and made straight for the exit point this guy was my father. Obviously, I'm estranged from him now but damn, I had a screwed up childhood. My time has come. So, I work as an IT guy in a bank here in San Marino, the micronation, not the US city, so besides some older employees getting angry with their computers, not even me, their actual computers, when something went wrong, but I can get it, we do lots of important operations, as in millions of euro most of the times, I've got a pretty weird story point besides the normal safety deposit boxes, my bank also gives to clients who pay a higher fee the possibility to store valuables inside the main vault, in boxes inside it. It costs quite a bit, and you have to come to specific times in order to deposit or retrieve things in and from the vault, since the blast door only opens up at certain times, Ocean's Eleven style, so most client don't even deposit stuff in their point then one day, an elderly lady comes in, and thankfully I was at a nearby computer fixing stuff, so I could hear the story. As I was saying, this lady comes in, carrying a large suitcase, asking to deposit it inside the vault. The procedures we use impose us to ask what the item our clients want to deposit. It's mainly to avoid dangerous stuff or bombs I think, and she already starts to get angry, saying it's her business. 
In the end, she's forced to tell the employee what's inside. Point turns out, it's her mummified cat. And not taxidermy or things like that. The corpse of her cat embalmed, which I didn't even know it was possible to do. She asks to speak with the manager for no reason at all, and after the manager tells her it's not possible for us to store such things, health reasons I believe, but I was too far to hear exactly what the manager told her, since she was calm and collected like usual instead of freaking out like this old lady, and in the end she has to be escorted out by security because she was starting to threaten her I guess rich people. Do tend to get insane after a while. When I was around 13 or 14, during the summer I went to the nearest gas station to get a Slurpee. I was standing in line and the guy in front of me was getting the same thing. He looked to be in his mid-40s, and he was muttering to himself. He left to fill his cup and I asked the lady at the front for a one of my own. Seconds later he came storming back and started screaming at the top of his lungs. He was holding the container from which you grab your straw. The only straws left were yellow. He screamed about how yellow straws would condemn the poor cashier's family and that he would not take one. At this point people had started pulling out phones to capture the nonsense that he was preaching. This made him more angry and it was really hard not to burst out laughing. A huge tantrum to say the least. He slammed the container on the counter and kept ranting loudly while the cashier quickly grabbed a package of new straws and filled the container. While he busied himself with picking a different color, I quickly filled up my slurpy cup. Being the courageous teen that I was, I grabbed a yellow straw, smiling at him on the way out. About a year later I came back to find the same cashier and I quickly ordered a slurpy. We shared the memory and she reminded me jokingly to pick a yellow straw. Since then, me and my family always pick yellow straws. I used to sell cars. A guy walks in that had just purchased a new Hyundai Genesis from a competitor 20 miles away. Our dealer was also Hyundai. He came in with his 30 minute old car to trade it in for a Sonata, less expensive. I guess he felt he paid too much or had buyer's remorse. Holy shit. I was the guy that got to deal with him. He hit the roof when I told him what we'd give him for his Genesis. See, he had paid sticker on a car with about $6,000 in available discounts. Sticker minus $6,000 minus 20% depreciation when you drive off the lot equals screaming old man with a thick New York accent. Somehow, his getting shafted by another dealer known for its shady practices became my fault and that of my dealer. He walked around for 10 minutes completely unraveled. We are talking top of lungs screaming that we are all criminals and thieves. I basically told him he had to leave. I believe my exact words were, sir, you need to get the fuck off our lot before we call the cops. TLDR, guy gets screwed by a dealer, blows up at other dealer, gets thrown out point at it, for those wondering. No, you cannot return a car in 3 days. There is no right to rescission or 3 day cool off in the car industry. It is a myth that won't die. Drive over the curb, once your deal is signed, you're an owner. Plain and simple point http slash slash www.cnbc.com slash Worked at a high-end watch store and watch repair shop. A number of people have this habit of getting in the car then calling a store to give them directions once they are driving. One dude called and he was about 45 minutes away and about to hit rush hour through the city to just barely attempt to make it to the store on time. This is 2016 by the way, so he probably had a smartphone or at least a computer he explains he lives in a town 45 minutes up north that I actually used to live in and he needs directions. I give him highway directions which consist of about 3 changes. He tells me to slow down, he isn't to the change yet. I kind of pause, wondering what he means, then I repeat my directions and ask him if that's all he'll need. He gets angry again. Letting me know he hasn't even completed the first part of my directions yet. I then realize that he's asking me to stay on the phone with him for his entire trip, giving him step by step, turns in real time. I tell him I have customers and can't do that. He flips his sheets screaming and asking me how the hell he's supposed to figure out how to get there. I look at the clock and mentally calculate that he probably won't get here on time. Due to the security system of our store, we can't let him in beyond 15 minutes after close. 
he starts panicking and screaming again. He calls back every 5 minutes for he next hour, verifying directions, whining, making exacerbated sighs, etc. The store closes, and we start to pack up which takes about 45 minutes to get Cheat into a safe. As we are exiting the store and locking it, a car pulls up and it's him. He demands to be let in the store. We say sorry we are closed, and the security system is set. He then throws his own phone at the store, an iPhone, calls me a stupid bitch, screams, etc. My boss tells him to fuck off and never come back, as if he could have figured it out anyway, like dude, time management, planning, directions, all your responsibility points and say he's still driving around lost, trying to find his home. My friend told me about a date he had with a woman years ago. He said he's always viewed dates as interviews, where both parties interview the other to see if there's chemistry and a reason for a second date. Because of this, he lets it be known that both parties will be paying their own bills for the evening point, so has talking to this girl and lets her know his belief on how first dates should be paid for. She must not have believed him because she chose to dune at a fancy steak house for their first date. She orders drink after drink, and then a bottle, as well as a handful of appetizers. My friend orders a steak, rare, and a glass of soda. He said she had a boring personality, and was way too entitled for him, so he had already made up his mind that there wouldn't be a second date. The check comes, and he pays his bill point the girl on the other hand, starts getting upset when he refuses to pay her dollar sign 300 plus bill. She's crying and screaming that she doesn't have the money and that it was his responsibility to pay because she was nice enough to give him a chance point he simply said I guess you learned the hard way that you shouldn't order things you can afford, tipped the waitress, and left. As he was leaving, he overheard her on the phone with her friend screaming about what an asshole he was and that she needed help paying her bill. He's now happily married with a gorgeous woman, so it seems this method worked out for him. Point TLDR. Don't go on dates that are out of your price range. Working in a large department store, I came across an extremely heinous person. He was browsing the homeless section with a very timid, probably mail ordered slash arranged wife that looked at the very least downtrodden, my guess would be abused. He insisted that he would take the display model of microwave at a 25% discount. Efforts to reason with him resulted in him wiping his finger across the top of the microwave and brandishing it, hollering its dust. This store is filthy and the like. The manager was called, who was female, and this really set him off. Before she even spoke, he said, I can tell you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, and proceeded to berate her and the store loudly. All the while, his poor wife was staring at the floor tight-lipped, and we got the sense that this was definitely not the first time something like this had happened. We cave in, and he makes me march to the counter with the microwave, and he starts telling me that I'm the only good employee, and that I'm a nice boy. I leave him at the counter, but alas, he follows me back toward the homeless section, leaving his wife to carry the microwave to the counter. He catches up to me, and holds my hand telling me how good of an employee I am, and that he wants me to talk about the electronics with him. I immediately recoil, and as politely as I can, I take him on a pretty faked up creepy tour of the irons and slokakas. He's not interested, he just wants to hang. I eventually peel away, and take the elevator down to the loading dock, to scream about it point. When I arrived back on the shop floor, I heard shouting from the front registers. Because there was no price tag on the microwave, being a display, and because the person at checkout was a woman, he had started up again. He was pointing at the counter, saying you look right there, don't you dare even look at me. He saw me, and his face broke out into a grin. He goes for my hand again, but I'm ready, and I smoothly avoid it. So he puts his arm over my shoulder and says, finally I can get some real help in here point I found the price. Charged him full price plus dollar sign 20 because he was distracted by bromance and called security the moment he left the store and I made it sound like he was borderline aggressive and perhaps a shoplifter. Last I saw him, he was about 30 feet away, furious, showing his receipt to the security guards who were becoming more and more wild the more he yelled at them. One faked dude. I worked at a closing penny for a month. 
I was only two days in when I had my worst customer ever. This older woman in a wheelchair started out nice. Her total was like $18.50 and it tells you on screen how much you have saved. So she had like $38 in savings. She gives me a $25 gift card, which I had just swiped for her which is something the customer does, but whatever she was old, when she looks at the screen, and it was like a switch was flipped. This dumb tot was utterly convinced that I somehow rang her up wrong, added $38 to her total, and she owed $18.50 still. I was utterly dumbstruck at how she came to that conclusion, but let me tell you she was absolutely pissed. She just sat there in her wheelchair berating me in front of her increasingly large group of customers about how stupid I was and how I had absolutely ruined her mother's day because the gift card was her gift. I tried hard to explain that she owed nothing because her total was $18.50 and her gift card took care of it. Nope, my supervisor had to end a phone call to explain the same thing that I said word for word, but apparently respect comes with age, so she believed her. I had never been yelled at so much by a literal stranger for something I didn't do, it faking sucks. After adrenaline wore off I realized that everyone was staring at me to see if I was going to cry or not, which I almost did. When I was 16 ish, I worked at a KFC or I was working the cash register with a girl named Shannon, who was maybe 16 or 17 at the time. It was a Sunday and we had a packed house full of families with their children, fresh from church, service 42 50 year old guy comes up and just immediately unleashes on Shannon, calling her a cunt every time a sentence provided an opportunity, saying she charged him too much for a two piece meal that he ordered. He's screaming that he eats here every Sunday and he always gets the same thing and it's always the same price. Guy doesn't have a receipt, so Shannon takes the time to go through the pose to find it, just to prove this is whole wrong. Shannon prints the receipt, starts reading it out, a two-piece meal, and, cut, to a quick side story. The year was 2005 in Staples, and had just recently changed their slogan from we've got that, or whatever it was, to that was easy. They released the easy button and the KFC off store owner got one for free or something, when he went in there for his regular office supply pickup. We had lots of downtime at the restaurant and the button was the funniest thing ever and played with probably way too much for like a month. We always played a game that I would say was most like that's what she said before that was even a thing and we were faking masters okay. So back to the story now and faking nothing. Guy interjects, I always get the same thing and it's always $2.99 and a banana split. Shannon says. Turns out this is all over a banana split this guy ate while he had waited for his food that he had actually forgotten about eating dumbass. After 10 minutes of spitting and cussing and after seeing more mothers cover the ears of their children than I have ever seen, guy says oh, smiles awkwardly and turns around to leave, clearly embarrassed. The restaurant is absolutely silent point stage set and dealing with this situation in the most appropriate way possible. Shannon returns to the counter and presses a button that was easy. Guy, halfway to the door, turns around and his face is beat red. He screams, how about you bend the fuck over and show me how easy it really is, sprints toward her and punches the pose or at least the metal pole that holds the screen there. Guy is bleeding all over, looks like he has a broken hand or wrist and retreats to the nearest exit, clearly defeated and crying like a child all the way. He was even blubbering and soaking up all the saliva that was pouring out of his mouth. What a beach point not the absolute worst tantrum I've ever seen, but definitely funny and memorable. A few years ago one of my bank customers went ballistic at a real sweet 19 year old girl who worked customer service. He had a $15 fee on his account for falling below his minimum balance. The girl started to explain to him that, because he'd never had this type of fee refunded before, we'd happily give it back. He didn't let her get that far. He starts pounding on her desk insisting he gets the fee refunded all the time. He's calling her all manner of inappropriate names, while spit flies from his mouth. The girl starts crying, stands up, and tells him to leave. Then, the manager at that time, who is disabled, and walks with a walker, gets up and backs this dude into a corner, while she just destroys him for talking to our young employee like that. 
he leaves, slamming every door on the way out, while his wife sobs apologies to us, saying he does this all the time and she can't take him anywhere. The poor wife had the posture and body language of a beat dog. She probably had to deal with his crap all the time. We ended up closing the guy's accounts and banning him. Fast forward about a year later, the wife is in requesting details on his account. I'm the manager by this point and I say to her, pretty indignantly, ma'am I'm sorry, but we closed all of his accounts last year after that incident. He is no longer welcome here. She replies, I know. He died, so I'm handling his estate. I've never been so embarrassed in my life. TLDR. Guy flips at young customer service rep over $15. Pounds desk. Spits. Slams doors. Gets dressed down by a lady with a walker. And embarrasses his beleaguered wife. He dies. I make an ass of myself to his wife. But really his wife is better off without him. I spent almost 8 years working at Forever 21. They have recently revamped their return policy. However, while I was employed it was, you had 21 days to return your clothes or shoes. Jewelry was final sale, unwashed slash unworn with tags still attached and the receipt. For store credit or exchange only. No cash refund C could tell you any number of stories where I had grown women berate me, threaten me, and call me names. But I remember this one woman above all the others she came in dress to the nines. Stiletto heels, perfect hair, and makeup designer glasses and purse. She walked and shopped the store for at least two hours. She finally made it up to my register with enough clothing to cover a small army. I do my usual greeting and ask if she was able to find everything alright. She just starts gushing. Oh. Your clothes are wonderful. So cute. So trendy. They're also so reasonably priced. So I ask, is she's familiar with return policy? She's not. So I launch into policy posted above you stares at me dead faced for a good 15 sex. What does that mean? What if I want my money back? Um, well ma'am that's not an option. Her face looked like you just sacrificed her only child to a crowd of Black Friday shoppers. She takes the armful of clothes she's still holding and throws them completely over the register where I'm standing and into the floor. Then the yelling starts, you're kidding me. That's the dumbest policy I've ever heard of. There's not another store anywhere that does that. Coles doesn't do that. I'm telling everyone at church to not step a foot in this store point I interjected that we are not Coles and that I'm sorry that their return policy has given her unrealistic expectations. She looked appalled, kept the rant going for another few minutes until I asked if she was going to purchase anything and if not she needed to leave because she was bothering other shoppers. She left, but not before stopping a few other shoppers yelling at them about how awful we were. Point TLDR a lady got mad at our return policy. Threw clothes over register at me. Caused a scene. I pissed her off, and she stormed out. I got a couple good ones. Air conditional lady I worked the front desk of a hotel a couple years ago. One weekend, we were booked solid, nothing else was available. A woman and her family booked the last room we had, it was a single queen, that was wheelchair accessible. She booked it online. When she checked in, she complained about her room, even before she saw it point I already knew she was going to be one of those guests. Fast forward to the next night. She and her family return from having dinner and walk by the desk. We all exchange pleasant hellos. Soon after, she comes back and starts to lose her mind on me. What over? Well, it was hot out, and the air conditioning in her room wasn't cooling down her room fast enough. It was working, yes, it wasn't broken point she demanded that upgrade her to a suite. I apologized that the room wasn't to her liking, and explained that unfortunately we had no other rooms available as we were fully booked. She started screaming like a total lunatic. She demanded that I kick guests out to let her and her family have a suite instead. Naturally I declined. She then demanded that I find another room at another hotel for her. I explained that we had previously called every other hotel in our city to help other people try to find room for tonight, and we had learned that everywhere was fully booked, even the small BBs we reached out to point she then threatened to harass every guest who came through the lobby into giving up their room and asked me what I'd do. I said if she did that, I'd have to ask her to leave the hotel. Then she asked what I'd do if she refused. 
I explained that at that point, she would be considered trespassing, and I would have to call the police to remove her, and her family from the building point she called me on it, and so I picked up the phone, and called the police. I immediately called my boss, to explain the situation to her. She said she fully supports my decision, and asked me to blacklist her from the hotel, and to later pass along her name to the other hotels in the city, so they are aware of her, the hotels in my city, look out for each other this way. The police show up, they question me and the guest. I confirmed that I would like her, and her family escorted out point, so this woman had to go back up to her air-conditioned room, tell her family to pack up all their things, and that they were being made to leave the hotel. It was about 11pm. There were no other vacancies in the city. So because of her total freakish meltdown, her entire family had to spend the night sleeping in their truck in a parking lot somewhere. Point teeth smasher I noticed one evening we had a new reservation appear. It was about 6pm. It was booked using the guests membership points through the online reservation system. I prepared the room key and check in card as usual. Point this guy walks in and says he has a reservation. Well, the only reservation I had left was under a woman's name. He said that's his wife. Sure, that's fine. So I ask for his ID and a credit card to check him in point well. He hands me his wife's credit card and he doesn't have any ID. No driver's license, even though he drove here. No provincial health card. We're in Canada. No social insurance card or birth certificate or anything to prove that he is who he says he is. Turns out, they don't even share last names I explained to him, that I can't check him in without ID, it's actually against the law for me to do so. He starts to argue with me, and I try to explain what it looks like from my end, you're trying to use someone else's credit card, to check into someone else's room, and you have no ID on you. He's not having it point he leaves, and shortly after I get a phone call from his wife, she's in the hospital, and can't come in, to check in the room. I empathize with her situation and I genuinely wish I could do something to help, but my hands are legally tied. I would be fired immediately the next day if I checked him in without ID or his own credit card point she starts screaming at me, and I hang up. I understand she's in a shitty situation, under a lot of stress, but I don't take abuse point he comes back, and we try to figure something out but it always comes back to his lack of ID and a lack of a credit card that we can verify the owner of. I sincerely express my regret, and I offer to phone around, and try to find a place with more relaxed rules, motels, BBs, but he doesn't want to stay in any of those. So I apologize and say, that there isn't anything further I can do to help point he leaves and that's, when the phone calls start point threatening phone calls from this guy, calling from different phones. Says he's going to become by, and smash my face in with a baseball bat. Says he'll be waiting for me in the parking lot. Says he found out who I'm through FASA book, and will soon know where I live. I was freaked out. I never spoke to him during those phone calls. I just hung up. I texted my manager. I called the police. But because there's no recordings of those calls, there's not much that can be done. After the final call from him, I text my manager and I say that I'm done for the night. I can't deal with this. I can't handle it. And I need to leave. She's understanding and lets me leave early point of course he never followed through on any of his threats, but I was pretty paranoid for a few days afterward. I work as a wedding DJ on the weekends. Tolerating several dozen intoxicated grown-ups exercising their entitlement issues is very much a part of the job. But one wedding that stands out for me was when I was approached by a particularly contemptuous maid of honor it began with her signaling me with her hands from the dance floor, making a turning over gesture with her finger, signaling to me that she is not enjoying the song playing and would like it to be changed immediately to the next song. Upon ignoring her track skipping attempt gesture, the maid of horror ventured through the crowd of people dancing to approach me. With eyebrows lifted to the ceiling, she commanded me to stop the current song and play the contemporary rap song that she wanted played. Now, I nicely told Princess Wine Breath, I'm sorry I can't just stop the song for you while people are out there dancing and enjoying themselves. But if you have a wreck, do you know who I am? Yes you are the sister of the bride. I know what the bride wants to listen to. I don't appreciate your shetty attitude. I'm going to tell my family how you treated me. That sounds just fine. Please don't come back over here. The 
terrorist did not return for the rest of the night, and at the end of the evening the groom, a family member, and the husband of this woman individually apologized for her behavior. I was a male psychiatric nurse for 20 years. At one of the hospitals where I worked, I was assigned to the adolescent unit point our catchment area was low income, and we always got a lot of homeless adult scammers when the weather was bad, and at the end of the month before the welfare checks came out, when they ran out of money, or at holidays like Christmas or Thanksgiving. They would check in, say the magic words, I'm suicidal, and I'm going to kill myself, if you don't let me into the hospital. And then the very first thing they said, when they hit the floor, the unit, was I'm not feeling suicidal anymore. I want to get off of suicide precautions right now. When can I go smoke? And then, when is dinner? It is very hard to be compassionate with people who behave like this. They steal from each other, their language is abusive, they threaten the staff, they often are drug seeking, and their personal hygiene is always a struggle. They smell bad, and they resist taking a shower, and washing their clothes a couple who had just gotten out of prison, for drug dealing, the week before brought their teenage son in, claiming that he was psychotic and violent. The kid sure enough looked psychotically angry, and his anger was directed at his parents. His sister was with them, and spent the entire interview with her head down, looking at her hands in her lap. It turned out that Buddy and Cease had been living with their maternal grandmother, going to school every day, and making good grades. When the parents got out of prison, they took the kids away from the grandmother Buddy was on the school's football team, and was convinced he was going to be able to play college football, and then professional football in the NFL. He was furious at being taken out of school, which he thought would jeopardize his place on the football team. Point his mother insisted that the boy was mentally ill and insisted that he needed to be declared mentally disabled and needed to get a crazy check. She thought that we had some influence over whether or not he received SSDI. We didn't. Every time the mother showed up on the unit, the kid became agitated and aggressive, and he was a very big kid, and strong as hell point the mother came to visit, and he and she had a hushed conversation in which, according to him, she wanted him to tell the doctor he was seeing hallucinations, and had homicidal thoughts. He refused, she insisted and they began shouting at each other, despite efforts by the staff to separate them, and calm buddy down. Buddy completely came unglued, started screaming at his mother, you crazy beach. I'm going to kill you. I later pointed out to him that this was exactly what his mother wanted him to do, and he sheepishly replied, I know, but she's faking crazy, Mr. Jones. The charge nurse sounded special team to adolescent unit, special team to adolescent unit a psychiatric emergency, which brought staff running from all the other units to assist. When several psych techs grabbed Buddy to keep him from attacking his screaming mother, she went really berserk and kicked one of the techs in the groin. Tables and chairs were being overturned. All the patients ran for their rooms. We were trying to get other visitors off the unit. It was total chaos. The mother was screaming and shouting over and over, I want my check. I want my faking check. The psych techs put her in a manhold, and we marched her off the unit, and handed her over to security, who kicked her out of the hospital point later she called the unit, and threatened to kill the staff in the parking lot point a couple of days later, the doctor discharged buddy. He was happy. We never heard from him again. Thank god. There ain't been no wreck and done I work at a boy scout camp in the middle of a national forest, but our primary customer base is made up of troops from the city and suburbs of Chicago. I have great stories about inner city kids having epiphanies in nature, but just as many about those people not understanding that they're in the middle of a forest point one year, a provisional troop came in. These aren't all that uncommon. Camp is expensive, something like $190 a head, and not everyone from a small inner city troop can afford it. To counter this, they create a provisional camp troop. Two to five youth and leaders from several troops in the same area pool resources and come to camp as a 30 to 40 person group. This group in particular had a troop whose leadership was primarily mothers, uncommon but not at all unheard of, and had been in their sight for about 10 minutes when one of the leaders walks up to the office. We're expecting something like not enough toilet paper or trash at the, the pickup stand, which can happen, and over 7 weeks will eventually happen a few times. 
Instead, this leader informs our head commissioner, in charge of campsite facilities, that there ain't been no racking done in their site. After he went to their site he came back amused but dumbfounded, she meant that there were leaves all over the ground and there wasn't a mowed grass field. He explained in more polite terms that this is the damn forest you moron, and she said they'd clear their own site point the next day we had the site next door complain about the dust. We went down, and they had raked everything down to the dirt, this area has primarily sandy soil for about 4 inches, and then clay, and cut out all the underbrush. Their site was essentially an ecological disaster area that was causing dust bowl style plumes of dust every time the wind blew. When we told them they'd have to bring all the leaves back and that they wouldn't be considered for the site cleanliness award, Baden Powell, if you're in the know, she exploded at our 20 year old commissioner and screamed about how they weren't coming back and left three days early point we heard later that she, specifically, tried to get a refund for her troop and the rest of the provisional troop had spent their entire time trying to stop her. Felt bad for them. My first job. This actually happened last year and this girl still has her job shockingly. So, I'm working my first job at Papa John's, answering phones and registers. It got hectic some days, but it was doable. Well after my first week there this chick that was supposed to be my co-worker and do the job with me just gets cheatier and cheatier with me. I just turned 18, was moved into a new and extremely sheety town, and have had a handful of short lasting, but very hard jobs with more ex meth heads. Well, every few weeks she'd have an outburst and just scream at me at the top of her lungs in front of customers. I have unmedicated abs and this was when it was really messing me up when before it never bothered me. Every time I'd have a slight mess up she was there begging managers to fire me. Every time someone else faked up she'd try pinning it on me. Every time a draw was short she would say I was stealing. All terrible sheet. In fact my first week there one of the managers called me in saying I was on my phone too much. They all played Pokemon Geo and would leave the store to play. I would send a short text to my folks as to how I was doing and when to pick me up whenever it got really slow. He also said that customers waited on me to get off my phone which is just a blatant lie. He kept trying to get me to sign something like a write-up or something, and I'm always leery about that. We have working cameras all around that store, so I said sir, my memory could be wrong, and I could have totally done it. But I have absolutely no memory of this ever happening. If you can provide video evidence of this happening I will gladly sign this form and he just looked at me, like he saw a ghost or something point well back to the beach. It's Christmas time, and I was allowed to take some days off. So I went back to my hometown for a week and got to hang out with my military brother. I come back, have work the next day, and this is when it happened. I'm in the store for 30 minutes, the entire 30 minutes she's talking about how she wished I was gone and wished I stayed back in my hometown and consistently berating me in front of customers, and then she says loud enough for me to hear her god I could just slit your throat point I've had a history with violent women hurting me and this really faked me up. I was a mess the whole night which gave her more ammo to yell at me, so I text my mom what happened, and she was livid of course. My mom shows up at the store like 5 minutes after this beach leave so sadly I couldn't see my mom beat the sheet out of this girl. Honestly I wasn't worried for my life, but more of the assault charge I would get, because I'm a big sturdy guy and she's this thin tiny thing point well my manager freaks out and makes this scene about how she's going to protect me and how she feels like crap and all this. I didn't press charges, but I totally should have. Two weeks later my head manager who made a point to make me feel better puts the beach in charge of me personally while I'll earn a new station. That faked me up so bad. They fired me two weeks after that, after switching my hours up so much via email that I missed a session. Apparently I was supposed to work two sets of hours in one day which has never happened before in six months and nobody told me and they fired me for it. 120. One of my brother's many temper tantrums. He is 14 years older than me, so at the time, I was 10, and he was 24. Point we lived on the top floor of a duplex, with a separate garage in the back. So my brother had a back room that had a metal staircase which went down to the garage area, where he would spend most of his time working on cars with friends. It was summer, so he had an air conditioner built into the window of the glass door. 
For some reason, I went through his room and down the metal staircase to the garage area. Being a kid, unaware as they are at that age, I let the door slam behind me. I forget what I needed down there, and my brother didn't mention anything about me slamming the door, so I had no idea I did something wrong. I did it again on the way back in point next thing I hear is my brother not yelling but screaming my name as loud as he can, Alex, 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 and running full speed up the stairs. He also lets the door slam behind him as he runs into the kitchen still screaming my name. Then he continues yelling at me for slamming the door with the air conditioner on it and that I have to buy him a new if it breaks with a lot of profanity mixed in. Then he calls me a faking piece of faking sheet and storms off point this was around 1997, but I still remember it like it was yesterday sheet hurts I have many more of his freak out stories if anyone cares. My 30 year old brother, I drove 3 hours to go to my hometown to shoot a portrait for him. He wanted to use it for his LinkedIn point I wanted to use our dad's garage because there are no windows so I could be in complete control of the light. It also has white walls and it quite spacious when he pulls his car out. So I figured it'd be easy to get that typical look you see in a lot of portraits well. I get there and see a bit of dirt on the wall like a faint smear on the wall. I. In my mind, no big deal. I was going to shine a 500W light on the wall and overexpose the hell out of it anyway. Well this is where my brother freaked out point it was both amazing and annoying as fuck. It was amazing because I had never seen a grown man freak the fuck out and throw his arms down to his side and yell, this is my photo shoot. On the other hand, it was annoying as fuck because I, I calmly explained to him why it wouldn't be a big deal and he completely disregarded the explanation. I, I, this is practically what I do for a living, so I don't know where he gets off telling me how to do my job he suggested we go into the living room and just shoot a photo against one of those walls, to which I replied. If that's the kind of shitty ass photo you want, why didn't you just ask sister's name? to shoot it with her faking iPhone, I told him I'd be shooting it my way or not at all. He came around and walked away with a photo he was surprisingly impressed with. Great, but I've lost what little remaining respect I had for my brother after that outrageous temper tantrum. I used to work as the front end closing shift leader at a grocery store. It was late and we were like 30 minutes from closing so only two registers were open. My boss was long gone for the day. I asked the full sized register to just stay open and the express to stay open but start cleaning and keep their light on. So I had to step away for a second to check on an item for the full sized register. I wasn't even gone 2 minutes when I hear screaming and swearing coming from the front. So I rush back and find that one of our regulars who was an owner's hole, had taken his handful of items and placed them on another express lane and was screaming at my express person to wait on him there at that lane. The lane that was closed. The lane that had no till in the drawer. The lane that we couldn't have possibly helped him at. So I try to ease the situation and tell him that register is closed and there's no money in it. This faker squares up to me and starts screaming at me, so I snapped and yelled at him to get the hell out, or I'm calling the cops and he won't ever be allowed in our store again. He takes his items that he refused to move to a different register and throws them as far back into the store as he can and storms out screaming and cursing. I turn around to find the night crew manager behind me looking at me like what the fuck happened. Apparently he was ready to deck this as whole. I get a call a little while later on the store phone for this happy fact trying to intimidate me and threaten my job to which I tell him please try to get me fired we have cameras and my boss would love to have a discussion with him as well as the police. This will probably get buried but about 2 years ago I worked at a DMV. As you can imagine I have seen my fair share of adult temper tantrums slash meltdowns. On this particular day it had not been very busy. People were waiting at most 5 minutes in the waiting room to be helped. I had just finished helping a woman when I called up the next person. He was a 45 years old man and I could tell almost immediately that this particular man would be a dick he just had that vibe. He came up to my desk with zero papers and no photo ID, all the while being irritated that he had to wait 5 minutes at the DMV. So this guy with no papers or ID is looking to register a car that he says he bought. 
the only information he has, being the make, model, and year of the vehicle, I think it was a Ford Taurus, as well as a picture of the vehicle's license plate. Obviously this was insufficient to register a car that someone else still owned. When he was told without the paperwork he couldn't register the car he proceeded to yell and jump up and down stomping his feet as hard as he was capable of. He went on with this tantrum for close to two minutes yelling his profanities and insults directed towards both myself and the DMV. I tried to calmly tell him what he needed so he wouldn't return a third time, but eventually got fed up with his tantrum and notified my supervisor of the man. After explaining the situation to my supervisor he immediately came out from his office and told the not so gentleman to get out and never return. Never once have I seen a tantrum to that extent thrown by any man, woman, or child over the age of 10. When I worked at Gander years ago, and we had an older gentleman, 65 plus, try to return a gun, well at each purchase of a firearm, we would tell everyone there is no returns on guns. They are used once they are hung up. So he came back, after taking the gun to the range, and didn't like it. He threw a fit instantly, I offered to buy it off him, but it wasn't going to get all his money back. I also told him to find a friend, to buy it off him for almost all of his cost. He continued to scream at me, I'll let it happen as it does suck, to not enjoy a new firearm, and I was dead inside from the way people do treat retail workers. Finally he finished yelling at me, and left point about 30 minutes or so later another customer gets my attention, and says there is an issue. This one clearly is weirded out or embarrassed. He pulls me aside to tell me there is an issue in the men's room and I need to see it. Well, I shouldn't have looked. Someone had pupped in their hand and smeared it all over the walls. The bathroom was a single user, so they took their time and tried to get it everywhere. The man who got my attention said he saw the man come out before him and he pointed him out. Well as you can tell where this story is going, it was him, the gentleman I wouldn't return the gun for. He, for some reason was still in the store, we locked eyes and he bolted for the door. Last thing I'm going to do, is grab a man willing to smear pup on the walls, so I'll let him go. We had to clean that mess up. So nasty point the pup bandit never came back. I once helped a friend move, when I showed up at 9am, she hadn't started packing. We, four of her friends, including one who was visiting from out of town and had plantar fasciitis, making it hard to walk, packed, cleaned and swept the apartment and loaded the van she'd rented and the car a friend had lent her for the day. It was a great crew, one couple who was helping out had actually met while helping someone move and they both had great attitudes and were really really good at packing point my friend, bless her heart, was not having a good time. This was an emotional move for her, and she just straight up decompensating as the day wore on point finally, we'd gotten her moved, when she started freaking out. She needed a desk. She didn't have a desk, and once the day was over, she wouldn't have a car. So, a bunch of us agreed to go with her to Ike, and help get a desk point we get there. There are a few stylish but flimsy desks, and one well made boring pine desk. It's not amazing, she won't pass it on to her grandkids but it's in her budget and it's not going to fall apart. The two good attitude kids go to pull the car around. The friend with plantar fasciitis goes to sit down. Friend and I go to pick up the flat pack desk she selected point and she melts down. Full on. Lying on the floor. Kicking feet. Crying. Ike is about to close and they are literally sweeping and mopping around her prone form while I try to talk her through this finally. Her friend from out of town comes to find us, and between the two of us, we get her through the checkout, get to the parking lot, and get the desk and the car and home point, and then we never spoke of it again. Story 1. Worked at a store that wanted fast checkouts. This lady came through my line and I started scanning her items. Got to the tomatoes, which are weighed, and I weighed it, while still holding the bag. She got mad saying that I was making it way more by holding the bag. So I had my floor supervisor come over and deal with her. Supervisor weighed it while making sure her hands weren't touching it. Guess what? It weighed more. 
supervisor left and the lady beached at me because she wanted the cheaper price point like not only did she get mad that supposedly made it more expensive, but now she's mad that it was done her way and it was more expensive. The kicker is she was upset of a whopping 3 cents. 3 fing cents. I didn't give it to her lol, she had to pay for the way she wanted it weighed point story 2, was checking a guy out in the express lane. As I was scanning his things I asked if he had the store card or number. Said he didn't, and he handed me the cash. I finished the transaction and gave him his change. He then asked if the phone number would work for the card. Guess he didn't normally do the shopping and didn't realize I meant phone number and not just a random number, but I didn't know that. Of course it does, but I explained he'd have to go to customer service since I'd already finished the transaction. He proceeded to yell at me saying this is what's wrong with the younger generation. They are so lazy. He wasn't even that much older than me. So whatever, my floor supervisor came over because she heard the yelling, I explained what happened, she told him the same thing that I did, and once he left she laughed about it. He became a joke to the store. I work at a bakery that does cakes, and a woman came to pick her cake up and apparently we spelled the name wrong on the cake. Which is usually no big deal, mistakes happen, it only takes a couple of minutes to fix it, and you wouldn't even notice that we corrected it point not good enough for her, she instantly gets angry and demands the manager. Manager comes out, and he apologizes and explains to her again, that it would only take a couple of minutes to fix. She then starts saying, that she doesn't want us to fix it, she wanted it right the first time. Our manager seemed puzzled at this response and explains again that he can fix it, that he just needs her to give us the correct spelling. Her and my manager go back and forth both literally saying the exact same thing back and forth and now she's crying. My manager is now offering to completely redo the cake on a new one so there is no evidence of a correction and is willing to give it to her for free point that still wasn't good enough and she's now screaming the same thing about not wanting it redone and it should have been right the first time and how she doesn't have time to wait. But the thing is that she's been having this conversation for 15 minutes now. The cake would have been done 12 minutes ago if she hadn't caused a scene point she eventually calmed down enough to agree to a new free cake. But my god, that was the biggest tantrum I've ever seen. I work at a doctor's office that primarily gives out medical marijuana licenses. We also do other stuff, but 90% of our patients are there for pot cards. We take appointments and walk-ins. One Sunday, which is our busiest day of the week, there was this lady who waltzed in and started insisting she be seen first, despite the fact that she didn't have an appointment and there was about an hour wait, down from earlier in the day, when it had been about 1.5 hours. We tell her that she is going to have to wait in line like everyone else, and she starts insisting that, because she's renewing her license she shouldn't have to wait. At this point, my coworker is explaining that it's the same process regardless whether you're new or returning, and so she starts getting agitated that he's telling her no. She starts insisting on talking to the doctor to try to convince the doctor to let her go first. My coworker explains that she can't talk to the doctor because there's an hour wait and the doctor doesn't have time to stop between patients, and she starts getting really agitated, raising her voice even more. My coworker then tells her that she can talk to the doctor if she really wants, but she has to agree that if the doctor tells her she can't go first to either take a seat or leave, she agrees. About 10 seconds later the doctor walks out. My coworker walks up to the doctor and explains, this lady wants to go first. The lady then runs over the doctor and says that's not true, he's lying, I just don't want to wait, I have lots to do today. The doctor asks if she had an appointment. The lady says no, but I need to go first. The doctor then says, I'm sorry but if you don't have an appointment you'll have to wait. Q enraged lady. The doctor leaves to take the next patient in and the lady starts yelling about how she needs to go first. At this point I'm closest to the lady, so I explain that she can either wait or book an appointment for another day. She says no I need to be seen today, and I tell her there are about a dozen people ahead of her in line, so there's no way we could let her go next, unless she managed to convince everyone waiting to let her go first. 
She gets all excited when she hears that and she's like oh yeah I'll definitely do that and she turns around and starts can I and the whole room echoed at her, no. One girl who was waiting lost it at the one who had been complaining and yelled at her, I've been waiting over an hour, there's no way I'm going to let you go ahead of me. Q complaining lady screaming fine at the whole room, walking over to the door, yelling fuck you all and slamming the door on her way out. I really wish that was all I ever saw of her again, but she came back the next Sunday, again without an appointment, this time there was a 45 minute wait, this time she realized she would need to wait, thank god, and said she was going to go next door, there's a spa next door, until she was supposed to be called, I told her, make sure you're back by the time your name is called, or we'll skip you, if you are called three times which usually takes 15 minutes after you reach the front of the line and still aren't there. We put you back in line when you return, but not at the front of the line. She's like whatever, I'm going, and leaves. Over an hour later, her name had been called a few times and we took her out of line. She walks in after she had been gone for about 75 minutes and asks how long she will have to wait. Neither myself nor my coworkers want to deal with her craziness. So we put her second in line and tell her the wait's about 10 minutes. Q craziness about 2. She starts yelling at me about how I had told her that she would be seen when she got back. I try to explain that she came back way after her name had been called and she just keeps yelling at me. Eventually she left and thank god that was the last time I saw her. Although my best friend who also works there told me she came back that Thursday, was actually seen, was still yelling at all of the staff, and then her dog peed in the lobby. Some people just have issues. I have two stories first was when I worked at Dick's Sporting Goods quite a while back. Our store wasn't the largest because it was the first in the state, but it was by no means small. The store was always busy and bustling so there was constant noise. As I was straightening some product I was looking around to make sure everyone was getting on okay and didn't have questions. As I'm looking around I notice a really tall woman talking angrily and waving her arms around to the footwear associate. All I could think was man that sucks I've been there too many times. Not even a moment later I hear clear as day, I don't want tube socks. I want some faking stockings, you beach. The whole place stopped, everyone heard her in the store. Thankfully a manger was close by and stepped in straight away. She was still shouting at the top of her lungs at our general manager over our lack of product. To be honest I think she was looking for compression socks and just didn't remember they were called that point. Second story was when I worked as a golf club salesman a few years later. I fit a guy to a brand new tailor made 5 wood and he loved it. That made me feel good to help his game and to make some okay commission. He comes in the next day and I happen to be behind the counter watching the front door. We would take shifts doing that to prevent theft. This guy's red as a pepper and just starts yelling at the top of his lungs. I couldn't even say hi or ask what sort of assistance he was in need of. I spent almost $300 and you can't give me the right numbered head cover? Is this how you treat people? You need to be paying more attention to what you are doing. I want the right cover right now god damn it. I was so taken aback by this it was surreal. No one has ever just straight up chewed me out like that. I just let him talk because I knew I was 100% right here. All he had to do was turn the dial on the number plate to get the number he needed. Taylor made stop making individually numbered head covers because it's a waste of money and material. Some companies will just have plastic numbers you swap for the number needed. Once I showed him this, he turned purple from embarrassment and promptly left. That was easily my most satisfying day in retail. I don't remember seeing him again either.